Hello everyone. Welcome to the sequel Full Course by Intellipart. Data is definitely the world's most valuable commodity and anyone who wants to understand a process has to know the sequel. Businesses of all shapes and sizes use SQL, starting from tech giants like Microsoft, Dell and Google to retail businesses like Nike. Almost all of them use SQL to create, modify or communicate with relational databases. Initially, the data is in its unstructured format, so the emphasis is going to be on getting the big data processing done. And I would not deny that. But one thing is lost in this discussion here. By the time big data analysis is done and the data has been understood, it is no longer unstructured. Once this happens, the question is, how can I get the data into the hands of as many people as possible? SQL is that widely implemented and proven gateway. Even the advanced big data tools such as Apache, Spark, Kafka, Hadoop, Cassandra are all based on SQL. So even if you were to use them, you need basic knowledge about SQL. If you are watching this free SQL course, then chances are you are either working or trying to acquire skills that will get you into a data related job role. If that's the case, I would request you to stick around till the end of this SQL tutorial for beginners taught by our expert mentors from top universities around the world. Let me take you through the agenda for this course. We will start by getting ourselves introduced to the SQL programming language. Following that, we will address SQL versus no SQL, RDBMS versus DBMS, what are entity relationship diagrams and what exactly we mean by term database. Later, we will touch upon different data types available in SQL, memory allocation, SQL commands, operators in SQL, as well as sorting in SQL. Once we are familiar with these fundamental concepts, we will cover the important part of query functions, conditions merge, unions, etc. Finally, we will also take you guys to the most commonly asked SQL interview questions. I hope you guys are clear with this agenda. Now, before we begin, I would urge you guys to hit both the subscribe and the notification bell icon for Intellipart so that you will not miss out on any updates coming from our end. What is SQL? SQL is a database programming language for retrieving and managing data in relational databases. SQL is an acronym for Structured Query Language. The Relational Database Management System RDBMS, standard language is SQL. SQL is the standard database language used by all relational database management systems such as MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, Sybase, Informis, Postgres and SQL Server. They also use a variety of dialects like TSQL is used by MS SQL Server, PLSQL is used by Oracle, JetSQL is used by MS Access. This query language was adopted by as an ANSI standard in 1986 and an ISO standard in 1987. It is the most important query language to learn if you want to work in the field of data science. SQL is used by big companies like Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn to store data in the backend. So now let's see what is the significance of SQL. A computer programming language is a set of explicit instructions for accomplishing specific operations on computers or equipment. We can use precise algorithms to control the behavior and output of a computer using a programming language. SQL is one such programming language used by the computer. This helps computer and machines to process vast amounts of complicated data more efficiently and effectively. That is why SQL is beneficial to business, particularly in the development of system database management services. So let's see, what are the different applications of SQL? As previously said, SQL is one of the most extensively used database query languages. Some of the applications are, the users can gain access to data stored in relational database management systems using SQL. Users can use SQL to describe the data. SQL also allows users to define and manipulate the data in a database. It allows SQL modules, libraries, and pre-compilers to be embedded within other languages. The users can have the ability to build and delete process database and tables. It also allows users to build database views, stored procedures, and functions. 
permissions for tables, methods, and views can be set by the users with SQL. So let's see what are the salary expectancy of SQL enthusiasts. From startups to established companies, the job market looks good for SQL enthusiasts and it is expected to grow exponentially in the coming years. SQL programmers or developers have good opportunities in all the geographies. Also, after obtaining a certification in SQL, the average salary hike expected is around 40 to 50 percent. So, okay. So, what is SQL? So, so far, let's understand about the SQL. So, remember that it was a language which was based on what? A model which was developed by who? Anyone? Who developed this model? The EF code, Edgar F. Ted code. Okay, on the basis of these relational model, the SQL language appeared. Remember that. Okay, so what is this language and how this help us? How it helped me as a user to understand? This is my machine, right? This is my machine. When a machine an application is running, let's simply say that there is an application which is running on my machine, and to interact with this application, right? With this application, we call it as a R. BMS. So to interact with this application, we need to learn a language which we call it as a SQL language. Okay. So SQL is a universal language for the RDBMS. Okay. To interact with any RDBMS tool or application, we use a language which is known as SQL. Remember that. Okay. So SQL stands for Structure Query Language. Okay, SQL stands for structure query language. In this, the structure is what? Table. Okay, in my SQL, there is a structure and we call this structure as a table. Not exactly this table. Maybe my drawing is not too good, but the structure like the Excel tables, if you have seen, or if you have drawn any tables, so like that. Okay, so these can be my table. So what does a table consist of, anyone? Table consists of rows and columns. So we have three columns in it, C1, C2, C3. And we have multiple rows in it. Okay. You see, we have different, different rows in it. So we have total number of six rows and three columns. These columns, what does the column mean? Column can be any header like the name of a person, age of a person, or address of a person. Right, so name can be A, B, C, D. I will type just like this so that, so it can be any name starting with any character. So I just don't want to be precise about the name to save the time, okay? I will just type the names like this. Age 21, 19, 22, 23, 34, 31. Yeah. Address can be Delhi, right? Mumbai, Pune, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Bengal, Karnataka or Bangalore. So these are my, this is my table. Table consists of rows and columns. We have three rows and six columns. How many columns and rows? Three, uh, six rows and three columns. So, okay. So always remember that. In SQL, there is a structure. We call that structure as a what? Table. Remember that. Okay. So now, when we talk about this structure, why does this structure is required in SQL Server? Okay, this structure help us to store the data. As a moment ago, I try to add the data in this structure. Okay, I try to add the data in this structure, which means I am capable of adding the data into the structure. Let's say that the ID number B changed its address from Mumbai to Tamil Nadu, and by the time he reached Tamil Nadu, he is 20 years old. So I modified the record as well. So when we talk about this structure, I changed the record and uh, for the ID or the participant B, the I, A changed from 19 to 20 and the place changed from Mumbai to Tamil Nadu. So this is the modification. Sometime if a company left an organization, let's say that one of the people of my company, let's say e-record left the organization, I will remove the record of this person permanently from my table. Okay, so this is the adding the record, removing the record or modifying the record. So SQL, with the help of a SQL language, we will, we will be able to perform such operation. Read the language, write the data and modify or delete the records.
Okay, this is the basic functionality of the SQL language. As I was mentioning about this SQL language, this is a very much common or very much standard language for any RDBMS tool or application. Okay, so there are n numbers of tool in the market, which we call it as an RDBMS, like MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, Sybase, Informix, Postgres, SQL Server, like Cassandra. So there are like, I would say tons of tool available in the market where, where they call themselves in an RDBMS. But the globally tool, which are very much popular. So MySQL, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. These two are very much used in the industry. Okay, if you haven't uh, known about that, that's the reason because you haven't start working with any of this tool. So, or you aren't aware of the, how these tools impact the market. As we slowly learn about these tools, so you will get to know how these tools, with the help of this tool, the application are saving the data. Okay. This is one thing. So now we will talk about the first tool, which is known as a Microsoft SQL Server. To talk about the, I will give you an introduction of the three of the tools which are very much commonly used, MySQL, Oracle, and the Microsoft SQL Server. So first we will say about the company. Okay, so which companies are using what? So if we talk about the Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and MySQL, MySQL, Oracle, or Microsoft SQL Server. So the language which Microsoft SQL Server use, it is known as T-SQL. For those applications, there is a language, we call it as a T-SQL. Remember that. Oracle uses a programming language, we call it as a PL backslash SQL. PL stands for programming language. And the MySQL programming language is known as a SQL only. They have not any advanced name or any other name. So they just adapt the SQL language only. Okay. How they are different from one another. Okay. So as this is a product of a Microsoft, these two are the products of Oracle only as of now. I'm currently stating that. So because MySQL has, uh, they, they have been a, a big journey for the MySQL. It was developed by the Sun Microsystems. So prior to that, it was developed by the free of the developers. So then this was acquired by the Oracle itself, Oracle Corporation. Okay. So if we talk about the Microsoft SQL Server, this is not free. So you have to pay to use this tool. So this is also not free. You have to pay, not free. I will type here N, not free, not free. And this is a freeware, which means you can use it without paying any like upfront payment for this tool to be used for saving the data. So this call it as a open source. Whenever a product is free, so which means it's open source, this you can edit or change the code it's itself according to your use. Okay. When we talk about the use of a Microsoft SQL Server and the Oracle, these are used for the large scale business. Large scale business. T stands for transaction, as I mentioned, it is known as a transaction. T here stands for transaction SQL. PL stands for programming language SQL. Okay, remember that. So when we talk about the performance or the scalability, so these are used for the large scale business, large scale business, small scale businesses. Okay, all of them are known as RDBMS2. Okay. When we talk about the cost, so Microsoft has some cost, Oracle has some cost, but this is free. But most of the company do not rely on a freeware to store their data. Why? Because whenever we are using a service, right? Or whenever we are using an application, they must provide a service for that application, which means that if you are using a programming language or if you are using a software or an application, in case you run into an issue. So as this is a freeware, so there is a Microsoft MySQL community, but still they don't have any support. Right. It's a freeware. It's a forum on which you can type the question and they can get back to you. But 
most uh, mostly companies do not rely on such kind of things right so if your if your application is not that critical you can jump to the mysql else you can pay for ms sql or oracle itself i hope this is clear so as i was talking about these programming languages and the tools on which these programming languages are used Microsoft SQL Server used a programming language which is known as T hyphen SQL. T stands for a transaction here. PL stands for a programming language here. We also have a lightweight version of the Microsoft SQL Server which is known as MS Access. So this is a SQL. Like it, this tool is also like using an RDBMS, which is a SQL language. This tool was developed by the Microsoft itself, and it's a very the use of a very use of this tool is to like take the improvement plan for the small businesses or the small scale businesses itself. So the programming language which it use, we call it as a Jet SQL. Okay. Okay. So these were the tools and the information about the tools. Now, why we need to learn about the SQL? Why not any other programming language? So most of the time, like we have the programming language for the objects classes, like the for the different different tools or the different different applications for the front end design from the back end design. So every language is, works differently. In here, this language is basically designed to store the data. Okay, which allows the user to access the data, which means to read the data from the database management system. Okay, this allows the user to describe the data when you define the data in the database, which means with the help of this language, you can create your own databases, own tables according to you, according to your own choices. Okay, then you can modify the data. If you don't use it, you can also drop the data from the databases. It is all achievable, right? So these things are all achievable in the SQL Server. So SQL Server can be used with the other programming language or the compilers, like many compilers are there, like the Python support is there. There is R Studio support. There is a Java supported. I will show you that the list of the things which we can do in the SQL using the compilers okay this will also help you as i was mentioning you will be able to create databases create table drop them modify them and advanced functionality of the sql server like the views stored procedures functions triggers programming constructs loops or in other terminology if i would say exception handling those are the advances of the sql server you can also use those on sql server Right. In terms of permission or security, you can control the security of the users who wants to read the access, who will have the right access, who will have the modify access, who will only have the connect permission. So such type of a granularity you can have on your databases. So which means that you have the full control of this database and your data. Right. So this just a quick info, guys. Intellipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with IIT and Pavatak. Through this course, you will master Power BI, data modeling, data mining, and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry expert. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics. Just a quick quiz question guys, what does SQL stands for? Option A, simple query language. Option B, structured query language. Option C, system query language. And option D, software query language. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's continue with the session. This programming language made, makes it very much easy to use. Yes, they can. So we have now a question in the chat. So do company, most of the companies uses two operating system, like uh, I would say two database management system for their use? Yes, why not? If they have a two separate project, so they can use it. For a single project, no. I wouldn't believe that they will use it on for a single project. Okay, so most of the company want, if, if they have to run something with a low budget, they will go with the MySQL. Okay, if they have the budget, 
if they are good with like spending the amount of the money on the tool so that you can go for the either microsoft sql server or oracle so it's it's their choice right and the, what the business requires okay now so how many of you have uh, like heard about a terminology which is known as a no sql no sql no sql anyone have heard about this term and no sql did not hear okay so similar to the sql in sql we call it as a rdbms remember this terminology so sql is a rdbms but most of the time whenever we receive the data this is not a relational so they don't have any relation okay so no sql is a non relational database management system okay so no sql is a non relational database management system which does not need a schema in the sql so we whenever we want to store the data we we will store the data inside a database database will store the data inside a table so table table will store the data in the forms of rows and column in here there is no schema at all okay so which is which means that you cannot join the data in the no sql why is the no sql used for so no sql we can say this is a next generation database management system okay so this is the next generation database management system where the only purpose to use the no sql is to distribute the data whenever the data is very much big okay whenever the data is very much big so we can store the data inside the no sql but to do what okay so to do what so mainly the use of this technology or this no sql is to do the real time uh, i would say real time calculations or real time analysis of the data like mostly like amazon facebook instagram or twitter or google uses this on to day to day basis i will just show you one image in a moment to show you how does the no sql look like so no sql is further divided into four different types okay so no sql is further divided into four different type i hope this is pretty clear now so the four different types of no sql databases are document based graph based graph databases key and the value stores and the wide column stores now we need to understand first what is a relational database right how we can say a database is relational let's say that how many of you have done the shopping anyone here shopping shopping geek or somebody who do the shopping a lot ah good most of us do right so let's say that there is one person who is trying to do the shopping right let's say i am the person who is trying to buy a product over the internet so that we can see how the data can be relational ah there is like still 80% who do the online shopping and the offline shopping so let's say this is the user i am the user one name b living in delhi okay so i went to a site so look through the products so my name is one i am looking through the shoes shoes has a price 2k have the id 111 some tag numbers and second i choose the belt 1k having the id 616 so one oh this is my id number 1 what so i choose the product 111 616 this product was added to the cart so after the cart it was moved to the checking so 1111 paid online one product 1616 cod cash on delivery so these two product will be delivered 1111 and 1616 was delivered so this was the online delivery and this was a cash on delivery okay
right so far yeah so if you see over here right if you see the different different like the user products cart delivery and i would say this is the checkout or something right so you see everything is our interrelated when we say over here interrelated you see id number 1 one this ids and these two ids are interconnected with one another right and these was being delivered to my home location which is the delhi okay so over here this is known as an rdbms these are known as rdbms the there is a relationship between the each and every product okay now so most of the time if if i take an example a rough example of an non relational database management system i would say these are the different different boxes so this is the box of a school deep uh, i would say police doctor do you find any relationship between these three this this can be an example of a non relational data okay so there is no relationship okay now as i was talking about the no sql right so no sql are furtherly divided into the four different types document graph key and value wide column in our like coming days or in this course you are not going to learn about the no sql altogether a different field not very much used right so now we will understand that okay so if we talk about the document base so this will store the document structures so which are used or encapsulated in the json altogether different thing right so there is no structure like in the sql we have the table structure in here we don't have any structure in the graph if i talk about the graph databases so it emphasizes the connection between the data elements like storing the related nodes in graph to accelerate the query okay if we talk about the key and the value stores so those can be identify a key associated with its value so most of the time one key has one value like the login name if there is a login there will be a name like login name can be alpha password name can be a b c d right so login has a name so it is a key associated with its value then we also have the wide column structure okay so these kind of a four different types of a databases are being used by the different different applications like we have the rdbms application like mysql microsoft sql server oracle right postgres or ms access ibm db2 over here so there are the different different no sql application like couchbase couchdb l amazon R, uh, amazon rds is there amazon or rango db ibm db2 graph neo j4 aero spike dynamo db gcp google cloud big tables hibase scala db cassandra cumulo so these are the different different structures or and the different different tools that support the structure okay so now which company uses the no sql and which company uses the sql why the no sql is used and the why the sql is used right most of you will have this question let's talk about the few companies how they will use these two together okay let's say if we will talk about the banking sector everything in the bank is a relational right so bank insurance companies or like the financial institution often uses the sql databases for their core system because of the data consistency because every transaction matters there is a relationship between the that transaction right so you got one point the second thing can be the e-commerce platform like the as i was showing you the an example so it can be any e-commerce website on the basis of which they will use the sql why because like most of the e-commerce websites like amazon ebay flipkart uses the sql to store their data okay because every transaction matters 
right we will talk about the social media i am coming to that so now i am i am talking about the erp or the sap systems so wherein the it is the business suits so wherein they also use the sql enterprise solutions like the healthcare provider or the government agency healthcare or the government as well so they uses the sql why every transactions matter there every transaction matter there. okay now let's talk about the no sql when no sql is used so companies like that as i have shown you the slide so companies like facebook twitter uses no sql database to handle the vast amount of unstructured data now there can be the there is if there is a video on over the internet let's say over the facebook no anybody can call, like post a comment on the video right so anybody can post it anybody can share it so which means that most of the time if i say in terms of that data so the data is unstructured right it is not something relational it is unstructured or a semi structured data which are being used by the or generated by the users if i talk about the comments in the post so the comment in the post like or the user profiles so those have something which is not having any relationship with one another okay so no sql databases are probably used for the flexibility i would say right so apart from that let's say about the reviews so in the amazon if i talk about the reviews of a product so how the reviews are being generated so by the users by the likes by the comments they made on a product so identifying those things can be used or can be done under the no sql databases okay so searching the big data like the big data analysis like uh, in in terms of uh, airbnb uber google maps so the way they receive the data from the users so while you are searching and how quick the result can be there so whenever you search something over the internet it does not mean that 100% it will give you a perfect result right it does not mean that right it can give you any type of result in there right so the tech companies as well for the i would say advert advertisement or analyzing impression so as i was talking about or the like to find out the prediction analysis so they uses a no sql database because in that data is not very much relational and still there are some companies which uses the both sql and the no sql databases so let's say about the netflix uh, i'm just making it up okay so let's say about the netflix so but if you will uh, like if you will understand about the netflix there is one thing so they have the sql they should have the sql as well as well, no sql why so whenever there is a billing new users and such information which is critical those are stored on the sql databases now there are the content as well so contents need to be faster need to be it is not related with one another so those can be stored on the no sql same thing with the linkedin so if i want to store the profiles of the users their history their organizational structure their i would say post so such things can be managed over the linkedin over the sql databases right so but for the semi structured data wherein users are commenting posting the media so those should come under the no sql databases right so this is how you can see the difference between the sql and the no sql so this can be the one of the example for the unstructured data you see everything over here can be a unstructured right there is nothing where you can find a relationship right so these are the three friends who place their orders they place something and their order cost them around 300 dollars they have to visit a place this place is located in the george washington why they are visiting because of a friend so this is just a random example how the graph data look like so this is just the example for the graph data it can be homogeneous data is structure and heterogeneous uh -huh. it is a question or homogeneous what is a homogeneous and heterogeneous if i would say you a simple question so when we talk about the homogeneous heterogeneous structured and unstructured these are the different types of data okay so if i talk about the homogeneous data so you can say that it is structured you are right very much right so but it, it there is a problem in in that 
what is the problem so let's say that the relational database table with the rows and column where each column has a defined data type right so in the i would say in the homogeneous data if there is a table right and there has the columns so every column is having a defined data type right in other terminologies if i would say that uh there can be a collection of the textbooks where each document is in the plain text format right so homogeneous heterogeneous are the two different terminologies that cannot be set together as a structured data and the unstructured data if you'll read more about the sql and its type so homogeneous and heterogeneous are the two other types of a data itself when we say about the heterogeneous data right so heterogeneous data refers that the it varies in terms of its structure right or its format or its data type right the same thing it can be unstructured which means that there is no uniformity between the data the the data whatever is present it's a mix of a structured or the unstructured data right so if i take an example of a heterogeneous data so let's take an example of an organization where the environment include the structured relational databases like the data is stored in the json file data are being called from the different different part of an application right now when we talk about the structured or the unstructured data right so it totally and totally says that it's in a organized and in a specific format right so which means that there is a well defined schema or model in other terminology there is a model so the data can be stored inside the different different tables in the different different databases and in an organized where each and everything is the uh, uniform right there is no i would say that there is no same kind of a structure in there okay so and now i can say that the structured data also can be the homogeneous and the heterogeneous based on their property right but to uh, conclude in generic terminology i would say heterogeneous or homogeneous are totally different if you go in depth of the statistics and how the structure look like what it's a debatable yes you can call them as a structured uh, like let's say homogeneous and the heterogeneous to be structured and the non structured but in the long uh, in a longer run in a bigger picture these four are very much different different from one another right homogeneous heterogeneous so these things so if i say about the homogeneous also contains two type of structure if i go in depth of this it it can be the structured and it can be the unstructured let's say as you mentioned employee database it is totally containing the columns rows wherein which has the employee id date of birth department or addresses right each column has a defined data type and there is a consistent structure right so this can be the homogeneous also homogeneous can be the unstructured data right why because it can contain uh, as i was mentioning about the plain text let's say an example of a image it can contain an image a library of image in the same format jpeg format right but in the jpeg format there is no structure right it is lacking a structure in there right so if you are storing the images in your databases that includes any graphic contents or photographs those can be the homogeneous because they are of the same family right but there is missing structure so that this is known as homogeneous unstructured data simply if i talk about the heterogeneous data so again it can be the unstructured data like the data warehouse where the data whichever we are receiving can be unstructured text data or the data is being called from the different different multimedia contents like the videos right it can be anything or the people are posting something over the internet or the social media platform so such things can be the heterogeneous data but when we say about the structured and the unstructured data right if i pay attention on to this part so structured data is that where each and every uh, like i would say table have the connection in between right so that we can go forth and backwards right so apart from that if i would say of an healthcare record if you have visited any like if somebody uh, let's say not 
uh, in a good terminology if somebody have visited any 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 relational databases model like the healthcare system or banking sector right so there everything is structured if you are having a bank account saving account and then credit card is there then your ft account is there or your loan account is running so everything is integrated in between so there is a relationship right so those things can be the uniformed in that right so the, these can be the things in the homogeneous heterogeneous in the structure in if it is clear more clear you, but you are right yes. right mohan you, you you are also right in that okay so this is clear the picture how it look like that's good so now we understood about the sequel and the no sequel now the sequel no sequel these are considered are known as a language right so these are nothing but the sqls are known as a language only which help the user to interact with our database management system now the two terminologies appear on the screen one is known as a dbms and the other one is known as a rdbms right when we talk about the dbms okay so if we talk about the more in depth of the model of a dbms it provides a various data models like the hierarchical model object oriented relational model right in the broader terminology we will see in a moment or two what are those models so when we store the data in the dbms it should be in a tabular structure within a defined relationship between the tables right so that we can manage the data in the various ways depending upon the specific system in terms of a data integrity which means the data should be relational wherein if we make any changes those changes should be saved in our system right so both dbms and rdbms uses a sql language to store the data or to interact with this application now if we now talk about the nar dbms it's an advance or i i would say it's an advanced concept of a dbms right so our dbms stands for relational database management system where data is organized in tables which are having the relations among one another right so the tables are stored in the format of rows and column the principle which the dbms or our dbms follows for the data integrity so those are being done with the help of a sql language right so the structure as i was mentioning about the structure of the dbms and the rdbms both uses a table structure the data is stored in the terms of rows and columns right so in the rdbms as well we can perform the administrative tasks like performance query optimization taking the backups doing the indexes rebuilds checking the database consistency no i i did not mention it is unstructured a dbms is in hierarchical data wherein it supports a tabular structure okay no uh, like the limitations we will come to that right what are the limitations we we have the slide for that okay so we'll come to come for that what are the limitations we have how much columns we can create in a table so things like that so dbms as i mentioned you no know, it is like like we cannot say the unstructured because the dbms cannot store the unstructured data but in terms of a table having a relationship there can be a tables in the dbms wherein we can say that those are not at all relational all right so this is the concept of a dbms and the rdbms so if you are reading over the internet right so you may be reading it for the no sequel so when we talk about the dbms it was the prior concept which was introduced in the year 1960 right so dbms and the rdbms a data can be semi structured as well as a no sequel right as i was giving the different types of the example for the heterogeneous or the oh, sorry for the homogeneous data structures right wherein i mentioned about the different types of data which are relational then i then i talked about the all text data so it it depends upon what kind of data you receive so if i would say an example if which you can make right for the no sequel let's say about the mongo db so mongo db is also a no sequel so but it uses a dbms structure 
right so to document uh, uh, for the document store data types so wherein the basic functionality for that tool is to store the data but same time rdbms like a uh, microsoft sql server also uses the uh, this rdbms tool which is the database management system with to store the data depends upon what kind of data you will receive if a tool is there to handle the application right which will support the data which is unstructured or the non structured data right so those can be the no sql right and for the structured data we can say for the rdbms right you are right okay got it thank you okay unstructured semi structured and structured data very good any other questions before we move to the next slide okay so now this is a representation of a data in our database so these boxes can be represented as a different different tables okay so far we know that the tables can be interconnected as i have shown you one diagram where id and the product id help us to combine the different different tables so that a person ordered a product so that that product was added to the cart then he check the i uh, check out that product and then a delivery was being sent if i zoom this bit so you will see same thing there is a relation between the different different tables let's say about the this table and the this table has a relation on the basis of a country region code this table and the this table has a relation on the basis of a state province id right so these can be the different different entities on the basis of which a tables can be interrelated or interconnected with one another sql server nodes so everything will be shared with you over the google drive mail okay so this can be a representation of a er diagram e e stand for entity r stand for relationship entity is over here we call entity as a table a table is known as entities so these are the different different entities and they are having a relationship on the basis of a call this relationship we call it as a primary key foreign key relationship as today is the first class we are just introducing sql server to you so we will not discuss what is primary key or the some of the advanced things in sql server okay so now now we will see so if you have installed the sql server on your machine so then you can do one thing uh, you can follow whatever i am be doing so to uh, like launch the sql server to see the tools so whatever are there in the in your system so if you have not done the installation yet no worries okay by the end of the tomorrow or the day after tomorrow you will be able to do it now everybody see this button this start button or their screens you need to click on that start button you need to go to the all apps under the all apps you need to scroll down to the keyword m all right so under the m keyword we have two tools which is named as microsoft sql server and microsoft sql server tools okay so two tools are there one is known as microsoft sql server and the other one is known as microsoft sql server tools now pay attention first we need to open a tool which is named as under the microsoft sql server it in your case it can be 2022 it can be 2019 or it can be 2016 so whatever tool it is showing you need to expand the first folder so these what are these different different tools over here so whenever you install a product so product comes with a predefined libraries or predefined tools you will not be using all of them but i will show you one tool and how this can help you so if you see under the microsoft sql server 2022 there is a tool which is known as sql server 2022 configuration manager you need to open this tool i just click on this tool so this will ask me yes or no do you want this app to make the changes on your device so you need to say yes once this is opened okay once this is opened you see a lots of services running in your machine just open this tool and let me know if you have done it i will give you 2 minutes of time to open this tool if you have done it just raise your hand or just say okay so if they are in a running state that is good and the start mode should be automatic always what does the automatic and what does the manual mean here okay so whenever a service is in a manual mode and you restart your 
application or if you restart your laptop so this service will not come online i will repeat once more if an application is in the manual mode so if you restart your computer so this application will not come online until and unless you will start it how you are going to start it if this is in a stop state you need to right click and click on the start but in my case we need to pay attention to the three services which we have okay so i will give you a in detailed explanation about these services so first one is known as a engine service the second one is known as agent service and the third one is known as browser service okay Come on, show me that it's light. Okay. So first one is known as engine service. The second one is known as agent service. And the third one is known as browser service. So when we talk about the agent browser and the engine service, the first service which we will look into is the engine service. So anybody have, okay, if you have any working idea. Okay, no, no, okay. So if we talk about the engine service, this is very much critical. If you want to like run your tool, if you want to use your tool, this service should be always running. The SQL Server engine service is the main component. Without this service, you will not be allowed to run your application. So which means that your service should be running in case you want to use this software. This is the first thing. So now with the help of this service, so the most of the people or the applications will be able to connect to this. So application connect to this machine only. So if it is having the engine service running on it. This is the second thing. Now, the second service which we have is the agent service. So the use of a SQL server agent service, always remember that. The use of the agent service is that it will help you to schedule a task. What does the schedule mean? So schedule mean run a task in your absence. Like, like if you have seen the so if I talk about the SQL Server agent service, so this is a scheduler. What does a scheduler mean? This will run a task for you in case of your absence. So which means that this agent service allows you to automate a task, automate a script, or run any maintenance activities on your behalf. Okay, so this, with the help of a, this agent job, Agent service, you can create the multiple jobs to be run in the background. A layman term example for this will be a reminder, alarm clock, yeah. uh, anything which do the task for you. Or if you have using the washing machines or the refrigerators, there are the temperature control things, there are the timers, there are the AC control things, wherever they can put the stopwatch. So same thing, it can run a task for you. Okay, so if this service is not running, okay, no worries. You can start the service. But we mainly rely on the engine service in our program to learn about the Microsoft SQL Server. So this server, engine service is very much important. So I will highlight this in the red sign. So then it comes the third service, which is known as a browser service. When we talk about the browser service, Right, so this service will help the applications to connect to my database. This application to connect to my database. How? To understand this process, so let's understand the terminology. First, I will go into the depth of this. So most of us, so how many of you know what is an operating system? OS, operating system. Can anybody tell me three types of operating systems which are being used around the world? Don't Google it. If you know it, that's okay. If you don't know it, I'm here to help. Operating system. What is an operating system? Very good. Wish, Windows wish and uh, Android. iOS. iOS. Uh, Linux. Very good. Linux. Yes, people, you're right. And the Mac operating system. 
which is an iOS operating system. Ah, so the one, the Android, the iOS. So those are the only limited to the mobile phones so far. So we don't have any Android system which are running on the uh, processors, Intel cores. So those operating system are running on a mobile phones, right? So now on which machine you can install the SQL? So we can install the SQL on the Windows machine. We can install the SQL on the Linux machine, but not on the Mac machine. So far, we cannot install the SQL on the Mac machine. All the versions of the SQL can be installed on Windows machine. But starting from SQL 2017, 2019, and 2020-22, so these three versions of the SQL Server are being supported so far. SQL Server, SQL Server, and SQL Server. Okay, so now, so while we were talking about the browser service, I mentioned, yeah, I will do that. So pay attention to the browser service. While we were talking to the application and the database, while we were talking about the browser service, so we have seen this, this is my application. So which is installed on a laptop one. Why I'm saying laptop? Because most of you know that the laptop, but there is a concept of a server. So this is installed on one machine, my application, and this database is installed on a second laptop, laptop two, or this is known as a server two. So to communicate server one with server two or laptop one with laptop two, we uses an we uses an browser service. So if you are running a browser service, uh if your browser service is running, so this will help application to connect with your database machines. So SQL Server browser service help the client applications to locate and connect to SQL Server instance in short. Okay. In short, the shortcut or the short use of this service is to, to help application to connect with the database server. This is a layman terminology. This is not simple if the service is running, application will connect. There are the 10 number things of uh, which we have to configure over here. 10 numbers of things we have to configure over here, but the for that browser service should be running. Now, when is it clear the browser service for everyone? So we don't require the browser service in our program. Okay, so we don't require the browser service in our program because we are learning engine service only. So browser service are used to interact with the application. So we don't have any application. If it is not running, perfectly fine. The only one service which should be running is the engine service. I will repeat my this engine service once more. So engine service or the database engine is the core component of SQL Server. So without this, you will not be able to connect to SQL Server at all. Okay, this is responsible for storing, process, managing your databases. Okay, so everything, every query, every transaction, every user, every connection will be handled through the SQL Server engine service. Clear? Is it clear? Now, everyone tell me. So if your engine service is running, yes or no? If it is running, then good. If not, just let me know or you can do, just start it. Right click and start it. If it is in a stop state, just right click and start it. So one thing to mention here, so whatever I am saying you about this now, there is no document for that, okay? So these are the steps which I am showing you because how I can take the steps notification, right? So these things are not written in the PDF. So this is the thing which I'm helping you to understand if your SQL server is not running. So what can be the possible issues? Okay. Mm -hmm. The request field or the, we'll see it towards that. So now this screen over here has some options in it, right? So when we talk about the options, so you see the first thing is the server name. Right. So make a note of the thing. So we'll discuss it toward the end if you are having an issue. Right. So now when I talk about the server name, what is the server name? This server name can be can be said. So if I talk about this server name, it is simply 
the name which you provided while installing your product okay so in my case it can be different so in case you don't know it how you can find it out if this is blank or this is empty you need to click on this drop down pay attention to my screen first okay if this is blank or empty so in that case if it you are not facing an issue does not meet you will not face an issue in the future so so if you see over here this server name is something so which can be seen if you click on this drop down and click on browse for more if you see there is an option browse for more once you click on this browse for more so you can see a database engine name thing so if i expand the database engine over here i can find out the name of my instance with or the name of my project or the sql server which i have installed once i find it out i will highlight and click okay the first part is i have identified this was my database engine service and under the engine service this is my instance name second thing is the authentication type in sql server there are mainly two types of authentication one authentication is known as sql server authentication so with this authentication if you have a valid username and a password you will be able to connect if you don't have a valid username and a password you will not be able to connect so it will say login failed now the second type of authentication which you have is the windows authentication so this can be a sso login or a single sign on what is the meaning of a single sign on consider this account like i will take one example of a google email or if you guys are having a gmail account so consider this as an example of a gmail account now gmail has multiple services like google documents google drive google email google photos google meet google lens so there are n numbers of application which are there in the google drive right or the, or with the google so once you like have the connection to your gmail account all those application does not require a validation right they does not require a password right so same thing goes with the sql server authentication uh, sorry windows authentication with those authentication are considered as a single sign on account once the machine or the laptop on which you have logged in using your credentials the same login is being pulled by sql server to get connected if this login has the permission to connect just a quick info guys intelipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with iit and pavatak through this course you will master power bi data modeling data mining and much more from the iit madras faculty and industry expert With this course we have already had thousands of professional in successful career transition you can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below without a doubt this course can set your careers to new height so visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics just a quick quiz question guys what is the key difference between rdbms and dbms option a RDBMS supports relationships between tables while DBMS does not. Option B, DBMS is used for small scale applications and RDBMS is used for large scale applications. Option C, RDBMS uses a schema to define the structure of database while DBMS does not. Option D, DBMS is open source while RDBMS is proprietary. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's continue with the session. so you will be able to connect else you will not be able to connect got it okay the account which you have used to log in to your laptop if that account is having a permission on your laptop to connect to the sql server then it should be connected else you will not be able to connect if you are connected good if you are not connected which means that you are using a wrong account itself now everything over here on the left hand side under the object explorer these are known as objects what are these known as objects the top one which we have on the screen the one highlighted this is known as instance name this is known as instance name under that instance name these are different different objects okay these are what 
my different different objects i can expand i can collapse this instance so whatever comes under this instance name everything will be there whatever is under this instance name everything will be present there now on this instance name i have three four icons which are there on the top the first icon is to connect the second icon is to disconnect and third icon is to refresh so if you want to safely disconnect from this without causing any issue you just click on disconnect which means that it will disconnect a user from this application it will not disconnect a database or a, any application or table this will disconnect you from this application second thing is the connect so if you want to get connected to this you can click on the connect button and now third thing would be the refresh refresh means simply if you have done any changes or you've created databases and things are not showing up you just need to do the refresh of this what you need to do a refresh of this i will just take extra five minutes as i mentioned so then we will conclude the session okay now this is this interface over here this is known as graphical user interface gui graphical why we call it as a graphical user interface because with the help of a mouse and i can do the right click and i can make the change you can see i can refresh i can disconnect i can disconnect as well i can connect as well right with the help of a mouse with the help of this graphics i will be able to perform multiple operation but where i can type the commands so over here we need to open a new query editor window which is a, like a text editor window so if you click on this new query button on the top so this will open a new query editor window so this query editor window will help us to write our code always remember that the query editor which we have in sql server it is only supported with the text only supported with the text which means any text you can type in this one but not any graphics like videos images cannot be copied so same thing like the notepad now i can open the multiple new query vi editor windows so this is in my hands i can open them up i just, just click on it it keeps on opening right so these things can be done i will close them all by right clicking on the one i it can say close a single document or i will do the right click and say close all documents so i had had this kind of a command on this one either i can close the multiple documents at the same time like the simple notepad file i can save this file on my desktop i will go to the file i will say save query 7 on my desktop under the weekday day this is my demo 1 so as i am living in a different country so my timing and your timings are not same so don't feel like uh i am just missing out the time okay so simple thing is that so i am just in a different time zone so that is the reason you are seeing the 19 hour here i know in india it's 20 happy ganesh chaturvati to each and every one of you right this is a festival it was yesterday uh, to me it's still happening here so so now as we were discussing about this so this is thank you thank you thank you so as i was discussing about this tool right i have created one demo file so now this is stored on my local drive thank you so you see if i if i show you this document so there is a one file which is there this is empty which means 0 kb so now if i write this is this is the first ah uh, sql demo class so which means that this is the first sql demo class so this simply means that i have written a code in this i can save press control s and save the data like the same thing like the word document and the notepad document i can save the data now you see this file will have some kbs in it 1 kb i can open the document as well without using microsoft sql server management studio i will right click i will say open this document with the notepad file so i can also open the document with the notepad file you see 
under the document in the notepad file this says that this is my sql demo class so now so the sql so some things to remember here sql is not a case sensitive language are extension of sql files are dot sql sql is not a case sensitive language extension of sql files are dot sql this is a single line comment or uh, i would say single line comment case sensed i will talk about this. single single line comment starts with starts with hyphen hyphen like this so extension so like the word document the extension is dot docs excel document dot extension is dot xl sx so now what is a case sensitive in english we have the case or the sentence start with the first capital letter then all followed by the lower case if that is not a it's a noun it's a name and name or some important or some uh, like the country name so then it will be the under case or the lower case so most of the programming language in the market like c c++ python followed some uh, case sensitive language but sql is not whether you type in the case uh, upper case or the lower case still it will work what is a comment comment you can understand the comment like the subject line if you have written the application letters or you have written the let's say any any essays so on the top you summarize something you write it about what this program is what this code is so something so that the others will be able to understand if you have written a 100 lines of code so you will provide a generic information about that code so that the others will be able to understand and decode that information so are those three lines okay so if you want to type a code or a comment in sql server that start with a single single hyphen hyphen over here is it clear for everyone so far what we have discussing very good so now apart from this there are some information which we see on the screen one is known as a session id second is known as a instance name login name and the fourth one is known as a database name okay now so if we talk about the these four things in the sql server okay so session id whenever a program runs whenever a user is a connected to the sql server so there is a session id session id is a process id process id is like a a code which is given to you let's say that you are entering a organization you are entering a company so at the gate you have to either uh, make a like note of yourself at the front desk that this person with this id has been came at this time right so that we are aware who is currently being in the office is it the threat it's an employee it's a, like a, some kind of a, i would say guest or some a vice president who is there so session ids so sql server wants to make a note of everything it's like a gatekeeper so whenever you make a connection to the sql server so it generates a id for you every time you open a new query i would see so you see so i will open this new query multiple times like let's say 10 20 times every time a sql server generates a different session id now i will show you that it's still going on come on stop it now okay okay that sounds good okay so now if i click on this drop down over here i see there are a multiple session ids you see there are the session id session id is this number which is 52 70 71 72 and blah 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 up to 68 so these are the different different session ids now are they in sequence they are never in the sequence they can be this can be randomly assigned by the sql server to us this is not in the sequence okay so session id is something a number given to you whenever you open a new query or whenever you connect to sql server so that sql server makes note of everything 
Okay, so my current session ID is what? Can anybody tell me or type in the chat what is my current session ID? Fifty-two. Very good, perfect. So we or I have a current session ID which is named as fifty-two. Instance name. What is the instance name? From where I can find it? Yeah, not nineteen fifty-two. So nineteen September is the name of the file. Demo. If I hover my mouse on this file. So it is saying that demo one nineteen September twenty twenty three dot sequel is the extension of this file. If you see on the lower uh, taskbar uh, where this taskbar is, it is written as well here by the name my login name fifty two is written. Okay, so fifty two is the session ID, right? So what is the instance name? Instance name in the the SQL server name. So towards the bottom, so you can see what is my instance name? Thelon backslash demo. Okay, so this is my instance name, right? So what is this known as? This is known as my instance name, login name, the account through which I am able to connect to the SQL Server. This is the second thing in here. So first is the instance name, second is the login name, and third is the session ID. Okay, so third is the session ID, and fourth is what? Fourth is my database name. Can anybody tell me from that? Taskbar. What is my database name in here? So every information is written over the bottom bar. Or you can see if you hover your mouse over here, you see towards the end. The first thing you can see over here is the instance name, right? I will just try to hover my mouse. So this is my instance name. Master is the database name. This information, Thelon Baljit and fifty two, is the login name followed by my data uh, session ID. Now. So if this I have shown you in a moment ago, multiple people can connect to the SQL Server. So what is the limit? So limit in SQL Server is thirty-two thousand seven hundred and sixty-seven people can connect. People, person can connect to my database. Person can connect to my instance of SQL Server. Okay. So this many people can connect to the instance of SQL Server in one time. Okay, in a single time, thirty-two thousand seven hundred and sixty-seven people can connect. Okay, so let's say that no ID. Good. CSV comma separated value file. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's say that a, a flat file is a type of a data storage format. So let's say this is my Notepad file. Okay, inside the Notepad, I can store my data. So what kind of data I can store inside the Notepad? Let's see that. What is this information? we can say store the name of the person age of the person address of the person so you see this i am just storing the different different functionality over here right so you see name age and address name can be alpha age can be 21 delhi uh beta 22 pune delta 24 HP Himachal Pradesh and uh, Echo 22 Bangalore. So you see that a flat file is a type of a data storage. In this, the data is being stored in a certain format. The format is that every value. So this name, age, and address. These are my values. So values are being separated with the help of a delimiter. We call this as a delimiter. I will type it here. Delimiter. Delimiter means it can be a comma, it can be a full stop, it can be a hyphen, a tab sign, it can be anything. So that can differentiate my value one with the value two. Okay, one thing. So in the flat file, data is organized in a format where each line of text represent a record or a data entry. So which means that this particular line of This particular line over here represents a record or a data entry, and fields within this data are being separated by using a comma. So fields over here are separated by using a comma. Okay, so far. Now, so to store this Notepad file, okay, this should be having a some separator in between so that we can consider it as a flat file why not we instead of creating database applications or a different different applications why not we use a notepad file to store all of the data 
what can be the limitations of this uh, notepad or a csv files anyone any idea right so the first thing is that so whenever you want to read the data from this notepad file which means a single user can read if this file is open multiple user cannot read the data or write to it so apart from that the problem in this will be so if i want to copy paste the same data again and again so this will not give me any error message you see i copy pasted the same data multiple times have it given us any error message no which means if the data is being duplicate so there is no such rule for that this talks about the data integrity okay if we have the multiple notepad files let's say this is my notepad file 1 this is my notepad file 2 and this is my notepad file 3 so over here if i want to make a relationship between these three notepad files i will not be able to make any relationship between them okay so which means that there is no integrity between the files limited data validations now so some of the time let's say that this is my notepad file and why i wanted to enter the record of a person now by mistake somebody entered the age first then it entered the name of the person then it entered the address so this is incorrect so now age column contains name and name column contains age so over here there are no rules so this is these are the challenges or these are the concurrency issues which we can say on a notepad file clear is it clear okay yes. so this notepad file can be said as a flat file now the same file if i want to store it if i want to save the name file same file in a if i want to create a same file in the excel so what will happen so let's say that this is my same file over here there is also the same problem like we had in the notepad file what is that problem we say that the, the lack of the integrity data itself can be structured but cannot be we can say there is a validation of the data in where we can put any record anywhere there is no rule and also whenever we store the files or the data uh, in the excel files or the comma separated value files those are limited number of record okay if you want to store the data into a notepad file or into a csv file so it means that there is a lack of the data so we 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 are seeing less number of record 1048576 now if you are a big company like amazon flipkart ebay or companies like that then this much of data will be generated in a fractions of a milliseconds right because if we talk about globally so you see how many people are using the amazon at one time millions of users so that would surpass this this kind of a sheet in a minutes right so over here we can say that the transactions which we can say or save in this excel file right there is no such support for that in term of a scalability right so if the files are growing now so you will create the multiple multiple sheets for a file then it will take a more time to load this file okay so data redundancy limited scalability no inbuilt security is there and at a time a single person can read the data from those files this is an one example of simply say that why we should not save our data permanently on a notepad file or on a excel file i hope this is clear csv and the excel comma separated value file a notepad file which i created a minutes ago so this was a notepad file so what is an excel file and what is the difference do you know any any by any chance anybody know what is the difference between those ha uh, both have the so this is a csv file itself if we talk about this data right so this is a comma separated value file but what is the difference you see this is this excel file itself is in csv file so which means that without that you cannot edit this file but when we say about the csv file that are widely supported and can be opened or edited by the many other applications apart from the microsoft excel okay so when we store the data in the excel file pay attention okay everyone when you store the data in the excel file so it includes it can uh, store multiple like data types we will be talking the data types to uh, today like the including text numbers dates and more when we talk about the plain csv file 
so those are known as plain text files okay those can store only the numeric data as well as the alpha varchar data variables plus character okay those can be the difference there are the lots and lots of differences right i don't want to the go into the depth of this because this will be of no use to you right else i can go there okay so this this data like this so these can be child nodes child node child node one parent can have multiple child so this is known as a hierarchical structure the upper node which we have or which is on the top which is known as what the parent or root node the below one all of them are known as child nodes in hierarchical structure is it clear yeah yes so in other terminology we call it as a directory structure i in a moment i will show you an example the purpose of a hierarchical structure are primarily used to manage the data inside the database let's say that we have a cars we'll take a example of a classic example of a cars cars car is a category under the cars we have three car types of a cars in the market now petrol diesel anybody else want to say which CNG. is the third category cng ah uh, delhi wale like all the delhi people will say say about the cng so we'll say the electric ones right yeah. cng is in 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 not used very much generally all over the world so we in we the people of delhi we know that how efficient is to use this cng yeah i will not let you down i will add cng over here right okay much cheaper than the petrol and diesel right no luggage space absolutely <laughs> that that is a problem but it it is a fuel efficient car we will say that so it it will go into a different direction yeah you are right so we have the these types of a car in the market now then we also have the hybrid car which support both the petrol and the these things so right. i can i am categorizing the things in a different different i would say sub categories so these are my sub categories itself right so a car can have different different models itself so you can further categorize into the new new models itself capacity performance like the average everything like that you can uh, break down this into the several more components so over here you see there is a hierarchy so on the top we call it as a parent and below that everyone is known as the child structure okay so the purpose as i was mentioning about the purpose is to store the data in a structured structured data it is a structured data but this relationship is known as a parent and child relationship over here there is a one advantage and one problem so if you are storing the data what problem can be there all right so first thing that is so whenever you have to add a new component you have to find a last record so which means you have to travel a lot so you have right. to start your search from here it is known as a traversing so you have to start here you have to if you are going to add in the electric you have to see where the free components are below that you have to create a new record so which means that so the first really? thing is that the data is categorized which is a natural representation of this one so which means it's efficient retrieval so if we re want to read about the electric system so we can only read the electric cars only if we are going to read the diesel car so we have the category over here which means it's an efficient retrieval but rigidity is the problem here so which means that whenever you are trying to add or remove something over here so you have to travel a lot okay in case of adding or removing a record so which makes them very much complex to query as well if we have to read this record so this is very much a complex to read okay so in generic terms we cannot use this kind of structure to store the relational data right this will have the very much disadvantage of storing the data in the hierarchical structures remember that always there is very much disadvantage of storing the data in the hierarchical structure those are not very well suited for all types of the application okay which makes them less versatile than other relational databases you got my point why i am saying that it is less versatile why it is having a complex query or why there is a rigid structure so we were talking about the advantages and disadvantages of storing the data in this one 
right so first thing the advantage can be whenever you store the data in this kind of a hierarchical or a directory structure so data is being separated from one another in their own own child format now this is one child this is second child these are the different different child so which makes them very much easy to read the structures from here if you want to read the electric structure so you can call this whole structure and we can read the data of this electric structure right which makes them so if you if i would say this is just the natural naturally how they are represented so right so they are naturally represented so every child is being separated from the other child so which make them a very much easy to read advantage is got it when structure will grow if you have to add more records then it will be let's say these are five record that is not a problem now you store the data in a for millions of hundreds and thousands of records so in that so it will be a very much complex once you read the data right because you have to travel you have to find out the work arounds to read the data right so because it it can only follow from the parent to child to child to sub childs and all things like that right so which makes them complex in the curing it rigidity as i mentioned right so if the data relationship changes frequently it can be challenging to adapt the new schema let's say that electric we have the hybrid car structure as well so in the hybrid we have both the cars electric as well as petrol or diesel so in that case how we are going to adjust that in the existing structure if something adds on so we have to reinvent or the redesign everything right so which which make them very much limited to the specific use case only so which makes them very much specific use case only so which means that now we should talk about the rdbms in the yesterday class we talked about the rdbms so now in the rdbms data is relational so the last one which we have to discuss the third type of a database which is known as the rdbms so most of in the class so know about the we have the different different application in the market so where everything is relational right in the rdbms the data is stored in which format the structured format in the forms of in the form of tables and so in the form of rows and column inside the table there are multiple people i want you to speak up so that this can be inter interactive class right so if we talk about the database a database in the sql server right so pay attention a database inside the sql server is a structure collection of data which is organized and stored on an electronic device it may be inside the tables it may be other objects but the data is very much organized in that so the purpose if you say about the purpose of this database are used to store and manage the data for various applications which will ensure there is a data integrity okay which is which ensure there is what the data integrity right okay so so this is the highest level of a database inside the database there can be multiple what so inside the database there can be multiple tables so these every box here represent the table 1 table 2 table 3 table 4 table 5 table table 5 and table 6 okay inside the database there are multiple tables okay a table in sql server is a database object that represent a structure okay so which means that when we say about the structure it is a combination it's a data which is organized into rows and column each column has a specific data type and each row represent a single rec record or a single field right so the purpose if we talk about the purpose of the table are uh, to store and organize the data in tabular format so we know this as a tabular format which is in the forms of rows and column like this so these can be multiple columns followed by multiple rows in it now we will talk about the extent now so before moving to the extent we will small talk about the smallest unit which is known as page so data inside the sql server are stored inside the tables but the lowest unit or the lowest block size where the data is stored is known as a page so most of you have used the notebooks in the schools in the college so where you used to take the notes okay so if i talk about a notebook how a notebook look like 
a blank page like this, which has a page number and some lines so that you can take the notes. On the header, so there is some information like written for the like topic and everything like that. Below that, there are some free lines, right? So simply a page in SQL Server is the smallest unit of data storage. Smallest unit of data storage within a database. The size of a page is 8 KB. One page size is equal to 8 KB. Okay, so the pages are used to store the data, okay, which is within the tables. So data, whatever the data like name, age, address, phone number. So these things are recorded in pages, right? I'm just giving you an example. So these things are recorded in the pages and SQL Server reads and write the data to the page level. Okay, where it is writing the data in the page level over here, these lines. When eight pages combine together, they form an extent. They form a one thing which is known as an extent. What is an extent? A extent in SQL Server is a unit of space allocation within a database. It contains the eight data pages. Okay, so we can say that the multiple pages together forms an extent. So what is the use of extent? Then? Extent are used to manage the uh, allocation of the data within those pages for tables. So which means that these multiple extents together, if I say 5, 10 or 20, 30 or 100 of extents together, will create one table because there is no such limitation what can be a size of a table. It can be in MBs, it can be in GBs, it can be in terabytes. So there is no such limitations for that. So if I further break down a database, thank you. A database has two files. Remember that this, this, is, this is a conceptual, but this is now the physical files we are talking about. So database has two files. One is known as data file and the other one is known as log file. So whenever you create a database, the two files will create yeah. one file, data file and other file, log file. log file. Yes. Okay. So those two talk with each other. When they talk, we will talk it today. Okay. By default, the two files will be created whenever a database are present. So this has an extension of .mdf. This is an extension of .ldf. This is known as a primary, primary data file. This is known as transaction log file. Always remember that whenever you add a data, insert a data, update a data, or delete a data, so whatever operation you will do, so every operation are being stored in the log file first inside this small block of data. So this can be you doing any kind of an operation. Sometimes it skips, okay, whenever I'm typing this with the mouse, so this skips some part. This is LDF, log data file. So we call it as the primary data file and the log data, LDF file, LDF, okay. So there are two, if somebody wants to create another file as well, so those are known as secondary data file. I will just make a, some space here. So we'll type it here. So here, if somebody wants to make, make, uh, why it is not erased. So somebody wants to create more files. So those are known as secondary data file. If for one database, if uh, you want to create one more file, this is known as a secondary, secondary data file. By default, there are two, but you can create uh, there is no such limit, uh, limitations for that. So you can create as many as you want. So this is N, D, F, secondary data file. Okay. So now I was saying that, so whenever a user want to add a record or insert, update, delete a record, everything is returned to the log file first, then will be pushed to the data file once the transaction is complete. So once this block of code is completed, then only this will be pushed to this block.
So if this was transaction one, so let's say you have initiated transaction two. Once the transaction two is completed, then the transaction two record whatever changes, update, modification, or deletion you will be done doing. So those will be pushed in the second file. NDF can be in multiple. Multiple. We can. I I I have seen like fifteen, sixteen as well. Sometimes there are only two. Sometimes there are only one. So so by by default, whenever you create a database, there are only two. But at the time of a creation, you can add, add multiple as well. So the default size of a, each file is eight MB by default. This is the lowest size, but maximum can be anything. Okay. So how big a database can be there in the SQL Server, right? So as I mentioned, each file is of a lowest, which is eight MB. Okay. So this is KB. Then after the KB we have MBs. Then after MB we have GBs. Then after the GBs we have terabytes. Then after the terabytes we have petabytes. Okay, one zero two four KB is one MB. One zero two four MB is one GB. One zero two four GB. Is one terabyte. One zero two four terabyte is how many petabytes? One petabyte. So after that, I don't know what what is there. It's a good topic to research on. So after the petabyte, if there is something, let me know. But so far, I believe that it is the only thing which we which is currently in the market. So how big a database can be there for the SQL Server? Mm -hmm. According to the Microsoft, one database size can be of 524 petabytes 524 petabytes this big a database can grow in sql server okay if you are having this big of a like sql server database that means you have to invest on your storage as well right so 524 petabytes so you have one database can grow by the day database there are tables the number of rows, no limitation, no limitation of rows. So until and unless you will hit the this capping five up to 524 petabyte, this is the end. But columns has a limitation in table. In SQL Server, a common column limitation is 31024. 31,024 columns you can create, like name column, age column, address column, phone number column, blah, 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 multiple columns. Okay, so this limit to achieve or to pass, surpass, I don't think so. Uh, logically, in words, it can be possible. So the highest database while I was working with Microsoft in May 2023, so I worked on a database for a financial client so that was only 74 petabytes and that too was storing storing the data for i believe that 24 or 30, 24 years so that was a data warehouse okay so i don't think so if we can go like 524s are so much big if you have that kind of a data then this means that you will create multiple multiple tables uh data databases for that. Let's say that every year you are generating this much of a data hypothetically, right? 2010, you generated 524 did uh, this much of data, 2011. So for every year, you will create a different, different database, right? If I would say in other terminology, how I am going to suggest if I am a solution architect, so I will break the data into the year wise, right? Okay. So... So, 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 we will continue in a while. So, now, before going on a break, we have discussed about the different types of databases. Anyone have any questions related to that? If you have, welcome to ask. If no, we can start. So, now, in the today's class, we will talk about the data types. Okay. Data types. Okay, before going or jumping to the data types, I will take a two minute of time. So I will show you how the license agreement work in SQL Server. Okay, how the license agreement work in SQL Server. 
what all different types of license we have. So this document is provided in the Google Drive link. So if you have the Google Drive link, if you go there, if you search for a document SQL Server 2019 editions, so you will find this edition document, which is a license agreement. So if you purchase a license from the Microsoft, how it's going to cost you. Okay, what are the costs related to that? So in the Microsoft, we have three basic type of a software license. One is known as the enterprise version or the enterprise license. So if you are having a product, okay, or if you want to buy a product, like let's say you are buying a Microsoft Office, you are buying any application worldwide. So let's say about that application, you will have that features. Right. So let's say that if I buy a product which is enterprise, which means that it will come with all the additions. So whatever is available, you see, whatever is available, everything will be come with that too. So these are the different, different things. Compute storage, intelligence over all your data, choice of language and platform, industry leading performance and availability, secure and reliable quick business insight. So with the help of a, this structure, with the help of a, this structure, you see that our Microsoft SQL Server comes with a variety of the options. And now if you're choosing the enterprise, this will definitely come with some cost. This is a high-end features and the high-end application with all the features. Okay, let's say that the enterprise will cost you around $1,000. Okay, let's say that enterprise will cost you around $1,000. That I'm just making this up. It cannot be the same thing like enterprise will cost you $1,000. Maybe less than that, maybe more than that, but like that it will cost you. Then, so if you are running in high priority application which require all the features, then you should go with the enterprise version. Now, if your application is not that, mu that much of extensive and does not require all the features, you should go with the standard application. So in the standard application, there are some features which are given, but these features over here are missing, right? So these features are missing, okay? So in here, the size of a database is 524 petabytes. The memory which you can have up to 128 GB in the standard, but in over here it can be maximum as per the system defined. In the standard, there are some limitations. So let's say that if standard costs you around $1,000, so but, uh, sorry, enterprise costs you around $1,000, maybe the standard will come with the lower cost, let's say $600. So because of the less features. Now, so mostly standard editions are being used by the client wherein they are not using the extensive performance or pro, uh, I would say high availability features. So for those applications, so standard will come into the place. Now, let's say for the testing and the development environments, we can go with the express or web edition. This too has a certain less cost over the standard and enterprise. You see, very less cost. The, these one in the yellows are not being very much used. Okay. So our here, okay. Our here, you see, these are the different, different types of what these are the different, different types of versions. Okay. So standard express or web or the enterprise version. So these are very less type of a data, which we have. Okay, so now the one which we are using are known as a developer edition. So if you are going to use a product, but before purchasing a product, you want to see a demo. Like let's say if you are going to purchase a phone or a car or anything, any product. So you must see how the product and the performance capabilities. So those things. So Microsoft says that if you want to uh, like have the SQL server to be used in your coming future, and you want to see if this is compatible with your application, so you should download the developer edition. So the developer edition have same features like enterprise edition, okay? So the developer editions have the same feature like the enterprise edition, but developer editions are not very much stable. Those are not very much stable. Remember that developer edition are not very much 
stable so in case in future if you are storing your production data on to a developer edition and you run into a bug or run into an issue and you go to the microsoft stating that okay i was using your application provide me the support so they will say sorry we cannot provide you the support as you have breached the security this edition is used for testing purpose now Every year, Microsoft has been introducing the different, different features. So what difference it make from one feature to the next? Just a quick info, guys. IntelliPath offers data analytics course in collaboration with IIT and PowerTech. Through this course, you will master Power BI, data modeling, data mining, and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry expert. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics. Just a quick quiz question, guys. In programming, what is the purpose of Boolean data type? Option A, to store true or false data values, option B to store whole numbers, option C to store decimal numbers and option D to store text strings. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's continue with the session. The feature. If they will be asking you what is the feature difference, so you can say in every feature there are the certain tools and the certain uh, things which are included, let's say 2016. 2016 has the real-time operational analysis, polybase, R language support, machine learning, dynamic data masking, mobile business intelligence is there. In 2017, we have Linux support, we have Docker support, we have Python language support, we have support for the graph data, we can use the adaptive query processing, Power BI reporting both on premise and in cloud, access to Power BI reporting server. These are the capabilities or the features of 2017. In 2019, this is concluded with the Hadoop clusters, virtualization, machine learning, Kubernetes, free supported Java, native UTF support, in-memory database, accelerated database recovery, DR to Azure support, notebook support. If we talk about the, this main thing over here, Right, you see how much things are being included in here. Notebook support included T-SQL, Python, R, Scala, Azure Data Studio. So these are the varieties of the things which is included in the 2019 itself. Okay, if you want to go in depth of these things, so you should go through this document. Also, I have provided you the license agreement for the 2022. This also is very big, right? So this has some Azure hybrid benefit. So this sheet is being there in the three pages you can talk see and learn all things about those okay so you can take a look at this and let me know if you have any questions this is for your personal reading okay now coming back to that point so we were discussing about the data types okay so anyone aware of the data types okay so let me connect to the sql server so the shortcut to connect to the SQL server is like type the SSMS in the in the search bar in the windows and you will see that there is a SQL server management studio. Right. So once you see that SQL server management studio, so you can see the data there. Okay. Very good. Yeah, Vishal. Okay. So now let me connect to the SQL server and we will start with the data types. So our second class of the day. Before we start, anyone have any questions? So now, so the smallest one which we have is the tiny integer. It's not written over here. So the smallest one which we have in the SQL server is known as the what? Tiny integer. Remember that. What is known as? Tiny integer. So tiny integer has a limitation or the capacity of storing a number up to let me type it here. And just give me one minute. Okay. So tiny integer. If I talk about the tiny integer, so tiny integer is very small in the size. So it can store the data from 0 to 255. Okay. Anyone know about this? No one? Nobody wants to speak today. So, yes, sir. I saw it. Okay. You saw it. Where you saw it? Over the Google? No, in the self-learning videos. 
okay so this can store the data so this is a range so range means it can store a data up to 0 to 255 which means how much byte it will take to store this information so whenever you are storing something it will take a bytes of information this will it going to take the one byte of inform one byte of space to store this information then we have the small integer so when we talk about the small integer this is another data type in the sql server okay i will just make some space over here because in the coming things so there are more characters so this can store from the negative numbers to the positive numbers so when we say negative numbers to the positive number this much of a data it can store okay the the size which is it is going to store a single character or the this one this is two byte of space how much byte the two byte of space this is known as so the number capacity which it can store in the negative 32767 to the positive 32 327 minus 32768 to the positive 32767 then we have what then we have the third type of a data in the numbers which we call it as a integer when we talk about the integer integer can store this big number but okay so this big number the integer can also store in sql server when we talk about the this big number so which means if you have a numbering system or ids or some kind of a, a numbers so which can be within this range so those can be stored in the, the integer data type and the amount of space it can take to store this information it is 4 bytes 4 bytes per per row per single thing okay per single character if i say name of a person name is alpha if i say age of a person 21 and if, if the data type of that alpha is i would say integer then it will take four byte of space to store that information tiny small int integer and the, then we have the big integer when we say about the big integer now sometime a number can exceed this right right it it is possible the number can exceed this range so for that we can store that in the big integer in sql server when we talk about the big integer in sql server it can take up to space which is 8 bytes how much bytes the 8 bytes of information it's going to take for that storing this information so now these are the numbers so store the numbers in the sql server okay so those can be number can be the positive as well as the negative in the sql server now we will do a small example for that theek hai clear anyone having any questions so if you want to store a number which is in the decimal where every point matters let's say i am going to store a salary of a person salary is for 67898 paisa or 67 cents right 9867 so this four numbers after this decimal point right after this procedure it is very important like every penny matters right in terms of a financial we say every penny matter right if we talk about this floating number this cannot be stored under this we cannot store the data under the tiny small integer or the big integer for that what we need to change we need to change the data type which we call it as a what what is this called as this is known as anyone appropriate numeric numbers ha huh. mm. so sagar joshi no so we are talking about the appropriate numeric number where every everything matters in the sql server okay so we we ha uh, okay if you are still on this sagar so stating that double a uh, double double is like the big integer right so maybe in other programming language we call it as a double but over here we call it was big integer you got it clear okay so the purpose of storing the data in the decimal is that the procedure so in the previous procedure the up to 15 digits we can go but what about we have to grow more than that data okay so if you have to grow more than this data so then you will move to the decimal point okay so these are the byte of information and this is the procedure the numbers it can grow inside the decimal it can grow up to the 1 to 9 for the, these are the byte of information towards the end so these are what so this is 5 bytes 9 bytes 13 bytes 17 bytes so this is the what these are the precision after the point how many digits you can grow 
so what is this precision and what is this k right so most of you may have this question so when we talk about the decimal so decimal is a data type which can store the data which is numeric or the floating point okay so now one second okay so now when we talk about the precision precision means that if i have a big number 7 8 like this so precision means how many did how many numbers are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then we have 10 numbers then we have 11 numbers so if we see so this is my 10th number and this is my 11 number. so total numbers we have 11 so we will say decimal so total numbers we have 11 and after the point how many values we have 1 2 2 3 4 5 6 and 5 so 5 so we have to mention that so precision so precision means that the total numbers of digit so both including the left side and the right side so total numbers of digits are now i will put it in the here as well what is precision and what is k okay so that in future if you are going through the notes that would help you as well okay so 11 is precision and 5 is k is it good understandable yes now we'll do a small example for this one but before that if you have a question for that just you are good to ask so anyone now if you have a question you are very welcome to ask the question okay so i will take another minute so now we have done the numbers in sql server maybe there are more data types related to the numbers but we will not go there as this is the second day so we'll just go through that slowly and slowly in the if i talk about the these data type in the sql server we'll do an example using the three things which is known as declare set and print okay so we'll do the three three scenarios which is declare the second one is set the third one is print or select so the one declare what is the meaning of a declare in english in simple english what does a declare mean okay it's not that sql server will understand everything automatically so everything you have to say to the sql server if you want to do a small operation or a big operation so you have to mention the same thing to the sql okay so the for the same purpose if i would say declare declare statement is used to declare a variable i would say i will declare a variable which is at the rate name why i am using at the rate i will come to that now i have declared a name so name of a person is what name of the person name is of first i would say chalo will do with the age age is of a integer data type and it will store a value 21 so now when i print this age so what should print it should print 21 if i execute if i run this statement over here it should print 21 in here right so far so good so we declared something and we printed something right clear so declare mean that we have asked the sql server to understand this age will be of a integer data type and this will hold the values temporary this will be very much temporary or okay temporary variables variables so this must be, this must be very much temporary so that it can hold the values declare age integer equal to 21 so print age equal to the whatever the age is okay whatever our value is now some of the time how sql server so let's say that you are not defining your value over here if you want to separately define a value you use the use of a set statement so there is a choice to you whether you while declaring you will assign a value or after declaring you will use a set so set statement is used to assign a value okay declare is used to do what is used to declare a variable 
okay print is used to do what is used to display a message now two things are there whenever i type print and the second one is select so both are used to display a message is used to display a message but whenever we are displaying a message you see so this message comes under the text format so this is known as text format so the result is shown in the text format result is shown in is equal to text format but if i instead of the print i would say select the result will be shown in the grid format this is known as grid format tables in the same structure like the table result equal to grid format always remember that it's in the text format the other one is in the grid format clear i have a data type tiny what is the capacity of a tiny it up to 0 to 255 either it can be any value between the 0 to 255 if i now try to print this id so it will print me 255 now if i exceed a one value 256 so this will give me an overflow which means that the tiny integer cannot hold a value or store a value which is greater than 255 right right so now i want to see the three more things for this if i am storing these three characters i want to see the length of the at the rate ids i want to say that data length of the at the rate ids now length and the data length so we know that the 255 is of three characters one character one two and three so three yeah. different different numbers are there two five five three one two three and it's taking what byte of information one byte on the top it's saying that no column name i will put it as a name as ids as column as name or something something i will give it a name as names as length so because why this is what is this known as we will talk in the later part as data type as so now whenever i print this now will look fancy it looks it give me an information over the top okay so length byte of information and the name okay so i will run this and i will show you the tiny integer it's taking three bytes three space and one byte so same thing if i want to store a number in the negative and the in the positive i will store it where in the small integer i will take a second example now 32767 minus 3 Three two seven six seven. You see, if I will execute this information, this must take to store this information. This is taking two bytes, and the values which it is having, it is having six. It's including the minus sign as well. Always remember that it mm -hmm. will include what sign, the minus sign. Okay. So now, when we talk about this bytes of information which we have in here, now it can go to the positive number as well. Three two seven six six. Okay, so now if I execute this statement, so this is taking only five bytes. Why? Because there is no uh, value for to be used for the positive sign. So five in ten length, two bytes of information it's going to take like that. If I increase a slight a number over here, so this will generate an arithmetic overflow, which means it has its capacity. Okay, it has its capacity. I want to print a number which is greater than that then should be covered under the integer data type so in the integer data type in the sql server as we have discussed this a lot right so this should print a number which is greater than this mm -hmm. this should be good so now in the integer i want to store this the data type i changed so this can be the negative number as well as the positive number the same thing so if i do it in the negative as well so it can also print the same number so you see i have exceeded the limit over here so this is the reason it has surpassed this number so now arithmetic overflow so there is some limit so on the top i have mentioned the limit you can follow the same approach come on Kya ho gaya? okay so the limit is written on the top you see on the top there is a limit over here 
minus 2 1 this to the positive this and now if the number is greater than this so we can store in which the big integer big the amount of storage which it's taking it's the 4 byte now if i have to exceed this storage so i can push it to the which data type the big integer so when we talk about the big integer in the sql server so big integer will okay so big integer now whenever i am calling this executing this so this is taking how much of information eight bytes of information which means double the size of an integer if i exceed this information now where i am going to store this number into decimals decimal can hold up to 38 precisions i will show you then that in a moment so in here in the big integer you can store the negative number as well as the positive number in sql server i will print this negative number you see it's taking 20 8 bytes of information 19 and 8 bytes of information information okay both are negative one eight positive one positive and the other one negative 19 8 bytes of information clear now we'll talk about the float float and decimal so when we talk about the float and decimal so before that is it clear for everyone the purpose is to make this a clear understanding so when we talk about the float and decimal in sql server so float also has some capacity so let's say that i have a number which i want to store in the integer okay first i will show our big integer let's say there is a number which the precision point now now this number will be gone okay this number will be gone so how we can retrieve a number if this is gone so i can store this number in the float so because the every decimal point matters in here every precision matters right so which means now using the float okay using the float there is some limit which i see over here using the float the limit is that it can go up to this number which is highlighted so 57 is missing from here right so float also has some capacity okay so you can store a big number but with some capacity as well over here you see i can store the number so float has some precision and the scale if i go up okay mm -hmm. it is taking up to eight bytes right so this is the precision and the scale for the float and decimal i will just bring those two in the i will copy those information in the lower part so that we can see so now the float has some precision if i try to print this statement so this is saying that it is out of range but if i just try to eliminate some records still it is stating that still it's able to print but this information is not valid we can store it we can store it but this information is not valid you understand yeah. my point but to store the same information what data type i will use now i will use decimal you see how easy it is to use decimal decimal may we will say decimal let's say i will show you first the smaller number so that you will understand some numbers okay if i will count this number so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten thirteen sixteen and nineteen i would say the precision is nineteen so this is the length so after the point how many values are there one two three four five six seven eight nine so nine values are there nine here na four three seven two nine yeah. so if i say about the decimal you see so it can print me the whole number now i will lower the value of this nine to eight so it is printing four nine five seven let's see that what number it will print so you see that it is doing a round off after the four nine instead of five seven it is giving us six y because the number which is it is doing a round off if you if the number is greater than five it will do the round off now mm. if i do the five numbers so it will give only up to this length one two three four and five which means it will give up to seven you see how it will give us a number up to seven so you understand how this will help us so yeah. now if i have to store a big number okay so now i have to store a big number in this decimal so let's say that 
this big number i don't want to count it i would say up to the 38 i would go up to 40 40 comma 3 6 3 9 and 10 so i will go 15 let's say that i'm just giving a hypothetical number it is exceeding so which means we can go up to 38 38 numbers Mm -hmm. mm, we we need to do some calculations here. We need to say ten. It's more than that. Okay. So you see, now this is the highest level of information. Thirty-eight, seventeen bytes of information. Now number is exactly the same, right? And now if you have a number bigger than this, in a moment I will show you where we can store the number. So so yes. far you have a clear understanding. And now let's say that. most of the time what happens is you want to store a big number okay in the integer this number cannot be stored in the big integer we cannot store this number if i would want to store a number which is like this without any decimal we can store the same number in the decimal as well mm -hmm. so then this should be 3 36 some big number 5 0 there is some limit okay 26 we can go 1 2 3 26 and 3 29 29 and we can go 31 32 up to 32 35 or 36 three numbers i will add 1 2 3 38 and then if i do the nine here so this will be our flow yeah ah, so up to the 38 numbers it can print so how i can finding this 38 by the length okay mm. up to 38 number you can store in the decimal okay mm. so this is very easy very understandable the logic how you can store the numbers ids or any big transaction you want to store so you can store this inside where inside the decimal you see it does not have the point 0 and it will avoid that situation where you will say that sir it has a point 0 in it so today we have understood about the data types now i want you to do the practice for those and in the tomorrow class we will cover the rest of the data types followed by the ddl dml commands okay so we have a class tomorrow right today is thursday so tomorrow is friday yeah so we'll have a class tomorrow and we'll cover those things meanwhile if you have a question shoot it ask me redefine okay so let's say about the facebook if you see the chat messages so everything is there by default when you have the facebook or the uh, messengers right so everything is there predefined which means that while you install a product there are some predefined information so the limit is the 8000 so you can define a length by default if i will not define any length for this length is what after the character in the bracket i put a value this is known as a length so this 10 means so it can store 10 like a b c d e f g h i j k l m so like up to 10 characters it can store if i will not define any length for a character by default the character will take only one space one character so out of the alpha it is only printing the first alpha because i will put here d so that i will be able to differentiate which a is it printing the first one okay so from the left hand side whatever the character is written so it is reading that characters in here okay this is one thing so character has a fixed uh length of a data type okay and also remember that it can store up to 8000 characters in the character this is the second thing okay so also whenever the character stores the data it takes one byte per character to store the data per character one byte per character to store the data how many bytes the one byte per character to store the information what happens if we have the so if i have written like alpha and we have given the alpha is of a length five digits five characters so now we can give a l p h a character character of four digits so only store the four values so it will print up to 1 2 3 and 4 up to this value h 
why it is printing only a. So every character here represent a one single character. As I have written one byte per one character. Okay, which means if you are not defining anything, it will take only one. It will be like this only by default. If you are saying only character, it will be one. Okay, so like that. So now, so this alpha has a length of five characters. Excluding the, excluding the single inverted com. Out of this five characters, how many characters we are printing? Four. So which means ALPH like this. So we can go up to how many characters in C calls are or 8,000 characters. Now, if we talk about the logical data representation of this character, so whenever we store the data inside the character, so it, it follows an approach, we call it as a static memory allocation. So which means that, so let's say that we have defined a string of a data in which we are storing the name of a person. Okay, let's say character of 10. So out of 10 characters, how many characters have been occupied over here? If I would say, what is the value and what is the length of my character? So out of 10, how many values are occupied? Five. Can unmute and ask. We'll come to that yellow one once more in a moment. Concentrate on, on the back, back then, then, then we'll then come, we'll to, come that. to that. Echo. Echo. Okay. Now, when we talk about the varchar in the SQL server, okay, varchar means that variable size or the string data. Variable size or the string data. Okay, so varchar in SQL server is a character string data type that stored the variable length. Always remember that this will be now the variable length. We call this as a variable length. And this will store the same thing up to 8,000 characters in, in a single varchar file. Okay. So now also it will state, store the one byte per character. And over here we have here the dynamic memory allocation. So that makes it different from one another. So like the character, it uses as much space as necessary. Let's say that the total space which was there is written as 10, but the out of 10, only the five characters were used, which means 10 out of five, five was a wastage for a single row. Let's say that there are thousands of rows. Now for thousands of rows, if we are not utilizing all of the space, then it will be a wastage of the memory, okay? So which means that in the where care, we can save those storage, okay? Now I will take an example again, the only difference they both have. So if we see this data in the character, if we have a name, so these are all what, these are the name of a different, different person, Alpha, John, Tim, Yo, M. So these are the different, different person names stored inside the SQL server. Now, let's say that we have a name variable over here in which the name has a data type as a character of five. Character of five means the data that can be stored inside this is what space of five length. If you are using five length or not, still the SQL server will reserve this space. This allocation of memory is known as static. So SQL server will not release the empty spaces, which means if my no name itself is John. Out of five, only four characters are being used. One is free. So which means that it will still consume or still reserve this space for this particular name. But the same thing, if we have defined a column as a name and the column has a data type as a where cat, so that the free space can be released back into the memory so that those spaces can be reused. Okay, so that those spaces can be reused. Okay, over here, we see that there are some spaces which cannot can be reused in varchar but cannot be in the character. Okay, now 
to demonstrate the same example, I will just show you the same same thing over here. If I want to store the same data in the varchar, varchar of ten. So what is the what is the length of the data which we are giving? Ten bytes. Out of ten, only five characters I am using. So if I execute the statement, you see the length of the column was ten character, but ten out of five is being used, which means five is being released back into the memory. So most of the time, as I was discussing about the SQL Server a day or day two ago, so we discussed about the different different type of the like SQL Server being stored or uh, used in the English. We we discussed about the SQL can be used for the Chinese language, for the Russian language, for the any other language as well. So how the data can be stored inside the SQL Server? For that data, we represent that data with the Unicode character. Okay, Unicode character data. Remember that. So when we talk about the Unicode character data, so Unicode is a character encoded with the standard. Okay, that can represent the data. Let's say if we talk about the Hindi language, Punjabi language, Russian language, Japanese language, Urdu language, Arabic language. So those cannot be stored in the normal data types in SQL Server. For those, we need to understand about the data type, which called, which we call it as a n character and n varchar. Okay, in the character string as well, we have the n character and we have n varchar. Right. So now those are different from one another. Okay. Okay. So those are different from one another. So same property will be followed like the character and the varchar. So properties are same, but there is one problem in here. Okay, in the character and in the n character and in the n varchar. When, when we, we talk, talk about the fixed data length, yes, absolutely. It is going to store the data having the fixed data length, which is up to the 8,000 character. But the problem comes whenever we store the data, okay? So over here, it takes two bytes per character to store the information. As this is the Unicode data, it requires two bytes to store this information. How many bytes? The two bytes to store this information. If I demonstrate an example for you, if I put over here N character, okay, N character of 10. So as the name of a person is what? Alpha, five digits, but over here, 10. 10 cross 2 is how many characters? So what will be the multiplication for that? 10 cross 2. It is equal to 20. N stands for Unicode over here. Okay. So we are discussing only for the N. N is equal to the Unicode character data. So as I will say, as I was discussing about this N character, which means that N represent what? Unicode data. Right. So Unicode is a character encoding standard that can represent character from the all languages around the world. As we discussed, it can be Japanese, it can be Chinese, it can be Mandarin, it can be anything in from the world. Okay, so most of the companies or the most of the companies which are located in China or in the other parts of the world, they use their like their own language to store this information. For those, this, this is not a general in English, so it will take one byte. For those, it requires an one extra byte to store that information. That is the reason we say two bytes per character. That is a defined length. Now you see, so 10 cross 2 is 20. Why we are stating 10 cross 2? Because over here for character, we see that it is a fixed length data, which means static memory allocation. You remember a moment ago, I show you that the example for the static memory allocation. So it is the same thing. Okay. Now, when we talk about the dynamic memory allocation, okay, in the SQL Server, it should be the same. Like, cannot be static. So we will talk about the n varchar now. n varchar represents the dynamic memory allocation, and it has one more thing: two byte per character. But the variable, the data will be defined up to the variable length which means that n varchar will support. So if we say n varchar of 10, so if my data is five characters, five cross two is 10. So it will take the 10 space. I would say here 15, you see. 
now if i say execute this data so you see and where cat 10 so it is taking how much byte of information 10 so 5 is my data 5 cross 2 if i add a one more value over here so this is now six values six twos are 12 so the number of the variable length multiplied by the two characters two byte per correct in short okay very simple to understand right anyone having any doubt any questions Um, so for English, it will take one byte. Other than English, for other languages, it will take uh -huh. if you if you if you if you have the column data type as a n n Unicode or the n character or the n varchar, then it will still take two byte per character. Even for English also. Yes, you because you are store. So see, SQL Server will not determine what data you are going to store. So if you define. Right. If you define the column as a data type as a length and and character or then where it will by default say that now for this particular column, it will store two byte per character. Over here, it was a name. Name I have written in the simple English. Right. Over here, you see still it is doing what? It is taking two byte per character. Six cross two, 12 per byte per character. If we have five uh, characters, so one byte per character. Now for the N, N stand for Unicode. As I was say, stating that it can be the simple English, it can be the any other language apart from the English, right? If you want to store the Unicode data, okay? So the Unicode data means that the information, right? So other than the English, other than the normal normal language, right? So it can be any, any standard language can be there. So where we want to store that. Now for such kind of a data, we use the n character and n var care. By default, the n character and the n var care will take two byte per character. For a single character, if alpha is of five characters. So if I would say two byte per character, what would be the size? Five ten. into two, ten, ten. Now the character followed a strategy or the approach, which is known as a fixed length data. When we talk about the fixed length data, so which means that it will not see how many values are here in character. It will see how many fixed length data is there. What is the data length? 10. 10. So it will multiply 10 cross 2. Why 2? Because it is 2 byte per character. So 10 cross 2 is 20. Right. Okay. So now for the var care, it follows the variable length, which means the, the value itself, alpha, alpha, alpha one is of six length, six cross two is 12. So out of 15, we are using how much space? So like you and me can understand. So let's see if we will discuss about this Unicode. So computers, how we will make the computer understand that, okay, this is a Unicode information. Unicode can be, it's like a universal language for the computers. Okay, so in short, if I would say, uh, like this can be the way for computers to understand and display the characters from the different languages. Either it can be Chinese, Russian, Arabic, like that. Okay, so like, like my computers are not limited to one country or one particular language. Okay, so it can be it can be uh, like a Chinese person can be using and an Russian can be using and an Indian can be using the same thing. Uh, a, a foreign national person can be using the same computer with a different, different language to operate that. OK, so if you have ever seen if you are purchasing something from the outside India. So you see there is an by the keyboard ABCD under that there is a different language as written. So which means that that product was made to support the two languages, right? Now, if you are using it, you will use it with a simple English, right? You got my point? So what I'm trying to explain over here, what does the Unicode mean? It's clear. We will talk about the blob character. So what is the blob? So blob simply means that binary large object, okay? binary large object so when we talk about the binary large object so what is the size of a binary large object so we have the varchar max so the whenever we don't know the size of a particular column in sql so let's say that i don't want to count how many values are there in my column so i just wanted to see how much 
information a user is sending. So let's say that. So this is my data. And I am using instead of the any specific number, I am applying over here max. Max means the give me the highest value. So whatever this will can store in SQL server. Okay. So as of now, this is taking only the length. So this can take up to the two gigabytes, two GB space. Okay. So two GB space in the SQL server. Where care max. So what is the what is the like the storage it can take up to it can take up to two gigabytes of space. Okay, and the information that it will store it is something very big, two raised to power thirty one. So anyone know what is two raised to power thirty one? How much number? Let me convert that in the Google. It is yeah. So it will be two raised to power thirty one. So which means so where care max. Will take up to two raised to power thirty one. This means how many characters can be stored in that? Okay, so remember that this is the highest number of information which you can store in any database. This is the highest level of a information. Apart from the where where care max, we have a another data type in SQL Server that is known as where binary max. Where binary max data type in SQL Server are used to store the big data. The same thing, two raised to power thirty one, which is this number, and this can store up to a file which is of space two gigabytes, approx to two gigabytes space of information it will take. Okay, so always remember that whenever you have to store a big data, a big objects into the SQL Server, there are two things. Where binary max and the where care max. Where binary max. I cannot take an example which can consume the two gigabyte of space, but definitely, if you want to store it, you can find it out over the internet as well. Okay. So something somebody mentioned in the chat. So what is the where care max? Okay. So this is the information for the where care max and the where binary max. Is it clear? Good. So now. We'll talk about the SQL commands. So when we talk about the standard SQL commands, this help us to interact with the relational database, right? So like creating the tables, selecting, insert, update, delete, drop. So those command in the SQL server, right? How we can perform those command in the SQL server? So today we are going to see the two commands, which is the DDL language, and the other one is DML language. So we will go in depth of the DDL and the DML. So in a moment. So when we talk about the DDL language, right? So I will just zoom this out. Okay. So the DDL stand for data definition language. When we talk about this language in the SQL server, it simply indicates that. Let me go to the 70%. Okay. So DDL statement are used to build and modify the structure of our tables. So whenever you create a table, okay, you you remember tables are the combinations of rows and column. So whenever you create a table, so those help us to create a DDL command. So with the help of a DDL command, we can create the structure, structure of the tables or modify the structure of the tables. Okay, right. So now remember that always. So whenever we talk about the DDL, it will do what? Build and modify the structure of our tables. Other than the in my database, when we execute a DDL command, the effects are very much immediate. So which means that once we click on the execute button, so the changes are permanent. We cannot reverse those changes. If we add a record or if we delete a record, we, we cannot, cannot undo or we cannot recall something which is lost. So whenever you insert the records or update or modify or delete the records, so be very much careful with that. Okay, because changes are permanent. Now, so this is my table, so which I'm going to create in SQL Server. So this structure, I would help or this structure, which include name of a person, ID of a person, and address of a person. This I can create with the help of which command? The DDL create command. So DDL 
create command will help us to perform the to perform what to create a structure of our tables. OK, now in the existing structure, if I want to add a new column. So what can be a new column? Let's say that I forget to add the age. Mute yourself. I will allow you some time with the questions as well. Let me explain this. So with the DDL create command, I created a structure. Now I want to modify the existing structure to add a column or to remove a column. Let's say that each column I want to add. So this can be done with the help of an alter statement to an existing table, which was an employee, which has three columns. Now I have added a column with the help of an alter statement. So alter can perform two things. It can add something or it can remove a column, add a column, remove a column. So now you see, as of now, we are not talking about the data. It is all about the structural changes or the structure things which we are doing. So this was create, this was alter. Now there is another command, which is a drop. So drop means to permanently remove this structure. It would be like this. Whenever you drop this table employee, so everything will be gone. Like this. So whatever things were there, everything was will, will be gone. Now. The two questions over here, whenever we delete something or whenever we drop something, can it be recalled or can I undo my operation? As I mentioned it uh, previously, those changes are permanent. So whenever you insert, whenever you update, whenever you create, whenever you drop, so those changes are very much permanent and cannot be recalled. So now we will, I will help you understand about a use statement. The purpose of a use statement in SQL Server is to change the connection from one database to another database. Let's say that you as a user are working on the three different projects. So this is my project one, project two, project three. Now one is one project. So you got in three requests as a user. You can either perform the changes on one project or other project or the third project. At the same time, you cannot perform at three changes on a same project. So we need to always be cautious about on which project we are working, which means that these projects can be a representation of the database. So while you are handling the multiple clients, so there will be the multiple databases for those clients. Those can be set as a three different projects. Now, as a user, if you are set to be add a file in this project, remove a file from this project or update a record on this project. So three different operation which need to be performed on three different databases. So those can be done, right? So use command help us to change the connection from one database to another database. Now in here, when we need to jump from one database to another database, like from P1 to P2 or P2 to P3. So we use it with the help of a use command. So use is a functionality over here. So which will help me to do what? Change the connection from one database to another database. Clear? Anyone having any questions? Questions, please. No questions. So, so far what we have seen about the four DDL commands. One was create, alter, drop and use. We'll talk about the truncate in a moment because I need to explain this with the delete statement. Now, DDL always remember that I will again repeat myself over here. So these are used to build and modify the structure of our tables. OK, tables always remember to do what it is used for used to build and modify the structure of our tables. Nothing else. OK, when we execute a DDL command, the effects are very much immediate. Now, now we will talk about the DML statement. When we talk about the DML statement, those are used to work with the data in the table. 
used to do which operation? So DML statement are used to work with the data in the table, which means that when we are connected to the multiple databases, with the help of these command, we can add the data. Data. Now we are not talk talking about the structure. We are here talking about the data in tables. So as a user, so we can do the write operation, which means adding a record. We can do the read operation, which means uh, I would say reading a text from a tables, or we can simply say delete a record, which means remove a data from a table. Now, whenever we perform a DML operation, it will not affect the structure. So let's say, so this is my table over here, which we created with the help of a DML command. In this, if I want to add a name of a person, A, B, C, D. So this is an insert command. With the help of an insert command, I can add multiple records in the table. These are my multiple records in the table. Now, so this is a simple insert statement. So insert statement help me to add one record or multiple records into the table data. Then the second thing is, update record so update simply means that if i want to change the value from 1 to 11 from 3 to 31 so c to cat or 23 to 13 so over here with the help of this what i am trying to do modifying data so update help me to do what modify data now what is the difference between update statement and the alter statement can anybody tell me over here very good so now we will talk about the delete. So what does the delete mean? Delete simply means that remove a record from the table. When we want to delete a data, so we want to delete an ID number two, which means that ID number two gets deleted. So whenever a record is deleted, it is deleted horizontally like this. All the values which are interlinked with one another will be removed. It is not that two only will be deleted. A record can be modified, but cannot be deleted, right? I cannot delete this information. Whenever a row is deleted, the whole information is deleted like this. So delete statement help me to delete one row or multiple rows. So one row or multiple rows in SQL Server. So with the help of a delete, so it can delete the one row or multiple rows from a table. Now, so there is one more command which I mentioned to show you with the D DML commands, which is a truncate statement. So truncate will remove everything from the table. It will remove every record from the table. It will remove all records from the table. There is no choice to remove single record or the other records. So whenever we run the truncate statement, it will remove all records. No nothing like that few records or one record two records so truncate will remove all the records from the table right so truncate and delete it will just remove this data no not remove the structure so whenever we talk about the truncate so structure name id address will be present but not this data so now we will talk about the some of the databases in the sql server whenever you install a product on your machine so this product comes with the some of the default things so let's say that the what are the default things? The default databases. Okay. In the previous class, we have discussed about those things. So, but today as well, I will repeat myself. No worries with that. Okay. So when we talk about a product, so product comes with a by default some of the things. So over here we have the database. So under the database, we have two types of a database. One is known as a system database, and the other one is known as user-defined databases user defined database when we talk about the system databases there are five different type of system databases in sql server four we can see on the screen towards the left hand side over here where i am hovering my mouse like this this information and the one is the read only copy the first database which we have and is the most critical one is known as the master database what does this system database holds what information will it hold for the users so if i talk about this database it will record all the system level information what is the system level information like how many databases are created 
how many tables are created, how many users are there currently working in my machine, what those users are doing. So all the system level information. What is the conception of a CPU? Once it's the conception of a memory, how much free space is available on the drives so that we can store the data. So such information. So master database records all the system level information for the instance of SQL server. So when we talk about the master database, it stores all the system level information for the instance of SQL server. Now, the second database which we have in the SQL server is known as a model database. What is the use of a model database? So this is used as a template. When we talk about a template, it's like a mold. So whenever we say create database, database name, it's a three line, three words, create database, database name. So a database will be created. So from where it will pick up the settings, from where it will pick up the size, from where it will pick up the location or the path on which this database need to be created. From where it will pick up all those information. So that is inside the model database. So model database is used as a template for all the databases which we need to create on the instance of SQL Server. Okay, let's say that the if a person who is, um, uh, who is making the bricks, so he uses the same mold to design or shape the bricks, right? So same thing goes with the model database. This model database acts as a template for the newly created databases on the instance of SQL Server. Now, in which I explained you the use of an agent service. So, so first we'll talk about the MSDB database. MSDB database is a system database which uses a SQL Server agent service for scheduling alerts and jobs in SQL Server, to schedule the tasks, to schedule the queries, to schedule the reports. Scheduling means the reports will run at a specific time and execute a certain task for you or on your behalf. So same thing, MSDB is a, uses the SQL Server agent for scheduling alerts and jobs, right? It runs by its own, very good. Okay, it runs of its own. So now we have the fourth system database, which we know as the TempDB database. When we talk about the TempDB database, so this is the workspace for holding the temporary objects or intermediate result. When we say temporary objects, so whatever you store inside the TempDB, it is not permanent. It will erase once you restart your SQL Server services. Every time you restart your SQL Server services, if you have data inside the TempDB, that will be automatically dropped. So never store your data on the system databases. It is an advisory which Microsoft says that never stores your data on the system database. You never need to store the data. Right, like the calculator values or the, the values which are stored in the memory. Okay, so whenever it restarts, so everything will be reset it. Very good. So then the last type of database which we have. I'll... Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers data analytics course in collaboration with IIT and Pavatak. Through this course, you will master Power BI, data modeling, data mining and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry expert. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics. Just a quick quiz question guys. Which SQL command is used to retrieve data from a database? Option A, select. Option B, insert, option C, update, and option D, delete. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's continue with our session. Logical one, a read-only database is known as a resource database. So when we install the SQL Server at that time, what is my license information or what how many users I create? 
which version of sql server i have installed so what is the update or what is the current security patch which i have applied on my sql server all those information which are related to the objects are stored inside this resource database so in short if i would say this is a read only database that contains all the system objects that are included with the sql server okay these resources are nothing that are the read only database that contains the system objects that are included with the sql server is it clear questions anyone having any questions for those so in a moment or two i will show you where those databases reside very good so those were the like the theoretical ones to give you the definition and everything msdb it is a sql server agent so let's say that vishnu as a user okay you cannot work 24 cross 7 as a smart user you don't want to run a task again and again again and again into a machine for that you will use a reminders okay or you will reuse schedulers that will run the task on your behalf so that is the job of a msdb msdb uses a sql server agent for running the jobs for scheduling or for creating the jobs okay so this will run on your behalf at a certain given time at a certain time this will run on your behalf okay questions Okay, so now we'll talk about the DDL command. So in the DDL command, the first command is the create. So with the help of a create command, I can create a database. So create database, database name. So this is the syntax for creating a database. So database name can be the user defined name. So it can be the name which you provide to the SQL server. Okay, a name of a database cannot start with a number. It can always start with the alphabet, like demo. So SQL Server is not a case sensitive. Either you type in uppercase or a lowercase, so it can work. So I see I created database, executed the command, and you see command completed successfully. Over here, I will refresh the database so that I can see the demo database. Okay, I can create one more database which is known as SQL batch. So I will type this in uppercase so that you will see there is no difference. So this database I have created with the help of a uppercase. So command completed successfully. Refresh and you see database is created. I will create one more database which is company, which will be the mixture of uppercase and lowercase. Okay, you see, so this will also work. Now, as I mentioned, whenever I create a database, it should not start with the numeric data like one one. Okay, the SQL server will generate an error message stating that a database cannot start with the number number data numeric data. Okay, so this is how you create a database in the SQL server. Now, I have created the three different databases using the command line. Now, using the graphical user interface, how I can create a database. I right click the database, click, click on new database. A dialog box will open over here. You just need to provide the name of a database. Let's say SQL GUI DB, any name you can provide. It's not something specific. So over here you see, I have the logical name. This is my path and I can copy this path. I will copy this path and I will paste this path over here in my file explorer. Over here in the file explorer, I pasted this path and click on the enter so that it can open the file. So you see, so far I have created the three database. So I created the demo database, I created the company database, and the third one, 
the SQL batch database. If I modify with the date modified, so now you see these databases created over here. Every time you create a database, by default, there are two files. In the yesterday class, we have seen that the one file we name it as a data file and the other file is named as log file. One file is named as a data file and the other file is known as log file. Now, every time you create a database in SQL Server, so what is going to happen? So it will create the two files, data and the log file in here. You see, so I created a database. I will click OK. And you see a database has been created. SQL GYDB. In the background, if I would see, the two files are being created for this database. Right. So the two files are being created for this database. Two files, two files. And every time I create database, log log is not logical. We'll talk about that in a towards uh, like once we read about the delete statement and once we talk about the truncate statement, I will help you understand how the log will help. Okay, log is not logical. If it was logical, the file will not be here. Can you repeat how you got the path? So whenever a database is created. Okay, so whenever a database is created, you can go to the properties and you can go to the files. Under the files, we have the path, this one. If I scroll this towards the right, so I have the path over here, one way after creating a database. But if you want to see the path where the database are being created, right click database, new database over here while entering the name as well, there is a path. So you can define your path differently. Okay. You can define your path differently as well. So now this is how you create the different, different databases in SQL Server. Now, now I have created a different, different databases. So if you recall from the previous classes, I will I will change the database from company uh, from master to the demo. Then I will create the table. Now, if I expand the demo database and tables, you see an employee has been created. Now there is one more request from the my team lead to create another table which is named as a department, but on a SQL batch database. Okay, so whenever you are trying to create a database tables or insert record, always make sure to check which database you are working on. Any database I can choose. So now from demo to the SQL GUI DB, I am going to change the connection. Then I'm going to create a table ABCD, anything. So you see, with the help of a, these command, I changed the connection from one database to another database and I created the certain tables in this. So can anybody tell me if why I will not be able to drop because it is currently in use. So you see, if I would say drop database, database name, this will give me an error message. Cannot drop the database because it's currently in use. For that, I need to change the connection. Use must. I will change the connection so that this connection which will be released and then the database can be deleted. So I can execute the two commands together. Now you see the database was removed permanently. This operation is permanently. So whenever you are deleting a database, so always make sure that you are doing what? You are releasing the connection before dropping. You are doing what? You are trying to release the connection before dropping. Let's say that I want to delete the company, SQL batch. So these two databases as well, I want to drop. I will execute one line, then the second line. So this will execute. This will help me to remove this data permanently from here. Another way to delete a database is right click, delete and click OK. So this helped me to close or delete the data permanently. Both use and drop can be executed together. So you can use multiple commands together. So you can select the data, you can create the data, you can insert the data. Those are possible. Okay, we can execute a line of code together in SQL Server. No such limitations are there. Now, 
So I just want to take the extra few minutes of your time so that I will show you the remaining parts of the query. So which is the DDL statement now. DML, sorry. So I will go to the altar as well. So far it is clear for everyone. Anyone have any question? Then I will create a table. So I will create database customer. Then I will create these two commands. Then I will read the data from the table. So you see a database has been created customer. On the customer there are, there is one table which is named as employee. Under the employee we have three, what? Three columns. One is ID, name and date. If I want to alter the data, to add a new column, which is address. I want to add a new column. How I am going to do that, add a new column address. So alter table employee, add address. What is the data type? Where care 10. So you see now, so a column will be added but always towards the end of the list. Why cannot add a column in between? So whenever a column is added, by default, it will be added towards the very end. Okay, so you see a column has been added over here, which is named as address. Okay. Clear? So this is the simple way to add a column. Now, I can also drop a column. Let's say that I want to drop a column, which is ename. Alter table table name, drop column, drop. Alter table table name, drop column, ename. So we don't need to mention the data type because we are removing something. In the removal, I will not and define the, I will not define what? The data type. Right, this is to add a column, this is to drop a column. Uh, unmute yourself and ask your question. So now you see the EID was the integer data type. Now I am going to change the data type from integer to varchar. So how I am going to do that? By using the alter command. With the help of this command, I will change the data type from one data type to the another in SQL server. You see? from ID to the where care, from the integer to the where care, I have changed the data type in SQL server. Is it clear? Questions? Do we need to perform operation? Sir, what kind of operation you need to perform? Tell me. If you are mentioning if you need to do the practice, yes, you have two, three days. So you can do the practice during these three days, right? Okay. Uh, sir, in a uh, uh, add a table, uh, can we fix the uh, position of that column? No, no, no. Then add and remove. Any example of delete? This is deletion, right? We removed a column by the name of employee name. Kishan Jaiswal. Drop means removing something, right? Okay. So these are the structural changes which we have done on the table. Now, how to drop a table in SQL Server? So to drop a table, we need to mention a syntax, drop table employee. So this will entirely remove the table with its property. So everything is empty from here now. No table, nothing like there, no information at all. So table is dropped. To drop a table, we need to run the this comma. Drop table, drop table, table name. Okay, so we drop the table, which is named as an employee. Now. I will recreate the table so that I will show you one example again. Very good. Which one are those? Uh, employee ID, name and age. Age. Very good. Very, very good. So there is a shortcut. So whenever you are reading the data from the table, so always remember that. So if you don't know, from the left hand side, you can see the column details. I will drag and drop this column name from the left hand side towards here. You see. The column names are pulled. What are these square brackets? Are they necessary with the column names? No, it is not necessary. Okay, so these are optional. You want to put it, put it else. There is no requirement to use those. Okay, so select employee ID, employee age, and employee name from the employee table. Right, as you have seen that. 
So this is the structure of a table now. Without the data, the structure present, right? I can with select, right? So I can see the different different columns in SQL Server. I can rearrange the data in the SQL Server. When I say rearrange, I mean that I can shuffle the columns. I can read only one column, or I can just use employee ID followed by employee name like this, which means that logically I am reading the employee name first, then employee ID for second and the employee age third, logically. But this will not impact my main table. So select statement is used to read the data from the tables reading operation. So the operation is to read the records from the table now. So you can read one record in any order or so you can also read a column, single column in SQL Server like this. If you don't recall or if you don't remember or you don't want to type all the column names in the SQL Server, that can be added with the help of an asterisk sign. Okay, so three statement we have to done, do in the SQL Server, insert, update and delete. I don't want to push it to the next week. So sorry, I'm taking extra few minutes of your time. Okay, is select statement clear? how you can read the, all the records of a table. So star here represents all the records. If I hover my mouse on the this star, you see it is giving me the table definition, right? So star represent here the table definition in SQL Server. Now, the second thing which we have in the SQL Server is the insert statement. Insert mean add the record into the table, insert add the records into the table. The syntax for insert statement is insert into table name, the column names and the values like this. So this is the syntax for the insert statement. Now, we know that I have a table which is named as an employee, insert into employee. Employee is my table name. Employee has how many columns? So three columns, I will copy paste because I'm lazy, okay? So employee ID, employee name and employees, three columns, and I will add the values for these three columns. Employee ID is 101. Employee name is alpha. Like first I am showing the employee ID, employee name and employee age. In the second you see employee name, employee ID and employee age. So I'm just shuffling the columns according to my need in the select statement. So select will help me to read the data. It will not fix anything for me. So a single record with the insert has been added to the table. Insert into table name columns. So now, as you mentioned, so can I change or shuffle the values of a column? So let's see that. If I want to shuffle the values of a column, will it be done? Definitely. So if I shuffle the columns of a table, so values can be now employee name first. Name is beta. Employee ID 102, age is 22. So you see, I have shuffled the data in here. One another way to represent the record. So now, most of the time, what happens, the values or the structure of the table do not change, which means that, so whatever the structure look like, the same way we are going to add the data, like this, okay? So if you are going to add the data like this in SQL Server, so which means employee ID first, employee name second, then age. So I am going to now change the value. 104, 105, 107, 106, 108. So I am going to add the different, different record. How to add the multiple records in a single insert state? These are my value one, value two, value three, like that. As, as, there can be a person with the same name, right? A person with the same name can exist in a table, right? This is all possible. Okay, so this is all, all possible in the SQL Server. Now you see six rows have been affected. If I read the records from the table, if I do what? If I read the record from the table, now. Select start from employee. These are all my records in the table. So whatever pattern I have added the record, according to the same pattern, the records will be displayed in the table. 
Is it clear? We will talk about the update statement. Very basics. I know some of you are very much uh, like familiar with this terminology for the others. I know that there are some which is these statement are very new for you. OK, so now we have only three statement left. Update and delete trunk it. And trunk it. Only these and then I will. Conclude the session. So when we talk about the update statement, let's say that the records, whichever I pulled from the table, those are not efficient. There is a name or there is a age which is zero or 12. A person working in a company cannot be of a zero age. Let's say for the ID 108. So somebody requested me to update, change the value of this person. So now it's very simple to change a value of a record. The syntax for an update is update table set and the where clause. Okay, so update the table name. Table name can be employee. Set column one equal to value. Column two equal to value based on a where condition. Based on a where condition, I am going to do what? I am going to change the value of those record. Now let's do this with the practical. Update the employee table. Set employee age equal to twenty eight comma. Employee name equal to Rama. Okay, for which employee ID I am going to make the changes where employee ID equal to 108. Always remember that for EID 108, I am going to make the changes. Never run your update and delete statement without the where clause. Without the filter, where is the filter? Where means filter. So I am going to say to the SQL server only make the changes for one particular column, which is employee age. Now you see a one row affected. If I read the record from the table now, you see for the two particular columns in the SQL server, a value has been changed. Now I can do the same thing for the other columns. Okay, so let's say for the employee 107. So I'm going to change the value for the employee ID 107. You see over here. For employee ID 107, I change the value from 28 and the name to DIST. So with the help of a, this statement, so we can simply state that a name and the age of a person has been changed. From 28 to dist like this. OK. Clear. So now what happens if I run a statement without a where clause? Let's say that I am going to update a where clause, update a statement, but I forgot this is a mistake. Mistake, right? So when I say mistake, if I do an operation like this, so employee name and employee ch age will be changed to 28 DIST. Now be very much cautious. Whenever you are performing these kind of statement, you see now. So you see now on this particular column. The values are same now. So whatever the changes we have done, so this was a mistake and now we cannot recall it. What is the way to recall? We have to delete every record and we have to ask the backup team to restore the data or insert the record manually again into the database. Both are the hectic operation in here. Mohan Kumar, you said that where condition should be applied on a primary key. We haven't discussed about the primary key, but so far we know that we applied it on the employee ID call. Okay. So that we know that it is applied on a one simple call. Mm, but I can you be specific about the last thing? I am not sure what I have discussed. So, right. So. I, I mentioned this mistake. If you are running a statement update or delete statement without a where clause, that can be the that can change the record of the every every column value over here. For the employee age and the employee name, the values are set to DIST and 28, which means for all of the record, not only one or two. So now over here, if you see with the help of a, this delete statement, first we will see the Syntax for the delete. So syntax for the delete would be 
delete from table name based on a where condition. So previously, as that I was discussing <laughs> in the delete, we can remove the one single record, single or multiple, multi records in a, from a table. Right. So delete the syntax is delete from table based on the where condition. Now, this is my table data. I will show you. Now, if I, I would say delete from employee table where employee ID. Now, employee ID equal to 101. Now, this record I am targeting. So now a single record will be removed one record will be removed. 101 is gone. If I re-execute re the statement, it will not make any changes. I would say delete 107. You see, a single record is being targeted, a single record is being removed. 107 is gone. Now, also, so I, I can, can remove, remove everything from the table without specifying the where clause. Okay? Without specifying the where clause, I can remove everything from the table. You see, all the records over here has been deleted. Okay, so delete statement help us to remove a single record or all the records from a table. Now, the last thing in the SQL server is the truncate statement. If I enter the data again in the table, if I re-execute the data again in the table, so which means now I have inserted data again in the table. Okay, so if I show you the data, there are multiple records in it. If I want to do, delete using the truncate, the truncate follows a simple syntax, truncate table, table name, okay? So for the record 101, I'm going to post the duplicate values, okay? Same thing I'm going to do for the 102 record. For 102 as well, I'm going to insert some duplicate record, right? So now, why this? Because the example which I'm going to take, okay? So what it is saying in correct syntax, okay. So because this will help us to understand the coming example. So in my table, the first thing is that as of now, whenever I enter the records into the table, the first column, which you see the EID column, right? So here we see a problem. The data, whatever I have inserted in, is not in a sorted order. Is the data in a sorted order? Right. Now, how I can avoid this kind of operation in the SQL server? Okay, one more example to take over here. So let's say that there is a person, let's say 109 ID is going to join my company. Okay, but so far I don't know the name of a person. If I don't know a name of a person, what value I should add here? Okay, so have anybody tried this approach? If you don't know the name of a person, so what is the value which you should enter? Null value, sir. Very good. And null. 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 So does it mean that this one, this is not a null. This is an empty value. Empty means space. Space is a value, okay, because it holds some, I would say, logical order inside the SQL server. So to understand this, so we need to type the null here. Null. Whenever we talk about this null statement in SQL server, null means that as of now, the record is not present. Or as of now, the user values are unknown or user values are absent. Maybe in future there is a value, but currently there is no user value in here. So null simply help us to do what? Null help us to find out the, uh, like uh, help us to enter the empty record into the table or the absent record. So whenever I enter the null value, so how we are going to handle that, we will see that in a later class, right? But as of now, if you have to enter a row or reserve a row for a particular uh, employee. So you should enter the null null like that. Null null means absent value, empty value. As of now, the value is unknown. So we have seen this data so far whenever I am reading the records from the table. So first problem is that data is not sorted. Is not sorted order. So whenever we talk the sorted order, neither it's in the ascending order, neither it's in the descending order. Okay, remember that. The second thing is that we have duplicate records on the table. Duplicate records, you see, 
can anybody identify which rows are duplicate like 101 is here and 101 is also here right 102 is here 102 is also here so i have entered the duplicate records into the table the third thing which i have find out we have also the null records onto the table null is it clear so null can be something like absent value right as of now you don't know the value but maybe in future there is a value okay so data is not in the sorted order for this table employee and the second thing we have the duplicate records okay so whenever you are reading the records from a table so as a user whenever you are reading the records from a table so what is your approach to read the records so if there are thousands of record on a table are you going to read them all so let's understand this so who will tell me so if there are 100 and 100 of records in a table are you going to read them all so as a human being it is not possible for me to remember each and everything for such scenarios in sql server we will say that we will do what we will filter the records from a table filtration filtration means that if there are hundreds and thousands of record in my table i will only read 5 10 20 30 records so which means that out of the hundreds and records in sql server we will read less data okay will the read less data now the first thing in the sql server if i would say how to filter the records now we have created tables in our previous class we have defined the columns with the different different data types now in the today's class we will see if we have a table which has multiple records on it how we are going to filter that records in a table okay how we are going to filter the records from the table now to filter the records from a table so we will use the first statement which is ordering the data in a ascending or descending order now we need to do the first operation which is ordering of the record order mean so if there is a data in my table so we will enter the data or we will see the data in the ascending or in the descending order right so this will be the first thing we will do in the sql server order of the data in ascending or the descending order okay so which allows us to do what the sort operation whenever we talk about the sorting of the data right so sorting means in the ascending order or in the descending order we will sort the data right sorting right everybody understand what sorted means so we usually do the sorting of the things so that it's in the arranging order right so everybody understand what is a sorting sorting simply means that we need to sort the data in the ascending or in the descending order right so now how we are going to sort the data in the sql server and where which command we need to apply in the sql server if we see this is my result set sorting means in sql server order by statement order the data in the ascending or descending order whenever we say sort the data okay from the employee table so we'll apply here order by employee id ascending or descending so if i say order the data for the column employee id what does it mean does it mean that this row will shuffle or all the associated record with this will be shuffled so like I, only employee id all the associated right so uh, yeah so most of you will be confused with the excel if we sort the data in the excel a single column will be shuffled but in the sql server all the associated records will be shuffled why because 101 alpha and 21 have the relationship right we have the relation between the data for each and every call okay so so that so if 101 is going up so all the associated record which means that employee id name and age will go up if 101 is going down so all the associated record for 101 will be going down okay so now if i highlight and execute this statement so now you see that simply sql server is doing what sql server is doing ordering of the data right so sql server is performing the order of the data now if i do the order of the data on the basis of a employee name column 
instead of employee id i would do on the basis of an employee name so it will be shuffled in the basis of a a b c d pattern so now as of now you will see null is an empty record empty record means like the zero okay zero will always be on the top empty means nothing so if if there is no data so it should be always on the top because it has a higher precedence or the higher i would say higher rule according uh, apart from the other state right so that is the reason null is shown on the top so now so far we have seen that in sql server okay so if we do the order of the data on the basis of an employee name column okay on the basis of an employee name column it will be sorted in the a b c d pattern so null will be on the top as i mentioned null is an empty record so after that you will see every record is in the a b c d pattern now so you see alpha beta charlie delta like that if we have the data in this pattern so this will be sorted okay so we can sort the data in two orders so one order is the ascending and the other one is the descending order so when we talk about the descending of the employee id so which means that whatever the highest id is it will be brought up on the top and so whatever the null will be or the lowest will be it will be towards the bottom now so whenever i run this order of the data will it impact my main table so does it mean that it is going to affect my main table as well the data whatever is stored inside the main table no so select is a read statement so whatever things or whatever options or whatever values we are currently seeing this is on the screen only this indicates that so whatever changes we are making in here it will be only temporary or for the visualization effect this is not a permanent change remember that this is not a permanent change at all so now so descending of the employee id descending of the name this is two way now maybe in your mind you might have a question if i want to sort the data in the two orders like for two particular column one is employee id and the other one is employee name so i mentioned that sort the data of an employee id in the ascending if i say sort the data of an employee name in the descending what will happen now will sql server move the data in a different direction uh, you you have to just say it like as i mentioned this data is relational so if we have a relational data will it move in different direction i mentioned a few minutes ago the data inside the sql server is relational then it will not move in a different direction so what will happen so why we will apply the two column names inside the order by statement i will help you to understand this state now so you see that sorting of the data is done on the employee id basis so which means that employee id is in the ascending order but the name is also in the ascending order or descending order so whenever there is a duplicate record you see i will just filter out one record i would use where employee id equal to 101 so we are going to see the record for one person 101 now so if i show you the data for 101 101 data look like somewhere like this 101 alpha beta delta and echo a b d and e right so sorting of the order is in the ascending now if i apply the order of the employee id this will be ascending if i do the employee name as a descending what will happen so 101 will be same but this echo will be on the top you see this echo will be on the top so let me show you for two records employee id equal to 102 so now if you pay attention for the two record 101 and 102 so you see that the order of the name for 101 and 102 is in the descending order but employee id is in the ascending order try to understand this because for 101 there are four records alpha beta delta and echo if i would say employee name descending so which means that if a value is having a duplicate record okay same value is having a duplicate record then we can sort for those if the value itself is not having any duplicate records so then for that particular value nothing will happen okay for that particular value nothing will happen you see because there will be no ascending or descending only for one column it will do the ascending of the data 
okay so you understand this so pay attention to these two 101 and 102 here no sir it does not work like excel so in excel so the the single row will affect right but here the column will be affected employees is not doing anything over here it will be same because we don't have any duplicate records for the employee age. So if we had, so you need to understand this. If we have 101, if I enter a one record here, beta 22, you will see. If I enter a record over here, which will say, now and try to entering a duplicate value. Now we will say here 22 and here 24. So then it will do some work on the third table. So you you will pay attention now to this employee ID column. So first I will show you for one column, which is one particular ID, 101. So if I show you this, you see for the employee ID and employee name. So employee ID is descending, does not matter because we are selecting one column. So this is ascending. But over here, age is in the ascending order as well for beta and beta, you see. Now, if I apply the third column, the 22 over here, 101 beta 22 will be on the top. Okay. And the same thing over here, you will see 101 beta 22 is on the top. You understand how this is working for the three columns. So when you have the multiple duplicate records, so this will work. When you don't have a duplicate record on the basis of an one employee ID, that will not give us any detail. Ordering of the data, clear now, more clear. So I mentioned that this one highlighted. So we have this ID duplicate, this beta beta duplicate. Then we have this age as in 22 and 21. If you have a data like this, then you should apply a third column. Okay, else there is no way you should be like applying the third column, right? So mostly our work is done on the basis of one column. And if you need the more assistance, then the two column is perfect, okay? Uh, so, Baljeet, I have seen that you use abbreviations. Where I have used abbreviations? Yeah, A, C, S, and D, C, you know, this is... Ascending or descending? Yeah. yeah. So, no, uh, how... This is syntax. Use... This is syntax. Syntax, okay. Descending, we yeah. call it A, S, C. Or descending, D, S, C. So, in this uh, uh, server, uh, SQL server, we uh, mostly use... Uh, uh, syntax, you know, abbreviation. So how do we know that uh, which... Uh, remember, you know, bro. Yeah, huh? You have to recall and remember that. Yeah. Okay. Ascending yeah. and descending, no. No library, nothing, no will help, nobody will help you. Remember. So I would not lie to you on the, like, the fourth day. So it will be easy and you should be... So you should, you need to learn this, right? By heart, you need to learn the syntax. Okay. So this is you... Like, if you learn it, then only you will be understanding the syntax. This is very simple. For ascending short is ASC because there is do, two things only, right? If I don't apply for the third column, will be ascending to the previous column. So this column is the major column on the basis of which the data will be sorted. If there is a duplicate column or the duplicate value associated with the employee ID, then this will work. If there is a duplicate value on the basis of this column, employee name, then this will work. If you don't have a column with, uh, like if I would say there is a, uh, I would say total unique records in my table, then there will, you will not see any changes onto that. Okay. Then you will not at all see any changes onto that. Select so start from employee. These are my records so far. Now we need to understand about the where clause in SQL server. Where, why we need to apply the where clause in SQL server? where help us to constrain the result set so this where clause will come after the from statement from table name then the where clause so it also contain the boolean expression so where is the filter in the sql server which has many like uh, i would say many in between like many statements like we we can use the many clauses with the where filter okay so the first one is the boolean operator how many of you know what is a Boolean operator? So do you guys know what is equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than? So these sign, are those clear for you guys? So you you know what those sign means? 
Mm-hmm. Very good. So if my if I have to search for a particular record into a table, let's say I employ ID one zero six. So if this record is present in my table, then it will give me that data. If this record is not at all present, so what will happen? So it will give me an empty result set. Let's say that if I want to search a record which is equal to now over here, I want to search a one zero one. So one zero one exists multiple times in my table. Does it give me one record for one zero one or all of the records? So most probably this will give you all of the records. Oh. So all of the records from the table. So, if one zero one exists hundred times or a one time, so it will give us all the records. So, equal to operator simply gives us all the records from a particular table. Now, if I don't want to see this record from a table and want to see the other records from the table, then I need to apply a not equal to. So, this is the sign for a not equal to greater than and a less than sign. So, this indicates a not equal to sign. Not into Equal to indicates that so except this record, show me everything else. So except one zero one, everything else is present. Okay. Now the other way around to run the not equal to sign is mark of exclamation and the equal to sign. So this is same like a not equal to. Either it's your choice how to perform this not equal to in SQL sir. Whether you want to write like this or the other way around, which I show you, okay, this is your choice. Now, so now if you have to see a range of a data, whenever I see the range of a data, so this is like the data like greater than and equal to. Show me all the records which is greater than one zero five, greater than. One zero five, which means six, seven, eight, nine. So if there are records, so that will be displayed. Okay, so show me all the record less than this operator, which is less than one zero five. So all the other records will be displayed. So like this. So with this greater than and equal to, we also use the greater than less than with the equal to sign. So there is one more way to write this. Greater than equal to less than equal to sign. Okay, so greater than equal to which in so whenever I run this statement, one zero five is not included. Okay, so you see only seven six eight and nine is there, but one zero five is not included. Same thing goes from here if I search the employees, so one zero five is not included. Now whenever you apply this signs greater than and less than with the equal to operator, then the searching value will be included. I will run two statement together. You see in this. All the signs, all the data greater than one zero five, and all the data less than one zero five. So, with the help of a these boolean operator, these conditions, so we are able to fetch the records from the table. Very easy to understand, like very basic syntax, right? So, everybody able to understand the statement? Questions. you have a question ask the question it's like filtering yes we are filtering the records you see so with the help of this we are going to filter the data okay filtration yes you can call it as a filtration okay clear so now with the where clause we have a and and or operator and operator and the or operator so whenever you apply this and operator how does it work let's say that we have a value 1 is equal to 1 and 2 is equal to 2 both the statement on the left hand side and the right hand side is true so the result set will be included as a true so if the values on the left and right are true so both will be indicated as a true now let's say that if we have 3 equal to 4 And three equal to four, three. So this statement is false. The other one is true. So if there is an and operator, the it will not include any call. So over here the same thing is written. It will combine the two expression 
if both the statement are true a row is included if either which means if one of the statement is false row is not included or row is excluded so how this will work in sql now i want to see the result so let's say find an employee id equal to 105 and show me the employee age equal to 34 if the employee id and the employee age of a person so if this is a correct data so a record will be included if this is not a correct data let's say that 33 i will put the age so this will not include a record okay so now if the both the two statement are true and i would say you see for two statement if this is true data is included if i would say and employee name is alpha so a row will not be included because the first two are true but the third one is false both the statement are true the result is true if out of two statement one is false the row is also included because this condition is true if both the statement are false then the result set would be false then the row is not in included okay so or statement simply says that the same thing if either of the two statement are true the row is included which means either both are true or one of them are true so then the row is included if one is false the other one is true still the row is included but if both the statements are false then row is not included row is excluded to understand this in sql server we will understand the data now so now using the same operation i would say that previously so previously the employee age of a person was 33 so if i run this statement so this statement is not a true using a and condition but i apply a or clause over here so what will happen it will give me the data how how it is giving me the data how the sql server is trying to find out the record one side is true other side is not true still it is giving me the data if i would say let me see the records of a table okay so i would say show me the record of this table so employee id 105 or employee age 123 now if you pay attention or clause so this statement is true by this condition employee id equal to 105 which is true but why it is showing me extra records because this statement as well is true employee age is 23 yes employee age is 23 yes due to this criteria this record is being included so as i mentioned so if you see here for the or statement if both the statement are true the row is true the row will be included if one of the statement is false other one is true the row is included it is also true if both are false then it will be false for the or statement vishnu clear now so over here why it is showing me four record because this statement and these statement both are true and returning the distinct distinct record so that is the reason it is true okay now how i will run this and statement and or statement together in sql sir let's understand this logic so so i am stating to the sql server i am stating to the sql server show me all the records from the employee table where employee id is 105 and employee age is 34 employee name is alpha i know that employee id 105 and 34 is true but alpha is not true that is the reason i have applied a or statement over here so we can combine the and with the or statement as well so you see that this statement is returning me the record because 105 and 34 is true and why it is giving me the 105 because or clause has the alpha as a true so you can combine an and and or statement to find out the result set from the table is it clear yes okay so 
if i want to find out the multiple records from a table like this i want to find out the five different ids i know that i put the 105 two times still it's included one time so you can put some other ids or you can put an id which is not at all present you see 1108 no it's no record which is present in my table so now sql server is still returning me the four records whatever are present in my table okay it simply indicates that if you have to filter out the multiple records from a single column if you want to filter out the multiple records from a single column in sql server okay so multiple record from a single column in a sql server then you need to apply what clause the or statement or the or filter in sql server remember that okay is it clear so very good so whenever you have to apply the multiple filters from the sql server you need to apply the or filter but so this is a lengthy operation if i have to search out the 20 30 records no so and means that this should be true and this should be true and this should be true so these are true but these are the present in the different different rows so that makes them false so yes we are going to talk about that so if i have the 20 30 records to search from a single table for a single column how i am going to do that for that in in statement comes into the picture where employee id in so when i say in which indicates now the same thing like the or okay so instead of running the above statement i can run the in clause in sql server so which is like a filter so this filter may help me to find out what find out the multiple values from a table you see with the help of a this in sql server i can find out the multiple records same so which one is easier the above one or the below one so in indicates that which is equivalent to an or okay so we'll say that this is equal to now so now sql server is not able to find out the value we are comparing a value over here we are just trying to do what we are trying to compare a value in sql server we don't have to compare a value equal to is for the comparison right in sql server so if you have a equal to equal to simply indicates that this is the comparison we don't have to do the comparison rather than that we have to find out the null value for that we have two things in sql server is null and is not null if you want to find out a null value from a table so you type is null okay so from a particular column if you want to find out the value so we, you want to type here is null or i would say or if there is any null value into the employee name call so this will give us the second column and second value you see in the second column has the value if you have the multiple columns so apply that filter or employee name or employee age is null so if you want to find out the data where there is a null value you need to apply or statement you cannot find out that value with the equal to operator for that we need to find out the values with the is null statement it's your choice whether you want to find out the values on the basis of a one column two column or three column yes vishal now i believe like you guys are back now right okay so 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 far we we are just seeing the data and the filtration of the components with the where clause okay so nothing else is going on so everything which we are doing so far is going on with the where clause so let's understand the one more condition with the where clause we are using the between so between is a filter which is used by the where condition so but between in the sql server works with the range data so if you want to see the data in a range let's say i want to see the ids between 1 and 50 so this is a range of a data right so for that we use the between in sql server show me the ids where employee id between 1 and 5 Yeah, one zero one and one zero five. Oh, one zero one and one zero five. 
Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers data analytics course in collaboration with IIT and Pavatak. Through this course, you will master Power BI, data modeling, data mining and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry expert. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics. Just a quick quiz question guys. What is the role of SQL function count? Option A to calculate the average of a column. Option B to count the number of rows in a table. Option C to concatenate two strings and option D to retrieve distinct values from a column. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's move forward with our session. Sorry, I thought it's one and five. Okay, so show me the records from 101 and 105. So SQL server will show me all the records between 101 and 105. I can do the order of the data after this one order by employee ID. So by default, this will be ascending. So this can be the another approach. So here is the syntax for the between clause. So between mostly works with the which data? So for the range of the data. Okay. So when you want to get the range of values from a specified column, like in our case, employee ID, we use the between filter. So between here indicates the ratio with data from 101 and 105. Okay. So now, can I use it for the name? No, it's not like conceptual to use that with the name. Why? Because if you use the data for the name column, so this will can give you a bad data or not the correct data. Okay. So never run the statement, which should give you a not exactly the data. I cannot say that give me the range of data between alpha and delta, right? Because they have no sequence in between. Okay. Okay. But I can ask the SQL server to use a like filter for the same operation. So what operations we use with the between class? If you want to see the range of a data for the employee IDs, phone numbers, uh, salary column or employee age, let's run it for the employee age. Show me the data from the employee table where data from one year of age to 27 years of age. Employee age in between from 1 to 27. So whatever data is present, all will be seen on the screen. So with this statement, we can see all of the records are being currently displayed. Right. So you understood how the between is used. So these are used for, for what? So when you want to filter the data based on the range of values for a specified call. Is it clear? write the same thing in a bracket. So filter, it filters data, data based on a range of values from a for a specified call for one call. You can use the OR condition and apply it for the multiple columns. That's your choice. But over here, this is used for what? The range of data. So as I mentioned, between filter is used to see the range of data. Range is what? Show me the IDs from 101 to 105. So if you see, it will show me the IDs from 101 to 105. Now I can also show display the range of employee name. Show me the name of a person. Oh, sorry, age of a person between 1 and 27. So all the age of a person between 1 and 27 will be displayed. Okay. Clear, Vishnu? So this is like, as I mentioned, it filters the data based on the range of values from, for a specified call. So always use it with the name uh, integer data or for the date time date type of data in SQL Server. Clear for everyone? So other people in the cl class, is it clear for you? Can you give me a heads up in the chat? Why order by is written in the employee? Just uh, you can run it with the order without the order by. It's your choice. So whenever we talk about the like filter, like filter uses the two entries. One is percentage and the one, other one is underscore. Why is the like operator or the like filter used in SQL Server? So most of the time in SQL Server, like operator is used to find the pattern 
okay pattern pattern is what so let's say that show me all the employees where name of a person start with a or show me all the employees where name of a person start with b so things like that so let's try to find out the data for the employee name now i want to find out an employees from a table where employee name like i would say employee name is a, having a string data so i will use these two to find out the string values i will use a percentage a percentage show me all the records of an employee table where name of a person starts with a and after that there can be n number of digits n means like it can be android it can be alpha it can be andrew it can be anand it can be anything okay so whatever it starts with a give me all the data so ba basically it will consider as a more than one character ha huh, it's starting so you can put the i can say to the sql server give me the data starting with b okay so b so like this so if there is more than one value it can show me that so it's your choice whether you want to put b only or you want to put bet right okay like that so sql server will give you the value based on that as well so your choice how you enter the data in the like filter noted so if if we want to select a b as the second letter in the in the word is there anything yes we have that okay so syntax for that filter would be like pattern would be like this pattern is like using the percentage or underscore so that is the thing pattern we call it here so over here i want i will show you that as well. don't worry second letter as a b or second letter as l what happened to my screen okay so now if you pay attention to my screen now i want to find out an employee from a table where name of a person has a a towards the end like beta alpha delta okay so find the name of a person where the name is ending with n we have seen the start now we will see the end okay name of a person and with ends with what the percentage n so now or a or anything okay so let's see that find out all the name of a person where name of a person and with a do you see this now every name is being included over here where name of the person ends with a we can limit this search by using the give me only the name of such persons so where name ends with h a. okay so alpha is the only word where name ends with h a. okay so apart from that i can use a filter in the sql server using the like condition wherein if i would say tell me or give me a name of a person where there is et in between et it can be in the start in the middle in the end so anywhere if a name has a et give me that so we know that beta has a et so what else values we can find our o value so show me the name of a person if there is a o value in their name o value okay so now over here you see every value with the o will be shown on the screen echo don fox echo echo o is in there so echo has the o in the end don has in the second place fox has second echo again has it towards the end so with this example we understood how we can use the percentage okay how you can use the percentage and what are the different ways to use the percentage in between now one more like filter we will do the second wild card for the like which is known as underscore so when we talk about the underscore underscore represent one single character okay so if i have to find a name of a person which is of three characters okay so this indicates that with the help of an underscore it can represent the one value okay it can represent the one value in here now so somebody in the class mentioned that let's say that i have to find a name of a person and second name can be a b c d e f g h i so first name we don't know but the second name is i 
and then i don't know what the value is so it is necessary that the second character of a name is i it can be of any length so temp here so apart from that we can use this for the e second name is second character is the e so beta and delta has a e mag has a e so every name which has a second character as a e will be represented or will be shown it like this so you can use a combination of a percentage underscore together as well to find out the records from a table can you please repeat the second last syntax and last syntax again and why it so, is used so you understood this part this one till underscore i understood so can uh, you what does underscore that? wait uh, and what does underscore represent Hmm. underscore represents one single character and so which means uh, that every if i yeah. which means that if i would say these are ones underscore two underscore and three underscore so okay. which indicates that three characters are there right yes so and now if i put a single underscore what does it identify over here only one single character will be shown right we don't know if a name is of one single character so that name will be displayed yes or no correct right so now hmm. let's say that i will just use it so this is my name okay so this is my name okay so i would say that second character of a name is i what will happen any name i don't know how it start it can be tim it can be jim it can be kim right it can be anything which has a second character as i right i am just using it as a fill in the blanks i don't know the first character but second character is i and third character i don't know so if there is a name which has a i in there so it will be displayed theek okay. hai understood yes now i know that i would say to the sql server now show me the second character as a e if i run this statement now meg is there but i want sql server to find out all the names so which means that first character i don't know second character is e after that it can be of any length it can be meg it can be delta it can be beta it can be megan or anything okay i will highlight execute so you see now there are n numbers of values over here percentage indicates that whatever values are after the e give me that but first character can be anything second character should be e. okay second character is strictly to be reserved for the e character clear clear for everyone sir can i ask something yes ma'am sir in the starting where you only used the percentage character and you selected the alpha 1 why it gave only one value of alpha not much like this there is only one alpha in percentage only... h a percentage h a there is only one h a na Okay. Do you see? There is only one value for alpha, and H A is the only comes under alpha, so that is the reason it's giving us only one value. Okay. 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 I thought there were multiple, multiple values. No, no. If there were multiple values, so you see, I will do it for the H O. So now E C O exists multiple times, so this will display E C O multiple times. Okay. So thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Questions. Does it apply for age as well? Yes, it can apply for the numeric numbers as well. Okay. So let's say that from the employee table. Okay. I want to find out a, a number which has a one in there. Okay. So let's say that where employee ID like. so because we have to use the percentage so even the column is integer we have to use a single inverted comma show me the data from the employee table wherever there is 9 towards the end of the value so it can be 9 it can be 109 so anything which has a 9 towards the end of the record okay so so it should end with 9 i can simply state the same thing so show me the data from the table which has a 1 towards the end so you can use the same logic towards the start towards the end the same thing for the id for the name for the age for the phone number so anything mohammed abdul so far 
we have seen that different types of filters in SQL Server. Okay. Anyone having any questions or any concerns related to the where filters? So these were all the filters which we needed to use with the where clause. So it started from the end clause. So and or so those come under the where condition only, the where filter. Okay, and where is followed by the operators. We have the equal to operators, and operator, or operators, in operator, not in operator, is null operator, is not null operator, like operator, between operator. So those we have done so far. Anyone having any questions, you are welcome to ask any questions related to that. Else we will move to the second thing. So which is the Top, come on, top and distinct. Okay, good. So now we need to understand about the sampling the data. So how we are going to sample the data from a table? So as I know, I, I like I know that you people know that we use the different different filters to limit the number of records from a table, right? So we use the where condition, or we need to find out the IDs where ID is ten, like that, right? But apart from like there can this can be an interview question without using the without using the where condition can you fetch the top 5 records from the table okay now this is one condition top 5 all and top 5 one column name okay it's your choice whether you want to use the one column name or the multiple one i use the i will just exclude the employee name i will give the data for employee id comma employee age so this is how the data will be presented in the top command now why we use it so most of the time i don't want to filter the data because i don't know what filter what values i should put in the filter for such reasons i will use the top command okay can we sort the data in the top let's say that i want to see the data in the order statement order mean that i want to see the data in the order like ascending or descending i would use here order by employee id ascending now with the help of a, this statement now the values of a my row will change i will just comment this line so that i will run the first line and the third line i will just to run the two select statements you see the first line is giving me a different set of records the second result set is giving me a different set of records why is that because the first statement does not sort the data it will just give me the information from the raw data filter in the sql server these filter very much help you to like use the logic with the help of a, these logic you can perform the n number of activities right so what activities you can do with these logic so with this basic basic logic in the sql server so you can like control the number of record without filtering so you can control the number of records to be displayed on the screen okay so now the another set of example which we are going to do around is for the offset and fetch command now, with the help of a top statement, we have seen that from a big table or a small table, we are just getting the 5 or a 10 records or the 10 number of records in a table. Now, sometimes there might be there might be a logic required wherein I need to skip the top 5 records. Okay, I want to skip these top 5 records from here to here and then show me the records after that. Okay, so show me the record from the 106. So, if I run both the statements over here, so you will see which record we are getting. So, we are getting from the record number 11, 12, so from here to here. So, is it clear? So, how the fetch comes into the picture? So, fetch will, uh, like we can control the fetch to see how many records you want to see from there. Okay, so fetch, we can control the data. Can we use fetch without you? No, fetch, so offset you can run alone, but fetch cannot be run alone. So this statement cannot be run alone. If we run it, so it will give us an error message. Okay, so invalid use of a fetch. Okay, and you cannot use the top keyword over here. If I want to see top one record, so top cannot be applied with offset and fetch. 
okay so top cannot be applied with the offset and fetch offset and fetch can be ran together but top is a separate command itself questions so today in the class we have done the multiple things in here so if i would say one thing so i will just give you a small uh this is my weekend so i will give you a questions oh, let me give you questions questions kahan questions can i take this so the questions i will to practice i will give you guys so what do you need to do you need to open the sql server and create the two databases so you need to create one database which is named as school so this is your question to practice so one database you will name as a school then you need to use school then you need to create a table named as a teacher a teacher table you have to create this table has four columns teacher id it can be integer it can be it, it's your choice what data type you can put it can be varchar 20 age can be integer like this and the class can be varchar or character so whatever data type you will choose so it can be that only so then you need to create the data like this so for your example i will just paste one small thing for the doctors i will paste okay same thing you will create for the doctors okay so in the doctor table so this is just an example for your so that you can remember so this can be integer this can be varchar varchar like that specialization can be this age can be integer again so you see on the basis of this you will create the two tables two databases one is database named as school and other one is named as hospital so for your practice you need to run this statement okay simply the count function in the sql server if you see c o u n t count so count of what if i say count of asterisk sign which simply indicates that count of asterisk so which indicates that give me the count count means number of rows present in my table level now if you see that 18 records but the same thing if i would say count of the id column did column did is a column in sql server so if i say the count of the did column so what will happen now it will give me the 17 records so why it is give me 17 and why it is give me 18 because the column if if null value is present on a column level because of the null value it will not count it okay okay so if you are applying the asterisk sign on a column level so count of all the records from a table then it will not count the null value so it will tell us how many rows are there so if you say for a specific column so it will it will exclude the null one row affected i will just use comma here i will remove this comma so that you can do the practice so you see select star from department 19th row is null so if we do the select star of this row so what will happen it will show the 19th row why because there is a row we have reserved a space for a particular record which is empty as of now but in future there might be some values okay so a very basic thing which comes on the screen which i find it very much like annoying or it's not like uh, informational for my my eyes i could not get that so what is that screen on the screen no column name very good vashno and yeah so very good so we see as a no column name why because as i mentioned whenever we apply a operation on a particular column right now this column 17 value is derived from an operation which is counting of the records over here we have to alias this operation aliasing you know what is alias who knows what is alias renaming mm okay not a renaming exactly renaming so alias in sequence 
instead of that no call now i will say this is the c o u n t s counts counts indicate that so we are counting the number of records from a table so you see 17 okay so over here as well we can put the counts so that instead of a no column name and now it is showing the what data the counts and count count is 90 count is 70 this is the first thing first set operation the second sub set operation in sql server we called it as a max okay so maximum value from a table so maximum value so maximum what is the maximum value which means the highest value from a table how we can find the highest value from a table by applying the max function with the help of this max function we will be able to determine the maximum value from the table okay so we will be able to determine what the maximum value from the table okay so over here now so instead of this i will just use it on the top so that in future if you take a reference alias means means a temporary name okay so can i find a maximum value from a table this will not work max of max of star from a table so what it is going to find out for me so let's see if i say that max value so you understand my point here so if i apply the max of asterisk sign on a table so what max value we are trying to find so it is saying incorrect syntax near asterisk sign so whenever you are going to search for a maximum record so that record must be present inside a table let's say i want to find out the maximum did from a table so it will include the 70 because this is a maximum id from a table so simply we can also find out the maximum salary oh maximum salary from a table so when we say about the maximum salary from a table it will be 8000 if i want to give me the maximum name from a table so this should give me what wait because the w is highest in the character list so that is the reason okay so with this operation we can find out the data like this now can i run the two operations together i want to find out the count of the records and then i want to find out the maximum id so two set operations together like two functions ah one is the count and the second one is the max yes absolutely as many as functions you can find out in the sql server with this you see 19 and the 8000 is the maximum value okay got it how this is done how to find out the maximum value mm. it will skip na so row number will not skip we'll talk about that don't worry so we have find out the maximum value minimum value and now we will see about the average value so when we talk about the average value from a table average simply indicates that average of all values of the column when we say average of all the values of the column it does not include the null values how to find out the average anybody know here what is the formula of an average okay i think your mood is good you yeah <laughs> okay so average of a column of the values it should be it should be working on which table which data only the integer or the floating data it should not work on any other data in sql server so always remember that whenever you use the average of the data so okay so this value i will show you so we have find out the count max and we can also see the minimum of the salary from the table okay comma minimum of the salary from the table so if i run the statement one column count the second column is showing max the third column showing min from which table 
from the department table if i run the statement together so this will show me the this value the same thing i can do with the average so when we talk about the average of the data from the sql server so average indicates that it should run with which values anyone average should run with the integer value integer. which means it only it should run with id salary but not with employee name i will show you that why it is not running because we cannot divide the employee names right so i hope these values are clear so you see if i do the uh, id average id is from my table 9 because we have 17 records so it has find out the 9 as a mid value so same here salary 6347 because of the data we have the minimum as average as a 6347 average name as the operand type clashes so which means on a varchar column this value cannot be performed so always be vigilant so which column you should be applying the value for so same thing goes for the sum as well so sum okay if i run this four values count max min and average so it will give me the count of the employees maximum salary minimum value and the average value from a table so after that we have the sum so sum works same like the average in terms of a integer column so this will work with the integer column only okay so this will work with which column only the integer column sum means that give me the all the values so all the particular values whatever are stored in the id column sum of them okay it will count all of them and give me the end result put 153 the sum of ids of my table is 153 so now we can also see the sum of which column sum of the salary column over here sum of the salary column is what 10 lakh 1 lakh 7 Seventy nine hundred something, right? One lakh and seventy nine hundred. So this is the sum of values of my table over here. So apart from that, so we have one more column, so which is the sum of a. So by running the five statement together, you see, I can find out the max maximum value, minimum value, count, average, and the total value from. Ah, uh, a, a real time example. I would love to hear from you guys. So, group, Google search नहीं करना. Just normal question. What is a group? अरे, we have a group of people. A group of people is performing prayers. We have a a group of the team members playing under seventeen cricket. We have a group of people working for a assignment, right? Which means that. a same number of people have some values which are same or they are working on a task which are same a group no in country there cannot be a group right so group only occurs on the gender on the department on the cities on the age group right so tell me how many people are under the 17 age group tell me under the people who are eligible to vote so group grouping of data no organization cannot be a group ha huh? so in organization there would be a department column so we can group the data on the basis of a department but not based on a uh, organization blood group yeah how many people have the positive blood group what else is there how many people belong to delhi how many people are celebrating the eid festival baisakhi festival diwali festival christmas festival okay onam uh, there is pongal as well festival how many people are celebrating that festival as well right so different level of the people have the different combinations or the different types of data on the basis of the, which we can group them group of football players very good so you you have understood what is a group now over here so what group i can make so first group i can make count how many male and how many female are working in my company so what i am trying to trying to do here count the gender column and i want to do what show me the gender column and group them on the basis of male and female so group by clause in sql server help us to 
ब्रेक डाउन रिजल्ट सेट इंटू सबसेट सो वट इज द रिजल्ट सेट इंटू सबसेट दिस इज माई रिजल्ट सेट फ्रॉम अ टेबल राइट सो दिस इज नोन एज रिजल्ट सेट सो टू ब्रेक डाउन दिस रिजल्ट सेट बेस्ड ऑन अ टू कैटेगरी मेल एंड फीमेल दैट इज नोन एज अ सबसेट नाउ वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ सबसेट ऑफ दिस इंफॉर्मेशन विच मीन दैट सो देर आर नाइन मेल Eight, uh, so nine male and eight females, and zero null values. So, which means that based on this information, I have grouped the data. Clear? Is it clear? Understandable? Is it clear? Understandable? Very good. So now, apart from that, in SQL Server, I can say, show me the salary. Which is being withdrawn by my employees, male and female. So give me the sum of salary. Now you see, I am saying here sum of salary as the total. So based on the gender, tell me how much male and how much female are withdrawing the salary. So I can just show the three columns together as well here. So one count, the second one is sum, and third one is gender. Now based on a simple. one column i am going to generate what i am generating the three columns three different column gender count and sum so there are null values in here on a gender column which means that there there is one person which is having 5500 salary as of now there is no gender mentioned for that now female 51200 male 51200 okay so this is one way to Insert or the to read the records from a table based on a gender column. Is it clear? Understandable. Grouping of data, sir. Group karna. So how many people group? Group. What does the group mean? Okay. So if you have played any game, game. So we we made the different different groups. Okay. In here there are two groups. One is male and one is female. Rohan. 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 okay let's say that how many people have the rohan as a common name so we are we will group them so you understanding this now now so for your understanding i want to count how many so there are different different department in my table right so rohan if you can unmute and we can discuss this all together so if this is my department table and i will do the order of the data by department order by department so now you see here the uh, values which we have are based on the different different department now somebody asks you to count how many how many people are working in finance it hr market marketing sales so how you are going to perform this activity group by department very good who told who asked this rohan you were that yes you understood yes sir. you understood how we are going to group the data Yes. Sir. So functionality is clear now. Very good. So yes, now sir. you see, you had said that we want to count the department and we want to see how many people are working in the different different department as counts. Okay. Sometimes, okay. Sometime you see this red sign, this one, which means this is a syntax. If you run this, SQL Server will generate an error message. Over here, when you receive a a blue colored sign or a a uh, pink color sign so use a square bracket around it so that this will be ignored okay group by instead of the order i need to type group of the data group by count over here i will use count so you see now if i run the statement now i see there are four people in finance hr three it marketing sales three people working so grouping of the data on the basis of a different different department so can uh, group by consider can be considered uh, two columns filter on a multi uh, can be considered what filter sorry filter yes we will talk about the filters not now in a moment so we have seen one column on the basis of which we are doing the group by i want to include include the gender column as well i want to group the data on the basis of a gender comma department right how i am going to do that count the people then show me the salary of that particular person so three operations i will down do it not three exactly four so first show me the gender 
then show me the department then show me the count of both of them then show me the salary of both of them so over here i will apply these two column in here gender comma department or i will just swap the column so that it would look nice so we have the uh, a column uh, over here there are null values but you see finance hr it marketing and sales on the basis of which so we have the different different males and females working this is another way to find out the data okay now the query whichever which i use over here i have applied so there are four columns which i have pulled department gender department and gender are not the part of an aggregate functions so that is the reason i have put this department and gender under the group by clause okay under the group by clause i have included that now is it clear so far Uh, sir if uh, we remove the group by gender department what will be the result failure so what you are trying to but, uh, so we, if i run we, if we run mm. this statement so this will say that the department dot department so this column is invalid in the list because it is not the part of it is not the part of an aggregate function or the group by clause so whenever you are using any set functions out of 5 count max min average and sum and you are including a column so this column is not having any functionality over it what you are trying to achieve so here it will give you the a value let's say that this will give you the 17 or a 19 result and this will give you some value let's say around uh, a 1133 any value like that for example okay so both will give you a different values so now and try to understand this this has given me given us 19 and this has given us this value for example now whenever we are reading the data for the department and gender there are 19 different rows right for 19 rows this value is not possible to print right Th that is the reason sql server is giving us the error message gender is part of an aggregate function i think we do not need to put in the group by clause yes you are so very much by is uh, providing the list we can say no group by is doing what now it is trying to see so this if i run the two values over here okay without the group by so what is going to happen so there are only 17 and 107 this number okay right we, i have right so now we have to say to the sql server show me for male and female okay show me for department so now we are breaking this result set into the subset you see now this 17 and this 10970 are being divided into the multiple values so some of these are the 17 some of this is the 107900 based on what based on the department and gender vaishnav is it clear uh sql server does not work on assumptions sir so here the logic should be the correct okay okay you should be using the appropriate logic so far clear anyone having any questions is it clear for everyone yes no give me in the chat so that we can move ahead with one more part of the group by it is clear good so now based on the last statement where we have used the group by clause right so over here we have group by clause to filter out the data from a table now somebody mentioned that i have to use a where clause or i have to filter this result set so group by has a its own filter which is no, named as a having having so having we cannot run without the group by so having is the part of a group by if i have to say show me the department where department equal to finance so now if you see this data from this particular diagram so this is the logical precedence of the data logical precedence means how sql server understand the data if you have written something which have the from where group by having select like order by and top so first it will read the records from the table first it will try to read the records from a table then it will filter the table based on a where condition based on a where condition it will do what it will filter the data then 
the whatever the result that is provided to us it will group by which means it will aggregate the base data which simply indicates that so whatever the like if we are finding out the count of the gender and doing such operations so it will filter out those data then with the having clause we can filter the aggregate results the values which we get by the group by if we have to filter those values so that is are done with the having clause then after that it will read the data from the columns so with whichever columns you want to filter out that is the part of a select state then the order by comes so when everything is uh, created then it will do the order by if you have written the order by in your query then on top of the order by the top command will run on the top of the order by the top command will run is it clear so this is a logical precedence of your query okay this is known as what the logical precedence of your query or the logical sequence of your query i will paste the same thing in the over here so what is the logical precedence so over here so this is in detail from own join where group by with uh white join with this should be over here so having select distinct order top so there are some things which we have not completed yet but in as soon as we move forward everything will be clear so this is what logical processing order of the select state is it clear questions please break <laughs> uh, sir so the order of writing the query and the order no, no, of no, its no. execution it are different right log yes so this is the execution order not writing the query okay both are different logically so you can take a 10 minutes of a sharp break for 10 minutes so now it is 820 till 830 we can have the break so then we will return at 830 meanwhile if anybody wants to discuss anything you are welcome to ask question sir you mean uh, it is only for the execution but when we write the order can change Haan. a bit uh no how sql server process your query if you have written something like this uh just one second i will just write a query and show it on the screen okay no questions so now we are going to discuss about the constraint or rules in sql server constraints are nothing it's known as a uh, rules so in sql server when we talk about the rules we have different types of rule which we define on the data in sql server when we talk about the rules so what are those rules and when we need to define we are going to discuss them in great detail so the first rule which we are going to start for today is the null so null what does it mean so null simply means that the value is absent unavailable or inapplicable so either we will put a value in a column or we will not put a value in a column so if you do not put a value in a column which indicates that you are simply trying to add the null into the column so some of the time like we can say that for a name column if a value is not passed then it's okay but for some of the time it's very important to pass the value to create a new record let's say that if i am using a whatsapp so it's okay to not have a name in a whatsapp but it's not okay to have a whatsapp without a phone number so if you are not having a phone number okay if you are not having a phone number so then do what mm -hmm. so if you are not having a phone number so will you be able to use a whatsapp no it's not possible right so there are some certain rules okay on which the most of the application works so while creating a table so you have to decide which column should have a value and which column should not have a value if as a developer i would say that every column should have a value but it depends from business to business so which column should have a value and where we can just skip the value okay now when we talk about the rule so we we want to say that if we want a column to allow a null so we can say that nothing so on that column by default if we say not null so it means that it should not be allowing the null value into the table if you say a null 
which means if you don't provide any filtration then a value will be accepted one way okay not the second logic which we have in the table is known as the unique key or unique constraint unique constraint make sure that the column should not have a duplicate value so let's say that if in a department column if a employee id 101 is inserted which means that this id is unique now to the record now i cannot associate 101 again with another record okay so unique ensures that no duplicate values should be allowed in a column so column should not also allow the null value so it's your choice whether to allow that column for the null value or not but whenever you have a unique value so it simply indicates that the column should not have any duplicate value okay clear then the third constant in the sql server is a check constant what does the check constant simply indicates so check constant simply indicates that the value whichever you are going to pass in a column that value should check before inserting let's say that if you have a age column and you are maintaining the data for the voters so a voter is only eligible to vote if the age of a person is greater than 18 years okay so you can put the check if the age of a person is 18 years then only you can insert the value okay this is one example apart from that is the second example can be check of a salary of a person it should be greater than 5000 my benchmark for my company is like 5000 the minimum value for my company's data would be 5000 so i have decided the rule so by checking the data before inserting so the values should be greater than that rule that is the value of a check constant okay clear the three values unique not null and check so then we have a default value so i do not have that slide for the default so what does the default include okay so default value include that if a user have not specified any value so and column uh, for example if there is a column on which a user have not entered any value and that column will not accept the null values then in that case by default the value i can put 101 or a b c d or anything so if the user is not entering a value then the sql server will enter the value in that case okay if a user is not entering the value then the sql server will enter the value in that case all right so very good so in this column we can say that the unique cannot be applied but not null can be applied the name of a person cannot be empty what about the gender so we should check gender is can be anything it can be male or female which means that it cannot be null then for the salary column i would say check check constraint check the salary of a person should be greater than or equal to 5000 it should be greater than or minimum value is 5000 less than that we cannot accept it okay and this column can accept a null value okay or you can put here not null it's your choice so i will show you with the not null now the department column if a user see pay attention if a user so we have done the unique not null check and then we have the department so if i would say default if a user is not entering any value by default the value will be on bench so if a person is not working in any department this person is on bench you got the understanding how this will work so if the user is not entering any value which means this this person is on bench on bench means so when you are not assigned to any project or any department okay or anything you can say vendor you can put here vendor or anything then you can put here not null as well it's your choice to put the not null unique work as a primary key no unique is different primary key is different both are very much different okay so now i will enter a single value into the table in insert into hr now you see a value is inserted i have not created a table okay i will create a table i will show you this table towards the left hand side 
so how this table will look like this is my hr table this is my columns in the hr table and this has a id integer not null employee name not null not null not null so everything here indicates not null keys we have one key which is unique key constraint which means rule we have two constraint applied so one is check and other one is default okay so rest others uh, as of now we have not created okay so now whenever i am going to insert a single record so this record is valid which means it is unique record this is having a not null value this is having a not not value this is having some value and over here we have some value so everything is good we are good to go if i reinsert the same record again into the table i will show you the first if the record exists into the table this is valid so now you tell me if i reinsert the same record into the table what will happen and which which rule will give us an error message and why if i execute the same statement unmute and say it right be more interactive in the class so that we will know everybody is able to understand and they can no i don't i i am not seeing any chat as of now unmute and say it why okay so now i am again going to insert some records into the table so if i am going to insert some records into the table you see it will allow me to enter why so because these are all the unique record with all the criteria which is present now as soon as i violate the criteria the second thing which i am going to violate is the null record so if i insert anywhere on any of the column if i insert the null record so the sql server will give me an error message if i insert the null record into the name column so it will give me an error message on any of the columns if i insert the null record it will give me an error message so you see now i will just insert this record into the table uh, error message cannot insert the null into the column e name the table customer dot hr does not insert the null values the insert statement failed why insert statement fails because the null cannot be inserted into the table now instead of that that we will let the value into the table so if i insert a value it will allow me okay so null record cannot be inserted one more thing over here so if i insert a data into the table where the value of a salary is 4900 so if i enter 4999 4999 this will again give me an error message the insert conflicted with the check constraint the conflict occurred on the table customer oh or oh, the table uh, database customer table hr and the column is salary so you have to specify you have to see what values does the column here include you can go to the constraint and open the constraint and see you can double click on this constraint to see what is that value if you scroll it towards right you see this is saying that expression expression means on the column it is stating that salary should be greater than 5000 okay always be very much specific so whenever you pass the value so now i will just increase the value over here and i will insert the data one row affected if you see multiple rows i am trying to insert into the data now there is one more thing which we have applied which is the default how does the default work uh, shall i remove the data so that sql server will insert the data for its own so over here it is saying that the the column name or number of supplied values does not match table definition what does it mean how many values i am trying to pass here i am trying to pass the four values but how many columns we have here five we have five columns so in five columns i cannot insert four values or in five values or sorry in four columns i cannot insert four values okay so if you have the less number of column or higher number of values or higher number of column or less number of values it will not work the if you are passing here four columns four values the columns must be four so 
we are just missing the value for one column which is department i will just remove the department from here four values four columns you see it will work now now i have not passed any value what is wrong acha so i have just passed the violation okay 19 i am just passing a value which is higher than that one row effected now you see i have not specified anything for the very good manish so i have not specified anything for the department now for the department the default parameter should be invoked over here if invoked and it says own bench the person joined my team but currently is on bench if i will write like this again so this will be like let's say 29 so this will be again on bench so four values so if you see 29 on bench it is understandable so so here for the last one what i am trying to do so if you remember the table which we have created in sql server while creating the table i have defined a column as a department department is of varchar data type and in here i have said if a user is not passing any value to this column so let's say here i am passing the value sales but in case if i am only passing the four values then the default constant will be invoked and this value will be inserted into the table so same thing i have just inserted the data for id name gender and salary for department i have not inserted you see there are five columns five values there are four columns four values now own bench will be inserted okay we have only passed the three four columns values and the fifth one is there so it means that so whenever you process an information and for that there is a receipt so which indicates that there is a number given to you on your turn or on on that particular number you are being charged or given some like food items right the identity is same in the sql server so let's say that you are standing in a queue and in a queue you have been giving a number like 34 35 36 how they are generating a token number okay so this is like a token id is being generated automatically by a system which is a punching machine which will generate the number whenever a order is being processed in sql server if i have to create a table wherein i have to create a id column now instead of typing the for the id column the values again and again i want sql server to handle that so sql server can handle that value by using the identity constraint so with the help of this identity constraint so this is the seed value and this is the value through which we can increment okay so this is the seed value and the this is the value through which we can increment okay so what is the seed value and what is the increment value so whenever you go to the food counter if i have been giving an order id number 301 after me what would be the serial number so not exactly 302 but let's say 400 something or 500 something right how that is happening okay how that is happening for that we need to understand about the seed and the increment value so what is the seed and what is the increment value seed value seed value is through which the line number starts if my line number starts with 1 so what is the increment value increment value can be for example 1 so next number 1 be 1 plus 1 so this is 2 so then it will be or this is the first then 2 plus 1 so it will be incrementing the number with the 1 3 3, 3 plus 1 so it will be 4 so so on so on so on so on it will write the data like this so most of the time in sql server as well we can seed we can start the seed value at any number let's say we want to start the seed number at 50 and increment by 10 so first value would be 50 then 60 then 70 then 80 like that okay so how this is happening because in the identity we have said the 50 is the seed value through which it will start and by the increment of 10 it will grow or you can say seed value my seed value is 100 and do the increment by 20 or any number so there is no such limit so it will be 100 then 120 140 160 180 like that so you see 
how I am incrementing the value on the basis of 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 like this. Okay, this is a very easy to understand. Now, so whenever we say the identity value, I cannot insert the value in SQL Server. SQL Server will determine this value. Okay, I will not be able to insert the data into this particular column. SQL Server will automatically insert the data into this column. Let me take an example and through which it will be more clear. So if I create a table, create table named as a token, token has two things. One is token ID. This is my integer and I would say this is identity. Hundred, oh, first I will show one comma one and this will be not null. Okay, by default, this is not null and over here, I will say name name of a person this is where cap 10 you see on a database customer i have created a token so under the token i have the column in the column token id is there constant is there no constant keys are there no keys so where i can find this information so this is internal so you can say sp help token so you can find that so sp help table name token so you can find the information for this table and you can see how the identity works here okay so it is saying that in the second you see this value over here so token seed and the increment value one and one so what does it mean whenever i insert the value into this token i will only insert the value for the name column alpha so table definition so if you want to understand if this table has any identity column so you see on the token id we have the identity column maybe sometime you will do what you will enter the data on this okay maybe you want to enter the data for this manually so you will get an error message you have to understand about the error message right to understand about the error message it's saying that incorrect syntax near charlie okay so it will say that an error message an explicit which simply indicates that I as a user will not be allowed to enter the data into the column ID. Me as a user, me as an external user, I will not be able to implicitly pass the value on the, onto the ID column. Because why? Because it is already present. You understand why? Yeah. So to understanding this, so you need to see the table definition, right? So what table contains? why this is giving me an error message for such scenarios. If I insert the same values again and again, you see multiple duplicate values I have entered so that to understand, like you see multiple IDs have been generated for this data. Okay. So with the help of this definition, so we have created token. We will create one more table. Let's say token test. A test we will create so this is second example now i will not start my identity with one but i would say start the identity for, from 166 and do an increment of 15. oh i will do a even number 165 15. so table created test so whenever i insert the data into the test table now let's say about a thousand pages or 100 pages another book same thing 100 pages Book one has an index. Book two does not have an index. Okay, so which means that now we have like this was the imagination of a book where the pages are physically arranged in the order of the index, right? Wherein, like if we are looking for an information about a specific page, we can open that page quickly without wasting that time. Okay, because the physical of order of the pages is like an index okay is stored on the index so clear so far okay this operation whenever we are searching the data faster this operation is known as seek s e e k s double e k seek operation whenever we search the from page number 1 to page number 100 so this will be what operation the scan operation so two terminologies I have shown you. A book, whenever SCA and scan. So a book with the index will perform a seek operation, which means the reading of the data will be very much fast. And a book without the index page. So that will perform the scan operation. How? The search will be slower and it will perform the scan operation. Clear so far?
okay let's understand that in sql server there are two types of indexes index the terminology is same it will help the user to save the time index are of two types one is known as clustered and the other one is known as non clustered very important topic to understand in a broader way this topic help you to understand how the sql server will perform better t r e d okay so this is non clustered okay so clustered index and the non clustered index in sql server so whenever by default whenever you create a table okay if you create a table which do not have any index so it has some like id name and age this id name and age so this table t1 is known as heap table a table without any index is known as heap table you know what is a heap who knows here what is a heap 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 uh, we have heard this terminologies many time right heap of data heap memory no heap memory chalo memory or heap the like heap just a quick info guys intelipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with iit and pavatak through this course you will master power bi data modeling data mining and much more from the iit madras faculty and industry expert with this course we have already helped thousands of professional in successful career transition you can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below without a doubt this course can set your careers to new height so visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics just a quick quiz question guys what is the main purpose of indexing in sql option a to store data in a structured format option b to speed up data retrieval operations option c to enforce data integrity constraints and option d to create virtual copies of tables do mention your answers in the comment section below now let's move forward with our session meaning anyone kya hota hai meaning of a heap it's it's what hmm? cluster go ahead are nahi it's not cluster if it was a cluster then it is the arranged order yes hmm. piling up yes pile stack a large quantity unstructured disordered right outdated right so heap a stack of things a pile of things a large quantity of an object a structure which is not sorted okay a heap of a data in here the ids can be like this so this is a heap table so now so understood a table without any index is known as heap table a table without any index is known as heap table remember this terminologies these might not be included in your sessions but this terminologies are very much important in terms of interview preparation so we have two types of indexes one index is known as cluster index and the other one is known as cl non cluster index so whenever we talk about the cluster index so we can create one cluster index ci i will type cluster index shortcut ci clustered equal to ci non clustered in index equal to nci we can create one cluster index in one table so which means that how it works i will show you and you can create 999 non cluster index in one table how we are going to create it and how does it work okay so let's understand this is my book 1 this is my book 2 and this is my book 3 okay so now book 1 has a table of content understand this topic very like i am just giving you very basic terminologies i am not using some advanced word this is just reading a book right so very basic things so whenever we read a book one and this has a table of contents now search and this will search faster and save time now you understood about the book one book two and the book three right so those terminology you have understood let's understand how this will work on a table level 
so let's consider this is my table now consider every column as a book now consider every column as a book if you have a index on a column then that column will perform faster operation if there is no index on a column so that will be slower operation okay so for example i mentioned we can create one cluster index in one table if id is created as a cluster index then id will do what so what is a cluster index now so cluster index will perform two operation one search the data faster and which will do what which will save time this operation is known as okay one more thing it will do in the sql server it while storing the data it will sort sort means so if we have enabled the cluster index on an id column and now you are going to insert the data in this pattern so this will be sorted like this why once you read the data from the table so this will convert into this object so it will perform what operation the search will perform the seek and the store while storing the data it will sort the sort the data while storing chalo anyone having any questions related to that these are the two things which a cluster index will do okay you don't need to uh, now physically arrange the data in the ascending or the descending order so cluster index on the basis of id column now will handle the data in the ascending or descending ascending only sorry not in the descending order so now when we talk about the non cluster index now i want the performance of uh, this query as well to be faster this one as well to be faster or if there are multiple columns so if i want to improve the performance of these queries as well in sql server what i need to do which operation i need to perform for such for such things one second ah, okay so for such columns okay so for such columns i would say i will i will need to perform what non cluster index non cluster index can do only one thing so it will search the data faster only okay so because we are unable to create the cluster index on the other columns so that is the reason non cluster index we can create on the other columns like name age and address so that it can search the data fast okay so it will do what operation it will search the data fast is it clear so but what is the use of a non cluster index in sql server if i say will say in uh, in in generic terminology a non cluster index is like an additional list okay like we cannot have the multiple cluster index in one table which is one index we can create but with the help of these non cluster index we can search the other columns or the search the data from the other columns in a faster way like huh, this will be no 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 so we can create a cluster index on one column like id now we can create the non cluster index on name non cluster index on an uh, age column non cluster index on a address column because we we have taken an example a while ago book 1 book 2 book 3 so every column in sql server is considered as a book so that it has its own index because data is different this column has a different data from this column right so this will be considered as a different different book right so we cannot say that on the basis of a this column i can read the data faster from this column because it does not have any index right for that we will create a non cluster index book 1 plus book 2 plus book 3 so this is a bundle pack which you received this is a big book okay so book 1 contains 100 pages book 2 contains 100 pages and the book 3 contain 100 pages now understand this so let's say that so this is the uh, like book 1 book 2 book 3 so these are combined into a one book itself okay now let's say there is only a index or the table of content for a book 1 so what will happen will you be able to read the data faster from this book so from 1 to 100 you can read the data faster what about from the 100 to 200 or 100 to 200, 300 200 to 300 what will happen in this case we can't read it fast why because they don't have index very good so now this is only a cluster index so we can create one cluster index in one table now we have three columns so this book one is id column 
this book 2 is name column and book 3 is age column for every book we need to create a index but limitation is that we can create one cluster index in one table what is the alternative to improve the performance of book 2 and book 3 for that we can create a non cluster index nci i got an idea now yes clear easy to understand very easy to understand so think every column like a book now limitation is that you have to wisely choose the column as a cluster index why because whenever you choose your column as a cluster index which means that that column should have at least a unique data why because that will sort the data in the ascending or the descending order right yes hmm. uh, how we uh, uh, convert the uh, non cluster like this data into the non cluster index you don't have to convert anything you have to run a command everything i will show how it is happening okay. how it is improving the speed i will show you that okay sir conceptually it should be clear to you right my job is to help you understand a topic right if you conceptually understand this topic then we can move to the practical part right okay can can i get a yes in the chat if this is topic is clear so both cluster and non cluster will perform the search operation faster faster and cluster index has one advantage over the non cluster index what was that socho what was that it sorts the data right while storing the data it will sort like here example i have took okay so let's say you entered 1 4 2 3 5 so but in the real time when you read the data it should be 1 2 3 4 5 only the ascending order should be there okay clear anyone having any questions very good and this means no okay so let me open the customer table customer database sorry and i will just read the data from which table we will read today department let's see what the department has department has multiple columns is no key constraint no constraint triggers no triggers indexes nothing is there so whenever i read the data from the department table are my hands are going okay i have to read from book number page number 1 to page number 100 so this book also has a table of contents so for every page now tell me will it perform a seek operation or a scan operation seek 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 oh so think scan about it once sir. more why scan scan because you are reading from first page to uh, last very page very good so so see the only indexes or the table of content will help us in the case if you are looking if you are searching for a specific topic now if you say that show me all the or read from page number 1 to page number 100 so which means that it is always going to perform a scan operation seek operation only comes into the picture whenever you use the where clause if you are reading the select search star from table 1 which means read all the records from a table okay but whenever you apply a where clause this means now you are going to filter the data okay scan operation if no no shubhranshu in toc was there okay still if you are reading the from the page number 1 to page number 100 which means that you are scanning you are just reading page by page this indicates that's a scan operation okay seek will only help you so if you are going to find out the page number 65 okay or page number 100 or page number 75 if you are looking for one particular page or one particular topic clear is it clear when scan will come into the picture and one seek will come into the picture now so this whenever i read the record all the records of a table either one column or all the columns so still sql server will read all the records from a table now how many rows are there in my table 19 90 including the null there are 19 rows so let me show you the execution plan execution plan as the name itself uh, describe it execution how sql server is running this query is known as an execution plan while reading the data for this particular table is it performing a seek operation or it's performing a scan operation 
right so things like that so this over here the button ah uh, this one so control execution plan so i will just type the shortcut here c n t r l plus m keyword so control plus m keyword is a shortcut for the execution plan here this one ha huh. so this one over here which i have highlighted on the screen is known as execution plan shortcut to enable the execution plan is control plus m so instead of a did i will just run the star so whenever i am reading all the data from a table now you see this is my result section this is a message which says that how many records have been affected now this is the execution plan when we talk about the execution plan so over here it will tell me the what is it doing so now i cannot hover my mouse so you need to read about this one by one so it is doing what operation it's doing the table scan operation physical operation is what table scan logical operation table scan actual execution mode rows so now i will just move to the uh, estimated estimated execution mode row storage is, is in the row store now one more thing to add here now the main main things come into the picture actual number of rows read how many rows it has read from the table can anybody tell me 19 19 19 and actual number of rows for all execution so it is also what 19 so now let's say that we have to find one particular id okay if i would say let me find the id where id where did equal to 1 but as there are no indexes it will do the table scan now actual number of rows read what is the number find out a below that it is actual number of rows for all execution to read one record from a table sql server has to read how many records 19 records. 19 records now you understand the logic so it yes, is sir. happening the table yeah. scan right so how logically now we will save time right so this is the 19 record that you will say so it's very basic right let's create a cluster index on a column which is did create mute yourself cluster index index name so it is the index create cluster index index name so this is the simple syntax to create a cluster index so whenever i create a cluster index in a table the syntax would be create cluster index index name is Mm, id on department table and the column on which i am going to create this index id is the did column now so far pay attention to this data so whatever the records are present in my table it's not in a sorted order is it in a sorted order no 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 no, no. no. i created a cluster index on a column which is did now the basic functionality the first uh, i would say the first uh, advantage of creating a cluster index is what okay so this way we have understood one thing that it will sort and store the data in a faster way now the thing about the did call so previously whenever i executed this statement so sql server was reading how many records 19 records to fetch one rig so now you see here so first thing is that instead of a table scan it is doing a cluster index seek operation now actual number of rows read are 1 actual number of rows for all execution is 1 so it has saved our 100% cost right so you see how sql server has saved our cost instead of reading so now there are only 19 record if there were 19 lakh records now how faster this execution will be done on the table you understood the concept yes sir now why we need to understand about the non cluster indexes so see so this was about the did column but i know that in my department table there are multiple so i need to find out the where gender equal to male show me the data for the gender equal to male now department did column will not come into the picture why because this will still show me which table scan why 
this will scan the table you see cluster index scan is happening so to read the nine record it has to go through the 19 records from the table now we also need to create one more index that is known as which index the non cluster index. non cluster index right so you understood the problem because of this where clause where gender equal to male now i am searching the data for the column gender okay so to perform this to execution faster so we need to create a one more index let's try to create a cluster index again with a different name on a gender column let's see that i would say gender and over here i will just use the our here so sql server will give me an error message we cannot create more than one cluster index on a table department if you want to create one more thing so it is saying that drop the existing cluster index which is id before creating another one but i will not uh, say to the sql server okay i will say that i will create an index again so create index index name on the column on the table and the column will come into the picture think logically let's say that so what happened if we apply star and what happened if we apply a column name what is the difference between that okay let's say that we have three books and book one has a table of content book two does not have a table of content and book three still have the table of content okay so while reading the book i will say give me the page number 25 from here 35 from here and 26 from here so these record i need to pull so while reading the data for the two columns so sql server can use the cluster index and the non cluster index what about the this column so which is not the part of any cluster or the non cluster index so as we are searching the data from the non cluster index so this will override the data so which indicates that now it has to perform a scan operation you got it correct thank you for clarifying that okay so because of that only way is that because of a this column okay because of a this particular book which does not have a table of content or because of a this particular column in a table which does not have a non cluster index so this is performing a scan operation and now if we apply if i use the two column one is the did comma gender you see it will still perform the non cluster index and it will be a seek operation okay you see two columns data reading so actual number of rows read 8 9 and the number of the execution is the 9 now so what should i do for the other columns okay so what is the best way to uh, like handle this kind of situation in the sql server so to handle the such situation in the sql server i will come create a composite index composite i will create a non cluster index i will create a non cluster index on a department ta table so i would say three columns so the co index name would be three column it can be any name so any any logical name you can put here so i have used the three column because it contains the three column so basically what i am trying to do here using the three columns together to create one index how this will help me how this will help me to read the data faster from the table now if i run the data for this particular uh, record where gender equal to male now you see which operation it is performing still the scan how this will help me in the sql server anybody oh sorry so sorry so the column name which i am using it should be the first one e name equal to david okay now this will be invoked because the preference of the first column is necessary you see now it should do the seek operation so based on the operation you should first filter the data from this column then this column and then this column it should not be in the reverse order the it should be from 1 2 and 3 now you guys can hear me right or hear me fine right so you see how i will be invoking the composite index composite index is like a non cluster index which is the combination of more than one column so when you create an index in sql server which is a combination of more than one column that column is known as a composite okay terminology so basically everything here is the terminology which matter so is this clear how we have enhanced our table query so that the sql server can read the data faster from the multiple multiple 
tables in SQL Server. Sure, like this can be used when whenever there is a multiple tables in a database. Uh, by using a primary key, we can fetch all the details for a uh, table. Mm, okay. So what else? Uh, cannot have more than one primary key. Very good. So cannot have more than one primary key in one table. Yes, sir. Ah, you you guys are good good with that. Okay, so that was a good information which you guys have given. So what happened to my screen now? Okay, so primary key. If we talk about the primary key, so uh, from the yesterday class, I will just uh, do or recap of a recap of a topic which is a unique key. So when we talk about the unique key, so unique key has a uh, unique key has one responsibility. What is that? No duplicate values. So data must be data must be. What is that? Data must be what is in unique. the unique key, right? Not null means no not null values would be present on the table. Now, whenever we talk about the primary key, so it is a combination of unique data plus not null data so then what will be the difference between the this and this right so this we can achieve with the help of a unique key and the not null why we need to create a primary key in a table to understand this we need to understand about the logic okay so primary key on a one particular column ensure that there is no duplicate data present and the data whatever is present should not be null should not be null should not be null okay so also whenever we create a primary key cluster index is automatically created we cannot control it is automatically control created so that is the advantage now so having the properties of a unique key and the not null now there is additional thing in the primary key cluster index is automatically created which will search the data faster for that column and do what sort and store the data in the ascending order so you understood what is the primary key primary key is the combination of unique plus not null and in the primary key whenever we create a primary key so that will create a cluster index by default in there is one thing is it clear for everyone primary yes. key unique key plus not null unique unique data i cannot say it's a unique it's a unique data plus not null data and the primary key consists of a cluster index if we go through the definition of a primary key so we see that a primary key is a column or a set of column in a table that uniquely identifies each row or a record in a table okay what uniquely identifies each row or record in a table very good so this was a concept of a primary key but what is the foreign key now so why we need to create a foreign key to understand about a foreign key we need to understand about a two table concept concept of a two tables or two or more tables let's say about a two basic tables in sql server so when we talk about the table 1 and table 2 in sql server okay so to understand about the table 1 and table 2 in sql server so let's say that this is a employee table and this is the hr table so employee and hr table has a relationship what kind of relationship let's say that if there is an employee who have recently joined a company then the hr will has its detail okay so now let's say that there are multiple people in my company so which this column is the id name and address id name and address uh 2 3 this is id salary and the designation so we will say 300 Let's say four hundred, and this is IT, and this is HR. So, whenever an employee leaves an organization, 
so the responsibility of an hr is to remove a record from the table so that from the current employees to the it will put in a different it from the current employees it will put the data in which which category can anybody tell me from the current employees category to which category it will put in the retirement or ex employees right any employees let's say that employee was being i would say just i will just strike that out so second employee left the co company and this data was deleted from the hr table but forget to delete from the employee table so this is known as a error or discrepancy right so to solve to solve this errors or discrepancy in sql server we use the concept of a primary key and a foreign key so that we can have a interdependency between the tables so sometimes so hr may enter a record into a table which is still not present into the table one right four id is not present here but it has entered the record over here now you understand to create a dependency between the table one and table two and to resolve such kind of error message we create a foreign key a foreign key in sql server is a column or set of columns in a table that is to that is used to establish a link between the data in two tables to establish the link between the data in two tables now how this table will understand that this record is present in here there must be one column present on the basis of which we can create a primary key foreign key relationship so if we have a foreign key if we want to create a foreign key relationship between the table 1 and table 2 there are some criteria for that foreign key is always created with primary key columns or unique key columns if the table or the column on which you are trying to create a foreign key relationship if that column is not a part of a primary key or for uh, this unique key then you cannot create a relationship between the two tables okay to create a foreign key we must have a column with the so you understood this right very basic basic terminologies which we are doing as of now this will help you to understand more about the sql server functionality how you as a database developer so see i am not just giving you the basic definition i am giving you the advanced information as well so that in a longer run when you are designing when you are creating something so these terminologies these concept will come into the picture so some of you if you have a working experience then you should know that right you will see that these things are being handled on the day to day basis if somebody have the working experience over here okay i will not use this one so the first table i will use is the department so i have created a separate database for this example because in this example i will show you a multiple things okay multiple things which means primary key foreign key relationships and apart from that i will show you the how to create the database diagrams as well so you see i have created one table which is named as department under that on that department table there are two columns one is department id and other one is department name okay so this is having a one column which is known as primary key so to put a primary key so by this logic so this will create what a cluster index as well so whenever we created a table let's say i will refresh database expand tables and i will just say departments and columns two columns this column is indicated as a primary key because of this key so key is there as a primary key and indexes we have a which index over here if i expand this window primary key. so what primary key are clustered index is clustered by default the primary key has created a clustered index is it clear understood yes, one table department so now i will create a table named as a course so course and the department has the dependency so this course is another table now you see over here i have the i will type it so create table named as a course course has a first column as a course id course id integer space primary 
Okay. So with the help of this, this indicates that my first column of the course table is what? Primary key table. Primary, Primary key. key column. Now, what is my course name? So this can be varchar 50. What is my department ID? So this can be my integer column. Now I want to I want to create a relationship between the this particular table, department, and courses. For that, foreign key comes into the picture. Foreign key. To understand the foreign key, we will create a relationship between which table? The department table and which column I will create a relationship with department ID. For that, I have to choose the column from the course table as well, which is the course ID. Whenever you are going to create a foreign key, right? So you need to mention that uh, that column name inside the brackets. Over here, so between the course ID and the department IDs, we are going to establish what? The references. Because of the references, these two tables will be interdependent on one another. Now, department is simply so we have created one table department the second one which we have created is the course table now course and department are interconnected or interdependent upon one another the third table in sql server which i will create is the what the third table is instructor i will create we have the department we have the course teacher is missing we will create a table as an instructor Pay attention to this table. We have the instructor ID, integer primary key, instructor name varchar, department ID, integer. Now, between this department ID, which is the part of an instructor table, and I will just short it out. So between this department ID of the instructor and the main table, which is the department, I am going to create a relationship, which means table number three having the relationship with table number one. Else you can also do one thing, table number three having a relationship with the courses table as well. It's your choice how you want to do it. Okay. It's your choice how you want to do it. But as of now, I will show you the instructor having the relationship with the department table. Now, with the basic definition, uh, the basic logic, I have created a relationship between the these two tables in SQL, sir. Okay. The three tables have the relationship with one another. Is it clear so far? So department is here, the upper table. Department table has one column as the primary key. With this department table, we have two tables and their relationship. One is courses and one is instructor. Okay, instructor. So both the tables have the dependency upon the department table. So which means that if I have to insert the one here, then only I can insert one here or here. I cannot insert the two directly here because this is having a like dependency upon the primary key. So these are my foreign keys and this is my primary key. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So, so far three tables and the three different records. Now, let's try to un understand one more terminology here. So why this is important to create a primary key and a foreign key? If we have the two tables, so it can be applied to the multiple tables or I will just show you for the three tables. Table 1, Table 2 and Table 3. T1, T2, T3. So Table 1 has primary key and Table 2 has foreign key. So we need to understand about the a terminology here for the foreign keys. So which is known as integrity. So we all know that that the with the help of a foreign key in SQL Server, it builds and enforces a relationship between the two tables. Build a relationship between the two tables or two or more tables. Now, with the help of a, that foreign key, we can reference the base tables, right? So we have seen that department is our base table and courses and the instructor are our foreign key tables.
simple thing so now what is this referential integrity how we can preserve the referential integrity what is the meaning of a referential integrity so it simply indicates that so these two table as those are dependent upon the primary key table now until and unless a record is not present over here i cannot insert this record over here or in here so first a record should be entering into the primary key then only we can enter the record into the foreign key tables it can be this one or this one any one of them first but the preference is the first is the primary key now why can enter two here then i can enter two here or here or here vice versa like three here then i can enter three here or here so which means so until and unless record is not present over here i cannot add a record over here like four i cannot add a four over here it's not possible so four should be here present then only i can enter here and the here now this is for insert so insert insert happens first where primary key primary. table okay so whatever the table you are uh your table is primary key so in that particular table the insert happens first then for the foreign key what will happen so for the foreign key tables so delete happens on the foreign key now if you want to delete a record from the database so delete must happen from the foreign key table so which indicates now so if i want to delete this four from here or i want to delete this four from here first it should end delete from here then here then only you will be able to delete this four from here so first the record should be deleted from both the from foreign key tables then only you can delete the data from the primary key so first delete should happen where on the foreign key table then only the delete should happen on the primary key so same thing goes with the three from here from here then we have to delete the records from here is it clear so this is a dependency between the primary key and the foreign key so we are discussing about the primary key and foreign key so so far we have seen that one table i will repeat myself once more so we have seen there was a one primary key table which we created which was a department All right this is the base table this is the base table and followed which we have created the two different tables so these table are the foreign key tables these tables are which table the foreign key tables now is it clear primary key and two foreign key tables mute yourself okay so then what is the second step so we need to preserve the integrity between the two tables so this is my table 1 and this is my table 2 and table 3 primary key is table 1 and foreign key is table 2 and table 3 whenever we have to insert the data out of these three tables on which table you will insert the data first first always primary on the key. primary key table very good then you can insert on any of the foreign key any of the foreign key tables either t2 or t3 first always it should be primary key then if you have to delete a record from a table so first you have to delete from so which means first it can be t1 t2 and t3 then only you can delete it the data from the pri primary key table so that's it right is it clear for everyone yes with an example we are yeah. going to do that now now first i will show you how to create a database diagram and see if there is a relationship between the tables okay so these are my three tables which i have created now i will create a database diagram pay attention to this if you see this database diagram over here under the database so this is my database under the database i have database diagram i will right click and i will click on new database diagram it's saying that do you want to create a database diagram i would say yes i want to create it i will select all the tables so it's your choice shift and the down arrow key button shift and the down arrow key button you can select all of them then click on add button over here once you click on add button so it will take a moment of time to rearrange the image and then you will see this close button i can click on that 
so now you see this these tables are interdependent or interconnected with one another okay so now which is the center table on which every other table is dependent now what this this key over here this yellow key indicates this yellow key indicates the primary key this table has a primary key this table has a primary key so this indicates a primary keys on the table now this table has a primary key what about the instructor table don't we have the primary key on the instructor table we have the primary key on the instructor table why it is not showing that okay i don't know why it's not showing but it's there it's there it's it should be showing us but i don't know it's not working either okay so so this indicates this key sign indicates that there is a primary key and a foreign key relationship or this this table has a uh, primary key now this line indicates that relationship between the department and instructor based on the foreign key reference this line also indicates that the relationship between the department and courses based on the foreign key table okay based on the foreign key you can create a relationship between the two different tables i have created three tables i have created a database diagram then you can save this press control plus s key on your keyboard and you will say my diag okay then these diagram will be under that under the database diagram a right click new database diagram click all the three tables click add and once this is add so everything will be visible over here now the course can be 101 okay it can be a different course and so we are seeing a relationship oh 101 is my id 101 comma course name can be sql and the department id can be 101 as well all right it can be any anything so just i will create a one more record over here supply it my list there should be insert into uh, uh, depart uh, uh. Course, course, course. Uh, course. Uh, yes. Yeah. In case of a hurry, I missed the column very bad. So now the third thing I can insert the data into which table? The instructor as well. So into the instructor tables. So I can enter the values. Instructor ID. Instructor ID can be anything. One, one eight eight. Instructor name can be John. department id can be 101 so i will keep the department id across the same if i am missing the i am having the different apartment id so then the department will not allow me to enter the data into the table okay now i can read the data from the three different tables you see there is the there is a record so this is for the insert now let me try to insert the record into a different approach when i say different approach i will say that first i will insert the record into the courses okay so 102 record now so you see that it's a violation of a foreign key constraint cannot insert oh. okay 187 just i'm trying to insert a value so it's a conflict of a foreign key references because the conflict occurred the database constraint first you need to insert the data into the department table right it's simply saying that in the department table department id should be the first column in which the data should be present then only you can insert the data over here okay then if i try to insert the data into the courses table 102 103 so you see the same error message i will get so insert conflicted with the foreign key constraint so conflict occurred on this blah 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 so you are not allowed to perform this operation okay so 103 102 then if i insert the data over here no, then no. only i can insert the data into the second or third it it's your choice how you are going to insert the data okay into this which foreign key it's your choice and your preference so with this example you have seen we have multiple records being inserted which have clearly the relationship among themselves so what you are going to do then wait 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 so there is a logic right so we have the relationship on the basis of a id call okay so you have to relationship on the basis of which call now say id call id here id here or id here 
so which column you want to change the data if you are going to change the data department name course name department instructor name sql server will not give you any error message it will only give you the error message now you are going to change from 101 to 104 will it allow you to change the records no mm -hmm. first you have to make an entry into the parent table okay got okay. it right so which means that then you have to delete the record if you have to make an entry then you have to update it so you have to create one row over here with the same id which you want to create then only you can perform such operation okay i believe you okay. got it right yeah yeah so far we have seen that insert should happen on which column first primary primary key table primary key table primary key table very good which means the base table so what happens if i delete the data so delete from the foreign key first so if i delete from the primary key table first yes. it will give me an error message conflicted with the reference key first delete the data from the instructors or courses so let me delete the data from the courses it's good allowed two records removed let me delete the data from the department still it will say that the delete the data from the instructor first then you will be able to delete the data from here now i will delete the data from the instructor so then i will be allowed to delete the data from the department so which means that the department the table having the primary key deletes so it will be the opposite of the insert so insert happens where so if i talk about the insert statement so which table has the insert first i want to show you one more examples for the primary key only okay so now if i would say to you i want to create a table in the sql server okay let's understand the basic information or the basic definition okay so this is my id this is my subject id and this is my name or the course id my id is 1 my subject id is 2 my id is 1 and subject id is 3 my id is 2 subject id is 2 my id is 2 and subject id is 3 this is sql this is python this is sql this is python okay so i want to create a primary key is it possible to create a primary key on any of the columns uh, no it will not work na no? again okay. you have the good logic right you are stating that you can create the primary key on the basis of a subject but those subjects are repeating in nature which means that again they are duplicate i am not saying somebody is incorrect so logic is there you have maybe somebody had answered it do all agree with that so how we are going to create a so can anybody give me an example so a girl mentioned that with the help of a two or three columns we can create a primary key but how that would be a primary key now when we talk about a composite primary key okay so let's say that i will just change this uh, i will create a different table so this is my table over here table is order details uh, let me check we have no so order details order details has a product id or the order id product id quantity and the primary key whenever i am specifying there are two ways to specify a primary key one way over here is to specify on the basis of a column if you have a single column then on the basis of that you can say a primary key but if you have the primary key to be used for two columns then you will write it after the towards the end of the syntax so wherein this is column 1 and column 2 okay now you see i will create this and using order id and product id whenever i am inserting the record insert into order details we are going to pass the values 101 comma uh, order 201 comma i would say here quantity 22 so you see how i am making this data as a different data with the help of a small small changes i will zoom this bit i will expand the screen and i will show you the data so you see how this is different now if i insert the data into the order details so 
so you see what's going to happen so sql server allows me to enter the duplicate key record if we see a single column it's not a duplicate but the combination of two columns it's a unique record itself now can i enter the same record again into the table no that will be a total duplicate data so it's a violation of a primary key because this combination this pattern is already present in the table so we cannot we cannot use this pattern in sql server so this was a composite primary key not a very much used but you should know how to use it in sql server so these were all the rules so whatever are there in sql server we have the indexes clustered non clustered primary key foreign key and the composite keys whether it composite can be the part of a uh, like clustered index non clustered index or the primary keys now uh, i have shown you this data let me show you that how does the composite key look like composite clustered index so you see this primary key which i have created it's a combination of two columns one is the order id and the product id where i can find it go to the properties or double click on this mm. because sql server is our dbms database right this class as i mentioned post uh, unmute and ask answer right there is no right and wrong okay so when we talk about the joins in the sql server okay so join means combining or merging the data from the two different tables or more than two tables in sql server okay right so why join is necessary because we can only find a relationship between the two tables when they have some common element okay there must be a common element on the basis of which joins can be performed between the two tables and there is a age then we can find the age and name due to that okay so now the mythicals all the mythical things what you have heard so far okay and the what is the truth about the sql server we will talk about that now so when we talk about the sql server right in sql server if we talk about the joins right so there is only one rule to perform a join operation okay so what is that one rule there okay to understand this just to make some white spot up okay so if between the two tables or more than two tables there must be one column with same data type present to perform join operation with same data type present to perform the join operation this is the only rule okay in rdbms when we say about the join statement okay it is only used to perform a to retrieve the record from the two different table based on their condition based on their any conditions we can say but to perform this operation there is only one logic there must be one column present in table 1 and table 2 to, to perform a join operation the data type of this column should be same for example integer integer if the data type is not same so join condition cannot be done okay so join condition cannot be performed in sql server so far clear so to take an example for this statement whatever we have said so far right so first we will see the join operation so this is my table a and this is my table t table b okay so to understand about the table a and the table b so there is one column present on the basis of which we can perform the join operation ah okay the pk column on the basis of a pk column we can identify or we can check the records of the table a and the table b or we can create a relationship between the table a and the table b now so can you identify the records of a table a which is present in the table b on the basis of a pk column only let's say that we have a table a and table b okay now when we compare table a and table b let's say that results that can include this record five ferries zone 
in the table b we do not have five arizona like one and this when these two records are compared these two in their two tables so we see one fox and one trot but what about this record it does not have any similar record based on the five records so for that in the second table it will include null and null right devo sumita is it clear don't worry we will create this in the coming topics as well okay so far we have seen that this is join so the first type of join in sql server is it known as inner join so inner join whenever we talk about the inner join these circle represents okay these circle represent table a and table b one circle represent table a and the other circle represent table b now whenever there is a intersection and you see this red portion this indicates that these are matching records matching records okay so these are what these are just matching records in sql server so these are nothing but the matching records in sql server okay so now whenever we talk about the inner join operation in the sql server so inner join operation simply says that it produces the set of records that match in both the table a and table b so whenever there is a matching record in the table a and the table b so those are known as inner join okay so which means that from the from the second page okay so we see that if okay so if we see that in our here so which all are the matching record 1 2 3 6 7 1 2 3 6 7 so the operation will look like this the end result what the user will see 1 2 3 6 7 and 1 2 3 6 7 this is just the matching records of a table a and the table b so why this is required to find out the relationship between the two tables okay so to find out the relationship between the two tables okay clear clear what is uh, an inner join we have a two uh, suppose we have a two table and in uh, table a and table b we have a relationship between in the both table then we consider it's a inner table if is it like different to each other then we it's called null value right no we will talk about the null values in a second join will help you to understand the null like value suppose we First, have a common like wait, we wait, have a wait, wait. okay wait okay we in the left join there is an example for the null don't worry if you haven't get the null wala value so when the null will be there i will show you that don't worry okay so i will show you that this inner join is clear first tell me that Okay, this, so I mean, I'm understanding uh, correctly. Like a relationship between A and B table that we call the inner inner join, right? Common elements. So it is saying the definition. See the definition. The set of records mm -hmm. that match in both table A and the table B. Now, so if you see this diagram over here, so there is a relationship between the table A and the table B on the basis of PK call. Now. in the pk a and the pk table b there is a matching record 1 2 3 6 7 1 2 3 6 7 so this is known as a matching record in both the table so sql server has given us the output of that matching record okay no it is not an intersection concept the problem is that intersection is a different concept mohan kumar not the same concept so that works on the equality operator and this work on the on a comparison operator so there are two different operators one is known as comparison and this one is known as uh, this one is known as comparison that is known as a uh, yes equality yes rational that is known as a set operator all together a different concept in sql server so when we say about the inner join inner join do what so it pulls the matching record from the table a and the table b now the second type of join is known as left join when we talk about a left join in the sql server okay when we talk about the left join in the T sql server based on the two tables so see over here this a portion is hold red so which means whatever the table is on the left hand side so this table is on the left hand side okay table a so left join produces a complete set of records from table a because this is on the left hand side with the 
matching record of a table b so this circle this half red circle indicates that these are the matching records of a table b if there is no record or the if there is no match on the right hand side so then it will contain the null value then it will contain the null value now in this case if we see the example we know that the 1 2 3 1 2 3 6 7 and 6 7 are the matching record so these five rows have the similar data with them now whenever we talk about the fourth operator fourth id 5 id and the 10 id on the table a we have the record for 4 5 and 10 but in the table b it is showing a null value why because we do not have any record similar to the id 4 similar to the id 5 similar to the id 10 so this simply indicates that whenever there is no matching record towards the right hand side this is considered what table a null value so this will be having a null value in it okay this is the concept of a null so when you will see the null value so whenever there is a non-matching record non-matching record means 4 5 and 10 4 5 10 is present in table a but not in table b that is the reason it's showing a null value over here <laughs> find out so we can find out the values okay so we can find out this 4 5 and 10 we with the help of this we can say that these record are present in table a but not in b so these are the missing record in here so we can find out the missing record from the table with the help of a, this left outer joint okay so now so after the left left outer joint we have the right outer joint right so when we talk about the right outer joint that is the complete opposite of a left joint this indicates that these this circle the b part is over here right right why because this circle is over the right hand side of the screen okay and this is left hand side so let's understand this so right outer join produce a complete set of records from table b with the matching record in table a so this indicates a matching record in table a if there is no match if there is no match with the table b and the left side will contain the null value over here if there is a record one which is not present here this will contain the null value for one as we have seen the same thing moment ago so now this indicates that one two three six seven one two three six seven these are the matching record of a table a and the table b but over here if you pay attention to the row number the last three rows okay so these eight nine and eleven is present here but towards the left hand side it is not present okay towards the left hand side it is not present so this indicates that so this will contain the null values why because the 8 9 and 11 is not at all present in here okay so then we have the fourth type of join in sql server which is known as a full join when we talk about the full join in the sql server full join produces the complete set of records in table a and table b with the matching record from the both hand side wherever it's available if there is no match the missing side will contain the null value okay when there is no match so then it will contain the null value so this full outer join can be the combination of a left join and the right join you can say it's a combination of a left join and the right join so if i scroll a bit down so you see one two three one two three six seven six seven so whenever there is a matching record you can see the value towards the both hand side whenever there is no matching record so you can see the null value we'll just highlight it eight nine now oh. okay so you see wherever i have highlighted the text in the yellow this indicates that these are the non-matching record of a table a and the table b okay so 4 5 and 10 of a table a does not is not present in table b same thing goes with the 8 9 and 11 8 9 11 is present in table b but not in table a okay questions
anyone having any questions so full join it's nothing it's a combination of a left join and the right join in sql server if you want to see the combination of a left join and the right join in sql server you can see that with the help of a full outer join or the full join okay so with the example we will do that to find out the null values whichever are there so everything like that okay so the use is now why we use the different types of joins in sql server so maybe i will exclude the break now but i will try to give it towards the middle of the like towards the end i will give some time for you to relax so now to retrieve the related data we can use the joins to avoid the duplicacy of the data and to maintain the integrity between the two tables in sql server we can use the joins or in other terms we can say that it is in very efficient for data retrieval to read the data from the two tables i can run the join statement okay so the last type type of join in sql server is known as cross join cross join so whenever we talk about this cross join a cross join is a cartesian product so what is a cartesian product so cartesian product is where every record of a table a is being combined with the every record of a table b so cross join is what so cross join is nothing it's a cartesian product so wherein every record of a table a is multiplied with the every record of table b over here uh as of now i will not give you much detail about the cross join but with an example i will help you to understand this in a very clear manner okay in a very clear manner i will help you to understand this concept okay shall we move ahead to the okay i create the table as orders so it's not necessary to have the primary key to create a relationship you see in two tables i will create a relationship on the basis of a primary key but there is no foreign key okay primary key indicates that there is a data is unique in nature nothing else right so you see as of now we don't have any foreign key i will create a table named as a product in the product table i will just have a one more table created here which is named as order details so how these tables from this table so this is the uh, i would say this is the main table on the basis of which we will be seeing the records now based on this i wanted to see how i am going to join one table two table three table four table i need to change some records here so that it will not fetch me the same same results 103 so now i have created this table then i will read the data from the this particular database now so a database named as a join has been created okay if i show you the tables so these are my customer order details orders products okay so to understand about the relations to understand about the relations between the two different tables in sql server the first table whichever i have created is the customer and the orders first i will show you the relationship between the customer cust okay so this is my customer this is my orders this is my order details and this is come on this is my products okay so first i will read the data from the two different table one is customer and the other one is orders so whenever you see the records from a two tables so for your understanding okay so i will just fetch the top one record what will happen if i run the top one first we need to join based on customer id first two tables and then we need to join based on order id and then we can join the product table very good so first to get the data from the first table and the fourth table so it's just a quick info guys intelipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with iit ampavatak 
through this course you will master power bi data modeling data mining and much more from the iit madras faculty and industry expert with this course we have already helped thousands of professional in successful career transition you can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below without a doubt this course can set your careers to new height so visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics just a quick quiz question guys what type of sql join returns all records when there is a match in one of the tables option a inner join option b left join option c right join and option d full outer join do mention your answers in the comment section below now let's continue with our session necessary we have to follow a pattern here so i am highlighting the pattern pay attention to my pattern so first so first is the customer id of the first table so these two table can be joined on the basis of a customer id now to join the third table i have to use the order id over here and the order id over here okay so that i can use the this table as a product id and the product id okay so this this is a zigzag operation right this table then this table then i would say uh, what else is in order id so one one then this and this will be joined and then this and this will be joined okay is it clear yes all right so customer is dependent upon orders and orders is dependent upon order details and order details on present are uh, dependent upon the products logic is logically clear chalo let's understand it so sql server joins so whenever it try to search a join in here uh, sorry in the table 2 it will check this one exists how many times then this one exist one time this two exist one time this one exist one more time this three exist only one time this two exist one time so this one and one which means one will come how many times two times this two exist two times so two will come Two times. Three is exist only one time, so this will come only one time. So this will be the count. Very good. Okay. So you understood. So whenever the SQL Server join have the records like this, so this will give us the duplicate values if the data is duplicate. Okay. It will not ignore the duplicate key records. Now equality and the comparison. Is it clear again? so comparison means whenever you are using the inner join left join and right join so this will do the comparison operation between the two tables whenever you use the join uh, without the join if you are reading the data from the two tables so we will use the logic which is known as the equality operator equality and comparison so read about that if anybody have some doubt so very basic to understand equality and the comparison right very 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 good very very good so the first before join i will just jump to the equi join uh, out of topic but uh, i wanted to show you guys this so i want to read the data from the two tables customer and orders how to read the data from more than two tables i will show you that don't worry so to perform the equi join okay to perform the equi join what is the operation on which they are going to read the data from two tables okay so this is the normal way to perform an equi join operation so when we say about the equi join operation you see over here instead of using a join condition i am separating the two tables with the help of a comma so if i use a comma which simply indicates that now i am going to read the data from the two tables which is customer and orders now customer and orders have the relationship based on the customer id on now instead of a own clause i will use so where customer id equal to customer id so both the tables table a and the table b have the customer id as a common element so whenever i run this sta uh, statement so this is saying that ambiguous column name now sql server is unable to determine which customer id belong to which table the two things are there one thing is that specify the table name so like this customer dot customer id 
orders dot order id so this will be one way to read the common data from the two tables so this is a equijoin operation right okay so this is nothing this is an equijoin operation so we are just find, uh, identifying the common records from the two different table now instead of this so you can do one more operation which is known as we'll say customer as in c orders as in o aliasing the table okay instead of providing the whole table names i will alias it so that my syntax is smaller okay if i hover my mouse on this c over here so yeah. it is saying that table join customer dbo dot customer sc alias 50 people in the class can you give me a heads up yes you have understood it no you haven't understood it yes if you have a question unmute ask your question else we will move to the inner join operation what if we don't put where close then it will not run right so if you run the data like this so this will give you the 100 of the records no it's not a cross ha huh, you can say so 10 cross 10 100 records you can say absolutely a cross join without a where close conditionally so we can say that it is nothing to it that it is reading the data from the two different tables and it's performing a cross join kind of thing okay okay but you understand that uh, there is one problem here so this works on a equality operator this is not a cross join right so this will be on the basis of an equality yes, operator yes. so this is reading the data so that's yeah. the reason i said not exactly cross join it's here right ah you can so shorter the syntax space like i am like uh, like if i have to in include the column names all the column names so then if i have to include the customer id and you see for every column name i have to type this customer dot like this so for example mm -hmm. if i have to read so this will be my syntax will be larger right nothing mm -hmm. else okay so for that purpose i am saying that you use that operation okay okay so now we will talk about the join operation so to perform a join operation in sql server so the first type of join in sql server is known as inner join so whenever we talk about a inner join operation in sql so inner join operation simply indicates that read the common element from the table a and the table b on the basis of so this is the syntax right so syntax is very simple to understand select the data from the table a comma table b let me type this in copy paste the syntax so over here i will just perform a copy paste of a syntax so you see from table 1 inner join table b on the basis of this condition now this is my syntax whenever we say syntax it's nothing it's the how we write a query so whenever you perform a inner join so you have to write this inner join and own clause so the difference between the equi join and the inner join is that it works on a equality and this works on a comparison now we have used own clause over here and instead of where clause so this is the syntax own table 1 comma table 2 ka call so if somebody wants so to go in detail of this which one is possible from <laughs> joining the two data so you can go through this resource form and you can so faster like which one will be faster to reading the record from the two tables so if we read the same number of elements from the table a and the table b so if we see the logical precedence so which was uh, why it's not coming okay so the logical precedence of the query is the from own join so joins come before the where clause okay yeah yes right so if i say about the both the conditions right so i would say that joins will be faster a little bit of a slighter slightly it will be faster why because the if sql server has to go i would say that whenever it is performing the where clause 
right so it will be after the join clause so if you run the both the statement i believe that the join will be uh, you will see a little bit of a slighter time so but the logic itself is same it is retrieving the common element from the two table so i would say that um, in the logical execution there must not be any difference between the inner join and the equi join because both are performing the, the same set of operation 1 2 3 1 2 3 yeah okay not so i would say the little bit of a slighter execution of the join will be a faster a 1 millisecond less than 1 millisecond it will be like in a fractions of a millisecond will be faster very good so now we will understand about the right join so right join indicates that give me all the records from a table which is on the right hand side and the matching record from the left hand side table which is the customer if i run this statement in sql server so i will see all the records of a customer table with orders table and from the customer table i see certain null values we simply indicate that these for these particular record we do not have any matching record for 13 16 and 19 we do not have any matching record for the 13 16 and 19 over here right so with the help of a this simple example right with the help of a this simple example in sql server we can indicate that so we can identify the non matching records of customer and we can say that these record does not at all present in the customer like 13 16 and 19 okay so the difference between the right join and the right outer join there is no difference both will return me the 10 10 records from the same result set now to identify the null values from this result set what clause i will apply for which table i will apply the null wala condition help of this i can eliminate the matching records and this will give me a non matching record from the two tables okay is it clear question so full join will simply give us the data whenever we have the matching record from the two table as well as the non matching record of a record table a and the table b so full join indicate that all the records of the two different tables in sql server the syntax will be same okay syntax in the sense only the full right left inner will change okay you see these are the matching record of a table a and the table b so total records from the table a and the table b how many records we have so we have the 13 records in total so you see these are the non matching records of a customer uh, so orders have the record but the customer does not so this are the non matching records of the order so customer has the record order does not have these three records with the help of a full join you can find out the non matching records from the two different tables as well full join and full outer join will work like the same no such difference now whenever i run the full join and i want to identify the null records from the table a and table b so what condition i will use one condition is written and and and, and, and why and not or or will give uh, if one of them is true because only one right. either table this or table null will give hmm. so first i will run with the and statement you see whenever i run with the sorry or statement it will give me the data like this and whenever i run the and statement okay so it, it will, will give me what data zero no records okay so why or has given me result and and does not let's understand this now so and simply mean that if this customer id is null and this customer id is null are the both the customer id null No. no so this will return me no record so in here mm -hmm. only one customer id is null the other one is not null so that is the reason we use an or statement okay is it clear yes. okay so the last example which is related to the cross join in sql server right as i mentioned i will show you this cross join towards the end of the towards the end so cross join so far we know that 
cross join is a Cartesian product. Cartesian product. For that, I will create two different tables. One is meals, and other one is drinks. So I will insert some records in the two different table like this. Okay. So we have the two tables. So one is meal and other one is drinks. So now, how many of you, how many of you have visited the like food courts? Like most of us has vis visited the food courts. In there, there are the different different combinations, right? So like, uh, if you are going to get the omelet with the juice or tea or coffee, like eggs with tea, coffee, juice, or the sausages with the juice, tea, and coffee. So things like that, right? Over there, you will see that the there is a different different combination and based on the combination you choose the you choose what you choose your orders right is it true or not yes right so now it's the same like a cross join whenever we talk about the cross join it is the cartesian product so what is a cartesian product so Select all the records of a table A, cross join table B. We don't need to be any specific, we don't need to specify any column over here to, to create a oh. Cartesian product from the two table. Just you need to press here or the enter the cross join. Now you see with the help of a, this, we have three records in table A and the three record in table B. So the output would be nine records. Three record of a table A is being compared with the three records of a table B. You see, three record of table A, single record of table B, three record of table A, second record of the table B, three records of table B, A, second record of table B. So with this, a cross combinational data is being presented. Okay, a combinational data is being presented with the help of this. Is it clear? Sir, uh, if you write uh, uh, drinks cross join me, Okay, so far clear. Now, the last example related to the join, how we can combine the different different table in the joins. So based on which relationship we can perform the join operation, then we will take a 10 minutes of break. Then we will do the last concept of the day, which is a merge join. Okay, so far everything is understandable, right? It's not like over your heads, right? These are very simple, simple concepts. Yes, so, sir. These are my four tables. I have to perform a join between the four tables. So I will first do the aliasing of the tables. So customer alias, I will put C. Orders, I will put O. Order details, I will put OD. And the products, I will put P. So we have the table 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's understand how we can perform the simply uh, join between the these four tables in SQL server. First is customer orders, order details and this table and this table we have seen we will do the join operation. If you type join this is equivalent to inner join. Join is equivalent to inner join operation. So let me copy this. Okay. So select the data from the table A, table B on the basis of this operation. Now try to understand this concept. So how logically the SQL server is reading the data. So we have one, two, three, and four tables. So when we have four tables in the SQL server, how SQL server is giving me the result. So it will read the tape. I will type the marking here, one, two, three, four. So what will happen from table one and table two? It will join, it will perform the join operation and it will give me a, this is what? This is the result. Now, with this result, the table three will be compared and then it will generate a one more result two. Result two. Then when we say that a table four, then the this will generate a, result three so this you will see at the end so logically this is happening in the at the back end okay you understand what is happening in the back end yes 
okay so from the table 1 and table 2 result is being generated when table 3 is compared then the result 2 is generated then the result 2 is being compared with the table 4 and the result 4 or the result 3 is being generated this is the final result whatever is towards the end you will see this data only so this is the back end calculation which the tables will do okay so now so first it will give me this data so you see out of the 10 records the sql server has given us how many records are there seven rows are there right out of the 10 rows there are only now i will join the third table order details what operation i will perform inner join operation inner join order details with what i would say order detail has one column so which column is there order detail has the pro uh, order detail and this has the if I have to see the data from the order details, I will do what? I will do select star from order details. So pay attention. So there must be a logical. So it has a product ID. So we can also do the order detail dot product ID. Ah, which one was it? So product order, product and order, order ID, order details dot order ID equal to orders dot order id on the basis of this operation so now you see first from these two table i have get the two things one is customer id and the second one is order id now i will join the third table based on the order id Okay, I am simply saying that order ID is present in the order detail order table and the order detail so that this order ID and this order ID. So this one belong to the order detail table and this one belong to the orders table. Now I have to join the fourth table which is the product. So product has one column which is known as product ID. So I will say p dot product ID equal to od dot product ID on the basis of p inner join so this will be done with the help of inner join operation so on the basis of p dot so i have joined the different different tables the four tables in sql server to get the data from the four different tables so table one table two table three and table four anyone have any questions right the syntax will be very easy every table if you have two tables First, there will be two tables. Then with this result set, the third table will be compared. So this is only the detail of a third table. With the, these two results set, the fourth table is compared. Okay. So whenever we talk about the merger, so everyone can see my screen. So before understanding this concept, why this concept is important. So most of you as of now do not have the experience in working in the corporate world. Let's understand that you have the experience in a corporate world and let's try to take a scenario out of it. Let's say that airline store, everybody is aware of the airline store. So airline store is a shopping mart wherein you can buy the products from it can be reliance store it can be walmart it can be any any malls from where you buy the shopping material okay so now so let's say that you have this data warehouse warehouse is something like a go down so wherein so wherein we have our stuff right so and these are my small small shops wherein we kept the data so now let's understand this from the data warehouse we are sending the items in here so these are my small shops wherein there is a product one this is 10 quantity product two there are the five items or the five quantity product seven five quantity product six has zero quantity product five has two quantities four product has one quantity five product has six quantities so data warehouse is something wherein we have the items with its quantities item and the quantity so when we talk about the item and its quantity it's like that so 
so everything is being filled with from the data warehouse or the warehouse itself not the data warehouse warehouse so let's understand a small scenario so this is one shop and the items are being sent from the warehouse okay this is my shop and the items are sent from the warehouse now so this is id number 1 id number 1 has the 100 or i would say 10 as a product quantity id number 1 in the shop has the zero quantity so now the data from here to here we need to send now there will be the zero quantity because we sent the 10 items over here right so same thing so whenever we have to insert add the records or add the data so from the parent table to the base table we will send the data okay okay if the record is not present so most of the time why we took the concept of a merge operation or the merge operation it is to sync the two different two different i would say these two different data types right or the two different tables in sql so many of the times what we have seen so this data whatever is present so the big data over here this is the production data and this is my base table data base table data now with the production data this base table data is being sent or being inserted performed insert operation update operation or delete operation okay so now we have insert we have understood about the insert operation if the record is here but not present here so we will send a record now if a record is present in both the tables and have different different values let's say so let's say item number 1 is the socks and the price of the socks has been changed from $7 to the $10 now what i will do i will perform the update operation so that instead of 7 10 will be displayed now let's say there is an item in here which is not present in in the other table i will insert this record if there is an extra item so which is present into the base table but not present into the parent table so which means that this item is being discontinued which means we need to remove the record so basically so keep to keep the two tables in sync to keep the two tables in sync we perform the insert update and delete operation so there is one problem now so the problem or you will say that the criteria to perform this operation the data and the data types must be similar across the two tables so let's say if this has two columns this should have two columns or else we have to write the query wherever if this has three column it and it ha has two columns then we will say only do the operation for the column number 1 and column number 2 so the basic thing so you got an idea why this operation is necessary who got very good so now to understand this we need to take one more step to like perform or to understand it more clearly so always there will be a source table and there will be a target table so whatever the changes we will do insert update or delete changes or delete operation this will happen on the basis of a source table so based on the source table table the data will be pushed in the target table based on the source table the data will be pushed inside the target table in sql server always remember that okay based on the source operation source table the data will be uh, pushed in the target table but to perform this operation there must be a one column i element which is the id so there must be one column element or the column present to perform this operation so that we can match the records right so let's say if one is there one is there then only we can update the two tables if this is having seven and this is having five five so which means that we cannot perform update operation there the seven will be inserted and five will be deleted why this five will be deleted because this does not have any entry into the parent table why seven will be inserted because this is missing a record so you understand this concept of a insert update and delete so whenever we have the matching data we will perform update 
whenever the record in the target table is present and the source table is not present then we will perform what the delete operation when the data is present into the source table but not into the target table what will happen the insert operation insert okay so let's understand over here so let's say that we have two tables when the data match between the source and the target so we will do the update operation when the data does not match by target that means that then we will do the insert operation when the data not matched by source then we will perform the delete operation this is the syntax i will go through them one by one to understand about this example we have to we will i will create a different database and then we will read the data from the two different tables okay so you see okay so we will create a database named as a demo then i will use the database demo then i will create the two tables one is known as source product and the other one is known as target product i will create a table source product insert some records i will create a table named as a target product so insert some records so if i read the data from the two different tables now which is source and target the data will be like this now to understand about this data okay to understand about this data you see so first thing is the there are some ids which are matching in the table a and the table b 1 2 1 2 so these two ids are matching now the name over here are i would say merge so the syntax will be merge the target table using the source table syntax i have written on the uh, before creating it so you can go through that i have written the table name column names and i am explaining that syntax over here merge the target table using the source product which is the merge the target table based on the source product on the basis of on the basis of a column which is common between the two tables so what is the common column product id on the basis of a product id product id equal to product id so when we say about the target and the source both has the product id i will do the aliasing tp and sp tp stand for target product sp stand for source product tp dot sp dot okay so based on this uh, these two table i have performed which operation so this is like a comparison so we have compared two tables so whenever the ids are same so do what now so first operation i will do for the updates so when we will do the update when match when matched so this is syntax you need to remember this when the data match then perform the update if you see the table a and the table b right so here is the result for the table a and the table b we have three columns out of three columns one column is matching so we will do the update for the rest of the remaining columns so we will say here update and set okay so a different syntax rather than your basic uh, like sql server update command update and set set what so we will say tp dot product name equal to sp dot product product name so whatever the values of the source product table is like the this one tables tables to table desk to desk and 100 over here and the 80 over here so tp dot product name equal to sp dot product name comma tp dot price equal to sp dot price okay so this is a syntax this is very basic syntax to run so we will merge we'll perform the merge operation on the target table using the source table on the basis of an id column now whenever i run this statement you see as of now in the target table below the data is very different right for the one and two because there are two matching ids in the table right anyone have any confusion with this particular syntax let me know if you have 10 columns then you need to write the 10 columns with their data if you have 5 columns 
write the data for that then write the data for that as well so no matter how many columns you have just write the data accordingly okay is it clear so when match then update and set this value equal to this value and this price equal to this price i will highlight this data and i will execute no oh yes there is a looping concept in the sql server we will cover in the next week there is a while and the while loop is there okay so you see now so what is the difference between the data now so you see for both the tables the record exist right so for oh like for the one two both the table have the same set of values okay is this clear how the update works so we have to update in the target products only is ha huh, it will always update in the target so whatever the table you have written here so it will update in that so because using we are trying a syntax here using source product which means this will be the source table and this will be the target table so it is not necessary to type here the name of the table should be anything it can be employee and it can be anything customers like that okay so whatever table is after the merge that will be target and after the using whatever table is that will be source Yes. Okay, so this was the update. I am running this alone so that, ah, uh, like one by one statement, so that towards the end I will run three of them together. So it's your choice whether you want to want to run one statement or two statement or three statement together. And these are what I need to insert what values. So whenever I say the values, I will say copy the values from where. so copy the values from the source product table sp dot so this is the syntax to insert the data into the target using source product now reading the data from the two different tables so i see that there is 3 and 4 missing from the second table which is the target table right so 3 and 4 is missing from the target table i will insert the 3 and 4 in the target table one second so 3 and 4 is missing in the target table you see only four records are there whenever i run this statement what will happen the target table will be compared by the source then it will insert the records insert is not allowed when not matched maine kya likha when not oh sorry so when not matched by target so when the data of the source is not matched by target then perform the insert sorry okay so i will run this statement the two rows will be impacted which means that the two records 3 and 4 was not earlier being present here now 3 and 4 is presented here okay is it clear questions uh, sir when it was i think uh, uh, the product is available in the source product but not target product no 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 3 and 4 were not present here right you see per layer 3 and 4 uh, let's let me do one thing let me insert a record which is uh 11 and 12 so i will insert the two more records in the source product okay so you see now so whenever we read the data from the source product so we have 11 and 12 here now 11 and 12 is not present in the target product right so this 11 and 12 will be inserted here so use oh okay so this one i will run two records will be inserted so you see if i run the statement now both the tables look like same 1 2 3 4 11 12 1 2 3 4 11 what about this 5 and 6 i will tell you that in a moment okay so then the last statement in the sql server for the merge is the delete so it will simply say that delete the data delete the data when not matched by source so when the data is not matched by source then perform the delete operation okay then perform what operation the delete operation no syntax nothing needs to be given here the syntax for that would be delete so which means that it will remove the two 
and uh, four, four and five from the list so that the table A source will look like the target. Now you see six record in table A, six record in table B. Any difference you see in the data? No difference. Everything is same. Okay, there is no such difference in here. Any questions? Anyone having any questions, you are welcome to ask. So with the example, with this example, we have created a, a database altogether, a demo in which we have inserted the two different, we have created the two different tables. And in that table, we have inserted the records. Now I will just do one thing. I will just uh, drop database, this one. Then I will just, so very simple concept, but with this merge operation, you see how we have performed the insert, update and read. I try to make it as, as simple as I can, but I know that syntax is a different thing. You need to learn about this. right? So you need to learn this syntax. It's, it's not very easily it will come. Okay. So you need to learn about this syntax. Now, within this weekend, so I will urge you guys and I will request you guys to do the practice because next week will be functions, triggers, stored procedures, uh, loops, programming constructs, exception handling. So those will uh, not give you much time because like the concept are very much advanced. Okay. So I'm warning you as of now. Okay. So try to utilize your time during the weekend as much as you can. Now, the what will be the practice question? Create a database diagram for adventure works. There are multiple tables. You don't need to create any new tables. Use adventure works and try to join the data based on the its database diagram. So you know how to launch the database diagram. Right click new database diagram and say yes. When you say yes, let's say that I will select all the tables over here. And I will click it. So write if you have a pen and a paper, so you can write it. You create a database diagram for adventure works. In there, you will perform all the operations. Okay. Like the join operations, the filter operations. So everything can be performed there. So I request, I will urge you guys to do what? So during this, uh, the, during this session, okay, during this weekend, you do the practice. So the next weekend, what we will be doing? So in the next weekend, so we will be going through the advanced topic. Okay. So very advanced topic. So I will urge you to take the time and do the practice. Okay. So it will take some time. As you see, the database itself is very big. So it will take around one, two minutes of time to generate a database uh, diagram of table one and table two or multiple table if you have table two or and table up to table n must have must have same number of columns column with same data type Okay, so number of columns of table one and table two must have the same number of columns with the same data types in SQL Server. Okay. This is one thing. That means uh, all the columns has to same, sir? Yes. So all the columns know, so table A, so I will give you an example. So is it clear? So the rule, the rule is number of columns. Now, if we have a table one and table two, let's understand this with the help of a, this small diagram. So we have two tables in SQL Server. Table one has three columns. Column one, column two, column three. So this is integer. This is var care. This is date data type, but table two has 
five columns. Column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. Okay, so data type should match. So in here, if this is integer, if this is character, this is where care, this is character, and this is date. So you see that, so table one and table two, we will write a query, select column one, column two, column three from table one, select now to create a relation between the second table. So we must create integer to integer, where care to where care and date to date. So which means, these two columns are not being used in this set operation in SQL Server. Okay, is it clear? Yes, sir. So, so now, if you have two or multiple tables in SQL Server and you want to create a relationship between them, so how you are going to create a relationship between them based on this information. Right now, with the help of this information in SQL Server, what we will do, what we can achieve. So we'll see the uses in a moment. OK, so far we know that. So with the help of this in SQL Server, we will be able to create a relationship between the two tables. So purpose and definition we will go through in a moment. So we have four types of set operation in SQL Server. Okay, this is very much different from joins. So you cannot correlate or resemble the data of the set operator with the joins. So these are different from one another. Now, when we talk about the joins, so joins works on theory which has one column with the same data type. But in here, the data type is data type for each column matters. Okay, so data type for each column matters in the set operator in SQL Server. Now, there are four different types of set operator in SQL Server. The joint definition is like this. Select table one, table two, table three from the table one and the table two. Select number of columns from table one, inner join table two like that. But in here, between the two select statement, so we will provide the join operation. So you see, this is my select statement one. This is my select statement two. Between the two statement, we can perform this operation. Like we have different, different operation in here. Union, union, all intersect and accept operations. So we can perform these operations with the help of the set operation. So difference uses, we are coming to that in a moment. Okay, so now, as I mentioned, so the first type of a union all operation The first type of a join operation in SQL Server is known as, oh, sorry, set operation in SQL Server is known as union all. So union all. So if we have a result set one, result set is equivalent to a table one. So if we have a table one and a table two, and we want to have a relationship between the table one and table two on the basis of a set operation union all. So it simply indicates that. So what it is doing, it is, it is combining the result set of a table one and the table two into a single result set. Okay, so combining the result set, combining the result into a single result set, right? So if in case the table one contains the duplicate data and table two contains the duplicate data, it will also display the duplicate data in SQL Server. Okay. So basically the purpose is to do what? The purpose is to fetch the data from the two tables. Okay, so the union all operation in the SQL Server, union all operation will combine the data from the table one and table two, okay? And based on that operation, based on that union all operation, what it will do? It will, it will generate a single result set. Okay, questions? Clear? Is this clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so now, so there is one more operator in SQL Server, we call it as a union. When we talk about the union operator, 
So union operator also combines the result set of two or more statement. Also combines the result set of two or more select statement into a single result set. This is into a single result set, but there is one difference. If there is a duplicate record, if there is a duplicate record, that record will be displayed only once. It will remove the duplicate record from the result set by default. Different from this. So full outer join and this one, you cannot compare. Okay. Why? Because the structure itself is very different from one another. Okay. So now over here, when we talk about the these operator in SQL server, like union, union, all intersect and the accept operation. So these operation work on the, to find out the common data, right? Or to find out the values from the table, right? So the purpose is to what? To, to combine the data into a single result set, okay? So if you see the join, so join what it will do. So join will combine the Results, so if we have two columns in table one and one column in table two, so it will do what? It will show me the data like one to one like this, right? This is how it represents the data in the join. Yes or no? But in here, when we combine these two, so it will append the data into a single result set. Then it will show the data like this because we don't have the two columns in here. So we will compare one, one column in here. So you see, that is a difference. It is just showing the data in a single result set. Join will combine the data, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so now the only difference between union and union all is that union all will show us the all the data into a single result set, which can also include the duplicate records. Whereas union will also combine the data into a single result set, but it will ignore, it will ignore the duplicate result set, which means it will show us a distinct record from a table one and a table two. Now to understand the duplicate, so we need to understand how SQL server in the set operator are considering a record as a duplicate, okay? So this is my table one. And this is my table two. Let's say that three, three columns we have in the table one and the table two in the select list. So we see the data like this one, two, A, B, 21, 22. Now, we also have the data like here, like this A, B, now 21, 23. So can you tell me which records are duplicate of a table one and the table two? Considered to be a duplicate record. So whenever we talk about the set operator, so each value of a each column will be compared with one another. Okay. So this one a twenty one is considered as a duplicate record. Now the second row will not be considered because two and two is matching, b and b is matching, age is not matching. So this is considered as a separate record. Use case of the union and the union all, right? So union simply says that it will merge the data for the multiple tables with similar structure and create a consolidated list of values where duplicate values are removed, okay? Where duplicate values are removed in the union. Now, the third type of operator in the SQL server is intersect. When we talk about the intersect operator in the SQL server, intersect operator simply, okay? So intersect operator simply means that to find out the common elements of a table one and the table two. So what all common elements of table one and table two are? So for example, so this was my data. So common element of a table one and table two is 1A21 because these record are duplicate in nature. So if 1A21 is present here and present here, will it show two times? No, it will only show the data once in here. Okay, it will only show the data one. So intersect operator help us to identify the distinct records. Okay, distinct records, so which are duplicate in nature. So it will show the record once, so that is the reason we call it as a distinct record. Okay. Okay, so the use case is to find out the what? Find out the common elements from the two or different tables. From two or different tables, if you want to find out the duplicate record, you will use the intersect operator. Now, the last operator in here is known as accept operator. When we talk about an accept operator in a SQL server, if we have a two tables, table one and table two, 
the table which is on the top. Let's say we have written a query one, intersect query two. Oh, sorry, except. So we have written the SQL statement, SQL one statement, except SQL two statement. So in here, so whatever the query is on the top at the, for example, this is table one and this is table two. So which means table one is on the top. So whatever the table is on the top, okay, it will work on that. The except operator returns the distinct row from the first select statement. Like here, it was a table one. So distinct row from the first select statement, which the records which are not present in the table two or the other tables. So in here, Blue and yellow are the distinct record of a table one, which are not present in table two. So green is present, so we will ignore the green. Okay. So this will be helping us to find out what, so what will be the use of this to find out the differences between the two table. If you want to find out the differences between the two tables, so you will use that. Okay, create database demo because that database may have other tables. So create database demo. Whenever you create a database, you have to use the database so that you can create a table on that demo. So I will highlight, execute. I will highlight, execute. Then I will create two tables. One is known as the employee and other one is known as department. Okay. In the employee and department, I will insert multiple records. So I will just highlight them, execute them, and I will show you the output. So in here, so Okay, so let me show you the how the table look like. Select star from employees. Select star from employee. And select star from department. So if I read the data from the two different tables in here, you see, so we have n number of columns. So the employee have four columns and the Department have five columns. So there is a difference in the columns as well. Okay. To understand about the set operation on this particular table. So first I will say that, so as per the rule, okay. As per the rule, like union, union, all any set operator over here, if I talk, so we have to specify the number of columns of a table A and the table B. So both should be aligned or both should be saved. Okay, so you see if I perform a union all between the table one and table two, okay, so what error message if it will give us if, like we know that employee have four columns and this has five columns. So it is saying that the number of supplied values, oh, sorry, all the queries combined in the union intersect except operator must have the equal number of expression in their target list. Expression simply means that a column. What is the meaning of expression? It is nothing, it's known as a column. Oh. Okay, so it has the same number of a columns in their target list. Now, let's do the first type of a operation. So wherein I will copy the column names of a table one and the table two. Okay, so this is my column one of an employee. And this is my column two of an department. These are my, oh. these are my columns of a department. Now, in here from the employee and the department, if I see employee ID, employee ID, both files, I copied the wrong one in here. So the columns of a department should be different name. So employee ID can be compared with the department ID, employee name with the employee, e-name with the emp name, salary with the age. We don't have a salary column, I will remove this. Uh, we don't have a date of birth, I will just remove this column. So three columns are matching from a table A and the table B. Now pay attention to this data. So when we see this data, what is the different thing you see? So column name of a table A and the table B are different. Now, which column name the SQL server will pick? Age. Okay. Name, employee name. So everything is different. 
like you see it's emp id it's department id it's employee name and the it's emp name e age and the age so which column name it will pick so always so whatever the data is written on the top okay whatever the select statement is written on the top that column name the sql server will pick okay so that is the rule that's the rule for the union all so if i run this statement now and you see the data will be presented like this so in here we see the id's name and the age differently so is this different from the uh, joins or not do you feel it as a different from the joins yes sir Mm. Yes, sir. Just a quick info, guys. Intellipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with IIT and Pavatak. Through this course, you will master Power BI, data modeling, data mining, and much more from the IIT Madras faculty and industry expert. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professional in successful career transition. You can check out the testimonials on our Achievers channel, whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your careers to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics. Just a quick quiz question guys. In SQL, what does the pivot operation do? Option A, transforms rows into columns. Option B, transforms columns into rows. Option C, combines tables. And option D, deletes duplicate records. Do mention your answers in the comment section below. Now let's continue with our session. Okay, so now the data is appended into a single result set. And instead of creating the six columns, SQL Server is showing the data into a three columns only. Okay, this is one thing. Now, to go in detail of this first, is this clear so far? Now, the second thing comes into the picture, how we sort the data in this. Okay, so how we sort the data in this? How sorting can be done? As group we know, by. we order by, not group by. Sorry, order. order by. Right, so order by is a clause in which we will order the data in an ascending or a descending order. Over here, we are to apply on this statement or on this statement. So order by is always applied on the second clause. So the last statement in SQL Server over here, the order by clause will be applied. Now, which column to represent? Order by need to be applied in the last statement and which will refer the first column, first ID. So, which will refer the columns, column name of the first select state, okay? So, to maintain the integrity. So, because the column name is employee ID, so that is the reason. Now, if I run this, so you see now, so data is present on the screen and this is in the sorted order in the ascending order and the data is very much sorted. Now a simple question over here, okay? I would say beta and I would say there is a null value. Come on. So now I will just copy paste this time. So over here in the second statement as well, we have the null value. In the third statement, we have the null for every other column. Insert into this, why it's giving me an error. So far this table is not created, that is the reason. So I will create the table T1. Now this will not give me an error error message. Whenever I'm going to insert the values into the T1, the data look like this now, right? So. How to handle the null values in the SQL server? To handle the null values, we can filter them out. But if I want to handle them, which means instead of a null, I want to paste some other value, or I want to just insert some other data for that null value, how to handle the data? So you see there is the null value one time, in second column two times, and the third column three times. So we will generate the data for this as a star, which include all the columns. The first column ID. So I would say if, in an ID column, there is the null value. Coles means Coles will handle the null value. If in the ID column, there is a null value, handle that value with the zero. Instead of a null, put the zero. Now, where it will put the zero in the fourth row. Okay, this is one thing. Okay, now I will just apply the same thing three times. Okay, so now in the name column, 
this column is a var care. In the employee name column, if there is a null value, I would say no name. Okay. And I will name this column as a names. In the age column, if there is a null value, I would say default age is 18. I will put as a 18 as a default age for everyone. Okay. So using this approach in the SQL server, I will do what? Instead of a null in the column, I will handle the null value with the Coley's functionality. You see, this star represents the three columns. Okay. Without applying any filter on that three columns, you see the column values like this. Right. So which have the null values. So you see now, I also show you the ID name and age column. Wherever there was a null value, it is like resolved by the values which we have provided in SQL Server. Now, Coles is handled to do what? What is the use of a Coles? To fill up the null, 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 fill up the null value. Find the null values and just do what? Fill up the null, but it, but it will not replace any data, right? No, 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 not any data. You see on the left hand side, we see that the null values and the data, both are being shown there, right? Yes, so you sir. see the column one, two, three is the actual records and the column three, four, four, five, six are the values which I change with the help of a null. Okay. Now, okay, sir. so yeah, so now if we need to dig into this one, so what was the purpose to understand about the roll up? So everybody have the clear understanding. What does the Coley's function do? Coley's function will basically help us to do what? to find the null values and replace with some other value in SQL Server. Now, the problem statement. Problem statement in the SQL Server was, whenever I am running the group by statement with the select statement, okay? So these two should show me the data in a single, single result set, okay? So is there a trick in SQL Server or is there a command in SQL Server to, to see the both the data together in a one, to see the both the data together. For that, I will just run this statement. Now we need to understand about the roll up. So to understand about the roll up, roll up simply means that it will generate the combinational data. Combination mean it will generate the subtotal and grand total. Grand total, total values. Okay, so simply, if I copy paste this statement over here, I have the department. I will just remove the genders. First, I will show you with the one one statement together. Okay, I have a one column named as a department. The second column is the sum of the department. Now, I will just remove the gender from here. So I will just use here roll up, roll up bracket start bracket close. So column values should be inside the this in SQL server. Okay. So over here you see now whenever I run this statement, it is showing me the subtotal of each each department and the grand total as well towards the end. Okay. The grand total as well towards the end. Okay. This column value which is it has created it is the sum of the these values. So that is the reason it does not have any name. Okay, it does not have any name. To handle that null value, what I will use? Which Coles. function I will use? Coles. So I will use a Coles for this column. So we'll say whenever there is a null value, so put all department. This belong to the department table. So I would say all department as DEPT, alias the table as well, so that there is no confusion. Now, whenever I run this statement, instead of the null value, it has been replaced with the 97,400. Clear? Understandable? Is this clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what does the roll-up do? Roll-up will generate the combinational data, which is the subtotal and the grand total of a particular column. Now, roll up of which column? The department column. And the which which values it will be generating for the department values. Okay. The data, whichever it creates, it creates in a hierarchical. Okay. So when we use it more for more than two columns, then you will see the lot of a differences. 
now as of now it was not showing us any differences so now if i apply one more column as a gender here now first i will show you without applying the cold base so you see i will i have to use a gender here as well so if i run the statement in here so you see now so there are more rows so which means more combination so this is what so for one department it is generating three rows male female and this gender yeah. over here it is the all together sum of male and female so how to handle this null value over here i will again use the colas okay So now running this statement in SQL Server will simply give me the data, which is a combinational data. Now the data whichever is presented is in the hierarchical, okay, hierarchical way. So which means that it it shows us the aggregated data, okay. So Rolla will help us to generate the subtotals and the grand total in the SQL Server, and you can perform any aggregate operations onto the columns, aggregate functions only, okay. Sum, count, max, min, those, okay. Clear. The roller will generate only the subtotal and the grand total. But seeing this data, there is two combinations missing. We have the all gender data, but we don't have the data for all female and all male, right? All department male and all department female. So that is missing from here, right? So for that, cubes come into the picture. So what is the use of a cube? Cube is cube. So cube is used to generate the all the possible combinations. Combinations means subtotal and the grand total of a or a set of columns in a result set. So for example, for the book here itself. Oh, it's too big. So it's used to generate the all the possible combinations of subtotal and grand total for a set of columns. Now using the same query in the SQL Server. Okay, same query. I will just paste instead of the roll up. I will write cube. So now the previous result set, if you see the previous result set, how many rows are being returned? 40, 40. right? Which, which do not include for the all department, all male and all department, all female, right? So over here, when we run the cube operation or the cube operator with the roll up, so it will give us the all the possible combinations. So data will be for the female and you see all department female all department mate and total of the all department over here. So there are 16 records now. So which means that there are two extra records in here, right? The cube will generate all the possible combinations. Possible combinations means that whatever is present. So every possible combinations will be included in for the cube operation. So when we talk about the cube, like the roll up can only generate the subtotal and the grand total. But the cube operation in here will generate all the possible combinations for the subtotal and grand total. So previously that statement was missing these two row, one this row and this row, uh, not this row, this row and this row. These two row were missing from the previous set. Now in this example, okay, so everything is included. Okay, so in this result set, so everything is included in SQL Server. Okay, so what we are yeah. trying to do here, whenever the region is north and south, so it will sum that up. So now this was my, I will just run both of statement together so that I will show, uh, if I sh show you the both of the data, right? So the above one is my actual table and below one is my result set. Okay, so above one is my actual data and below one is my result set. Okay, so you see this now, how easily we have created a pivot table for this particular table, right? Is it understandable? Like uh, a little bit of understanding clear, like you, you got this clear? Okay, sir. So, yes, sir. So it is Elias. Elias is temporary names. Temporary names are not being displayed. Okay. So end result will be displayed only the three columns because three columns in there in the first statement. Okay. This is it. So now 
with the help of uh, this basic understanding, so we seen that hmm, uh, not exactly to call a function. Okay, so not exactly to call a function, but uh, alias is there used as a temporary name, nothing else. Okay, so alias is used as a temporary name in SQL Server. Okay. I will do one more example. One how to do uh, as a columns in here? I use a column now. Here as a column, these two are the row information. Now, if you see this data, okay, let, let me take one more example. So if I show you this information and so I would say now use the year 10, 11 and 12. So select this information. I will just copy paste uh, to save time, but I will change the column names. Okay. So I need to choose the region. Now, if you see region is my column. Region contain two information. One is North and the second one is South. The second column, which I will choose is 2010. So whenever you have a numeric values in the pivot, use square bracket else it will give you an error message. Okay. Use a square bracket if you have a numeric column names. Else it will give an error message. Remember that. So now we have selected the region as a column, whole column. And these three value 10, 11, and 12 as a part of a rows. Now these serve me as what? These serve as a column names. Column so names. we have now four columns. One region. The second one is 2010, 11, and 12. We want to create now a pivot. So read all information from the pivot demo, then pivot this operation. Okay, pivot this operation with the sum of sales. We want to identify the sum of sales here. here. So identify the sum of sales for year. So whenever the year is in 2010, 2011, 2012. So in is a filter, nothing else, right? and name this as a T2, okay? So whenever I run this, some, achha. so same thing, right? As I was mentioning, I how I can forget it. So if you run this statement, you will get this in, in correct syntax. So always run this inside the square bracket. I, I mentioned that, but I don't know why I forget this, okay? So that was the error message, okay? Parenthesis simply means that instead of this value, right? So SQL server not will not consider this value. Now this will con consider this as a column name. With the use of a, this parent, uh, square brackets around the, around the data, it simply indicates that with the help of a, this information, okay? With the help of a, this information, SQL server can, can create the different, different values for this particular row, okay? Is it clear? Sir, I want a total uh, sale in 2010. Sorry? We can group region. Group by region. You, you can group by year only, not region. Regions are different, right? Year can you can group by. So for that, you need to understand about the city. We will talk about the city in functions. But to help you to understand that, we will put this in the with city. Uh, temp. This is a CT temp as bracket start paste your value. Or select star from TMP temp. Now you want me to create what? So you want me to include the column. So you want to see the for the um, what you want to see. Region. Region as a column name, comma, two zero one zero. But how it will do the sum of? Chalo, dekhte hain kya hota. Sum of two zero one zero. It will not say na. You, this will not do the sum of these three. This will do the sum in this pattern, right? Mm. You can do the this group by region. Now let's see what it will print us. Same thing, right? 
So it is giving us the sum of 2010. It is the same value. 72.11250. Na, same value. Sum kaise karega bhai? Okay. So this is the way. So to learn about the CT, we will learn the CT in the coming slide. Don't worry. In the functions, under functions, we will understand what the CT is. Okay. So now pivot is clear so that we can do the unpivot. Okay. Pivot is clear. Yes, no. Yes, sir. Okay. So this CT, don't get confused. We will cover the CT part in the, this is known as CTE, common table expression. Okay. These are the temporary results. At... So unpivot. So with this information of the data, whatever we have stored in here. Okay. So this information is generated with the help of a pivot operation. Now, say that a user want to create a new table based on this information. So based on this particular information, user want to create a new table. Okay. So based on this information, user want to do what? Create a new table. How to create a new table? To create a new table using the select statement. Select into new table. New table. Now, how to create a new table using the select? Without defining. Huh? We are not defining or creating a new table. I will use this select statement to create a new table. Simple. Before the from statement, before the from statement, you have to type the into the table name. Table name can be anything. I would say pivot data. Pivot data. Okay. So this table table will be created with the below information. So this pivot data will be created. You see, as of now, we are under the demo database. We don't have any table named as a pivot data, right? So with the help of a, this select statement, it will create a new table named as what? Pivot data. Let's try to read the data from this. Okay. So now this pivot data is there. Is, uh, is containing the information, whatever is present in the region and the year. So in here, okay. So using this create table information in the SQL server, right? So using this create table information in the SQL server. So without creating a table with the help of a select statement, we are copying everything into a new table. Now, this operation can be done only once. Okay. If I rerun this statement again, so this will give me an error message, a database name or the there is already an object name as a pivot data in the database. So which means if a table already exists, you will not be able to create a table with the same name. Okay. Got it? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So always remember that. So now using this pivot data information, if I have to create that table like this, okay, if I have to reverse this whole information to see the data like this, like again, region, year and sales, how I am going to do that? Okay, so how I am going to reverse this data, which means how I am going to do the unpivot how I'm going to do what? Unpivot operation in SQL Server. Okay. So let's try to reverse this operation itself. This table contain my pivoted data. Now, how many columns we have in here? So we will say select region as a first column, comma, year as a second column, and the third column was sales, right? So it's it's not necessary to have the same names. So you can put any other thing like the salary, uh, number of years or the north and south can be the states. Okay. So you can put this from, pull this data from this particular table and name this table as T1. Okay. Select region, comma, year, comma, sales from this particular table and alias this particular command as a T1. And I will type here unpivot. And we'll type unpivot information. Now, 
over here i will type sales so fetch the sales for year years in 2010 11 and 12 simple i will just copy paste this information so pull this data data from this particular and pull, put it in the year format as t2 so if i run this operation if i run this run this command in the sql server you see i am getting the data back right so am i getting the data back yes or no by running the operation itself so am i getting sir. the data back yes sir very good so how different is it? it is from the main table it will be a slightly difference from the main table why i will explain you that so if i run the both the statement together the unpivoted one and the pivoted one right so when we talk about the string so strings usually contain the so string usually contains the values which are of var char and var char character so like this unicode or the n unicode like that right so the sql server help us to identify the those strings and on that string so we can apply the different different operations okay on that string values we can perform the different different operations the basic operation on a string so what is a string so anything which is written in a single inverted single quotes is known as a this is a sql server string right this is my sql server string function yes or no is this a way to write a string right so it can include numbers it can include spaces and it can include 1 2 3 4 and hash at the rate at the rate like this so it can include any data anywhere okay so it's not necessary that the string should be like an order or things like that no it's not like that right so so far what we have un understood anything which is in the in this code is considered as a yeah single inverted comma we can call it as a string now the first string function which we are going to see is a concat okay so to understand about the concat function in the sql server so concat function adds two or more strings together okay it will do what it will add two or more string functions together all right okay so from here onwards i will give you the syntax as well okay so that you don't have to search it anywhere on the internet okay so concat so whenever we talk about the concat concat contain the string 1 and the string 2 like this okay it can be 1 2 3 4 like that so we have a string 1 as a hello we have a string to world and sql and we have a class so we have four strings all together 1 2 3 4 right okay if i want to concat these to create a one single value in sql server how i am going to do that so in this class we are going to understand that so i would say select concat bracket start whenever the bracket start it will ask me to provide the first string value so this is my first string value every string value should be separated with the help of a comma so that sql server will understand these are different different values now whenever i combine them together so this is this is what so this is a one particular value like instead of the four value so if i run this without the concat function you see how this will behave so these will be four values in a four different columns now instead of the four values on four different columns we can see this value in a single in a single call now there is one problem between this between the two inverted commas you can put a space so this can be a logical concept or you can add a space towards the end of every word so it's your choice how you want to add the space 
for my understanding so this should be the one way to add a space over here okay so what does the concat do these string functions will work on a column level now whenever i say on a column level how we can apply that on a table so for that i will just do one basic i'm not new database i will restore a database which is named as adventure works okay so this is my these are my databases adventure work is there so using the adventure work i will perform most of the operations today okay in the adventure work there is a table named as a person dot person if someone has gone through the on this particular table so you might have known this contain the user information okay so you see these contain the multiple multiple information and i am concerned about the these three column first name comma middle name comma last okay so when i say about the string functions those will work on what column values those will work on the column values in sql server now i want to read these four three columns in sql server and i want to concat in concat them as a one column i would say concat first name middle name last name as full name okay from my table now you see with this basic operation i have done what i have created a full name now over here i can apply a comma a space so which will help me to differentiate a value one with the value two okay you see how value 1 and value 2 is being separated over here with the help of a single comma okay so now with this example have you understood so what functions do so simply it takes an input from a user right this first name middle name last name are the inputs from the user based on that inputs so it will provide us as output right so we provided three input values and it give us single output value so now the function which we are going to cover is the length function when we talk about the len function the length function what it does it will give us the number of characters spaces so whatever the values are there present in my string so it will give me the end output okay it will give me the end result so if there are the number of values from here to here so it will give me the total count of them okay counting the count of these values are 28 it will include the spaces as well it will include what the spaces as well right so now so how this is helpful so most of the time when we do this concatenate function concat function right so which help us to identify a single column i will just remove this separate separate column i will just show you a end result set so end result set is a combination of the first name middle name and last name as a full name now if you pay attention to this i want to identify what is the length of this particular column okay for that i can add a one more function to it so what it will do I, on the one hand it will show us the full name and the, on the other hand it will just show us as the length of this particular function as length okay so now you see so i have used a function inside a function okay so what i have used a function inside a function i have called a function inside a function okay so do anyone know a function inside the function is known as what sub function ha ah, nested functions okay so it's nothing it's just the nested function okay so we can call the function inside the function it's all possible okay it's all possible whether user defined function or the system defined function now you see this first it is showing as a full name and second is showing as the length of the full name how this is achievable we have called the concat function inside the length function if i put this inside the length function in here then it will be accepted as a parameter 
right but if i hover my mouse on a length function okay so just correct this and if i hover my mouse on a length function so it's a built in function it writes in length and expression okay so it is accepting how many expression only one expression now as character is nothing it's an alias how we can call a alias inside a table name it's not possible okay if i would say from this result set i will apply a where clause where full name equal to i will just use this name so sql server will give me an error message that it it is not recognizing this full name as a column because full name is a temporary name okay now how we can find out this value i will just pull the whole value to itself and use it here so that it can pull the sayed e abbas so now the third function in the sql server which is known as a trim so so far we are doing the small small easy easy functions we will jump to the advanced one in a moment okay so trim function what does the trim function do it will remove the leading and the trailing spaces okay it will do what it will remove the leading and the trailing spaces now trim function also takes in one argument from the user which means one column name based on that column name it can find out the what it will remove so it will remove these spaces from the end as well as from the start okay so if i run this without the trim so first i will show you the data without the trim you see there are some extra spaces towards the start and towards the end and wala nahi dikh so towards the start you can see the spaces so sql including the server 33639 and this is of total 10 characters right but in if i take the length of this sql and server so this will be more than 10 spaces 1 2 3 4 448 which should show some higher space 14 so which means it's only removing the spaces from it is including the spaces in the start so if your name has a spaces towards the end so sql server by default will remove these spaces these are four spaces these are four spaces how many spaces it has it has eight spaces and this word itself has a length of 10 10 and 8 is 18 the by default the sql server is removing the extra spaces towards the end which means these extra spaces are automatically being removed okay so now the trim function help us to remove the trailing and the leading spaces now you see i will show you the trim function will do what now out of this 14 the four spaces will be removed the end output should be sql and server so if i see the if i see the length of trim now it should show me the 10 spaces it's same like the excel formulas or if anybody have any idea about the excel formula so it will be the same like that. okay the basic formulas so the trim help us to do what so previously it was how many spaces 14 spaces after trimming the spaces the space count has space count is what now the 10 spaces which means four spaces were removed okay clear okay so we can also give the this trim direction so remove the spaces from the left hand side or the right hand side right hand side i would say that that would not help much because it's automatically removed from sql server 2022 okay so l trim now l trim will do what remove the spaces only from the left hand side okay only remove the spaces from the left hand side and the r trim will do what it will do the complete opposite of the left trim which will the remove the spaces from the right hand side now you see in the right hand side spaces these spaces will be present and these spaces will be gone okay now using this trim functionality we will get what we will get the values from the list the sorry we will remove the extra space values from the particular string is it clear so uh, it has counted uh, the alphabet from here to one here. space 
this from this okay, s okay. to this r okay so leading and space so it is re written over here it will remove the leading and the trailing got spaces it. got it got it got it. thank you these and this okay so sure. very good thank you yeah. so now 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 we will do the left and right not exactly mm. so left and right so these two function in sql server help us to get the values from the particular i would say from the particular space so anything which i will run just a value okay so let's say that this is my name name of a person okay i wanted to see the first character of a name okay the first character is written where on the left hand side okay from the left hand side give me the first character which means give me the identification of this name how the name starts in sql server i can just do what i can simply i can say comma left bracket start paste this value comma what so number of values or the number of characters you want to put if you want to pull one character you will say one more than one character you will give the appropriate range let's say that i want to pull the two characters from this particular name now if i print this value in sql server so left will get me the a and b from the list so what does the left do it will extract a number of characters from this particular string okay and from the left hand side okay now how this will be helpful so most of the time it is helpful if reading the records from a particular column so if you see that if if i want to get the data from the this particular table and over here i would say give me the data from this column and i want to see the only one character how the name starts with okay i will call this as a left so if i run this statement now you see the sql server retrieves me two columns right okay so two columns one column without any i i haven't specified anything on this on the second column on the first name i have said give me the first character from this particular name which is from the left hand side okay now this is very simple right so simple the second thing would be about the right so right would be the complete opposite of the left so in the right what will it do it will also extract a number of characters from a string okay starting from the right hand side now this character will be 1 2 and 3 so if i will say 3 so it will give me b i e from the right hand side okay so i will just run the statement okay you see b i e from the list now if you want to get any characters from a particular column as well you will say write first name and give me four values or five values or three values any number you any desired number you can put in here okay if the name is of five length right so then it will return us the same value if is if it is more than five then it will only return the 5 from the right hand side if it is less than 5 so then it will return us the three value is it clear so now if i run the statement so i would say instead of a sql it it is being replaced by 1 2 and 3 okay the simple thing right so this was a simple thing now you got it so now so based on this expression in the sql server we can find out the multiple or we can find we will do the multiple operations right so let's say from the first name column i would say if in the first name there is a kim okay let's say if there is a kim where first name equal to kim so if we have the first name as a kim replace this kim with i would say 
replace the gym with gym you see we have two column one contain the gym gym value and other one contain the gym value okay we have done what we have find out the we have find out what values we have find out the gym value and replace with the gym value now so a moment ago we were learning about the this function in sql sir the concat function right so in the concat function i identify sometime there is a dot in the names right you see there is a dot right so there is what the dot so i would say that replace this will be my first expression so this column this concat fun function would be my first expression so i would say whenever in this particular value we'll just remove this as name when that when in this particular value there is a there is a dot find the dot anywhere it can be anywhere in the start in the middle or towards the end i this not dot replace it with nothing okay replace with nothing so 24 contains the dot so just one second i will use this as a full name to two columns so that we can see column 1 comma column 2 okay if i run the statement now so you see in the catherine all are able contains a dot now there is no dot okay now there is no dot at all you got it you got an idea carla j adams had a dot earlier now there is no dot questions anyone so the replace function help us to find a value and replace with any other string in the sql sir okay it can be replace find uh, find out with one value and replace with any other value in the sql sir so where we have to place a new name in the syntax for the column the third one the first is the value the second is the what you want to find out third is the replacement string the new function in the sql server which is not a new function we will say about this function so the function which we are going to cover is known as a stuff function okay before moving to this particular function if i see this result set let's say that this is the name of a person so this name gabriel so contains how many characters so for that i will count the characters how many characters there are in the gabriel nine nine, nine characters now to understand about the stuff function okay let's understand about the stuff stuff function in the sql sir anybody use this stuff in the excel no no not okay so the stuff function in sql server is used to replace a specified portion of a string okay it is used to do what to find out a specified portion of a string now so i would say that select my first value my first value is a oh i did not type it stuff so first i will say gabriel comma stuff so gabriel is a value over here i will type this gabriel so gabriel is my value okay so on this gabriel value i want to find out the or i want to find out the values from 4 to 7 or 4 okay so what is the position you want to find out i want to find out the fourth index position so fourth index position we have r okay then i would give the zero i will tell you in a moment why i am giving zero then replace this four which is r with the nine okay replace the four with the nine okay so what will happen in this case so this r will be replaced by the 9 the simple thing okay has anything deleted from here no has no it was it has taken the 
and then we have okay so it has not uh, done anything it has just moved this index towards the right hand side zero indi okay we have not deleted anything so at the position of the four so what we have done so if i copy paste this the end value over here so now at the position number four we have what value the nine no don't go into that index of an python or the c sharp in c sharp that that's a different thing so this is like we are just i am just counting the value here not the machine okay mohan okay so over here if if i would say about this gabriel what we have find out we have find out a particular string from the list and on the basis of that list it is on the basis of a particular index it is just replacing a value now how we can replace a value with one another okay how we can replace a value from here right for that i will show you so for example i have a value which is a hello world h e l l o comma w o r l d okay so the value is like this so hello so from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 again 1 2 3 4 5 Four. So we have total thirteen values in this. If I count this, so there are only thirteen values in this. Okay. So now, if you see for this hello world, what I will do, I will just run the select statement. I would say to the select statement, this is my first value, comma stuff. From this hello, start my result. Or the start the new character length at seven. Seven means after the comma. Seven means what? At what? After the comma. So from here it will start the value. So what is the length of this particular word in here? So from this to this character there are seven values. Okay, because it start from the comma and including the space these are seven characters only. So that is the reason it was showing us one. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so seven comma seven. So because the value whichever we have put in here. So if I say W O R L D, so five values. So still we have the three values. So that is the reason it was showing the E. Now if I run it, so it will not show us any data. Okay, the best thing you can do. Okay, so best thing you can do if you don't know the Length of this particular, how many characters you have to say? Give it a higher number. Okay, give Can it a higher number. Okay, so the stuff function, the what the what did it do? It deletes a part of a string, and then inserts the another part into the string at a specified position, right? So it deletes a part of a world over here. Then you will put a value universe in there. Okay, so now. Taking a one basic one more example, I would say. So let's say that I have a, I would say a small value which is a known as a index or detail. Okay, so this detail is of seven words. Okay, so I will ask the SQL Server to start the stuff function and use the detail as a value. From this detail value, so start the index at the fourth position. From the fourth position, right? Fourth, then we have the four characters. Four comma five comma. I would say hello. Okay. So I will just use this value in there. Now, if I close this bracket, so what will happen? So There is something okay. Okay, so you see at the fourth position itself, the word started. So which means at this particular position, the word started, and A I L S is being removed by hyphen H E L L O. Okay, it find a particular index part, and then it will remove that part with our given value. So star function finds a value and deletes a part of a string values on the basis of the Value which is provided by the user. Very helpful functions in the advanced concepts. So what does it do? The stuff function simply. Now you don't want to replace anything, and you want to just use this function as it is. 
without replacing anything you can put the instead of the second four delete part you can put the zero zero means don't delete, delete anything okay so you see so it starts from the d t a i l s okay i will put a hyphen over here so that you can see the data okay so it has not make, uh, removed anything so zero simply represent if i would say remove one character then a will be removed okay so this ending a will be removed or s yeah then second character i will be removed then third character r, l will be removed then the fourth character everything will be removed very good so now with this function we have another function which we call it as a substring so the use of a substring function in the sql server okay so what it will do the substring function extract the character from a string at a position substring okay so what i can say to the sql server this one set i will just post the syntax so substring the value so this is the value which the user has to provide and we have to give the index value and the last value from the list okay now in here in the substring so i will just use the same function and instead of the four values it is just taking the only the three values so i will say to the sql server give me value from 1 to fourth index sub string okay substring value so what it will give me from the first character second character third character and the fourth character it will give me the first four characters in here okay it will give me what it will give me the first four characters over here so you can specify the any length of the data on the basis of which it can return you the value so now let's say about the hello and the world right so this hello and world so world starts from the seventh position right 1 2 3 4 5 okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 7 comma 5 so 5 are the number of characters i want to pull so let's see which value it will pull oh oh it's the eighth character not seventh eighth character okay so eighth character so it will pull us the from the eighth character the world part right so it can pull us the what the, from the eighth character the which part simply help us to get something from the on the basis of an index on the basis of an index we can find out a value now so these three functions are very much interrelated with one another so that is the reason i am showing you in the one with one another so now we have to learn about a index which is known as char index okay so char index from a string value from a string value if you will say give me a letter from a string value let's say give me the w from this string value so it will tell us at what position that number is okay so at what position that number is let's say that this hello world is there so i would say char index and give me the first i will show you the o word in here so from this particular string value so substring value which i want to find out is the o from this hello world okay and how many characters you want to pull it from that so i want to just pull the one character so starting position would be comma one okay so now if i run this statement okay so what is the position of the hello o in the hello world so it will find out the first o value and then it will return us the that position so what position it this is at so what if we have to find out this o value from the list for that i have to type the w o or o r some unique data so that the sql server can identify now this o position is at the ninth ninth character 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 9 okay so ninth position this o is present so that is the reason i will just show you once again so h e l l o 5 6 space 7 eighth word 
and the O is at the ninth position. Can you mute yourself if you don't have a question? Okay. So only so most of the type in the care index we will just follow or which will find out the one particular value. Okay. So one value because so these are related to the one concept which we are going to cover in a in some minutes. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, here uh, it took O value and uh, what about the R value? O no, R no, no. it will just what will give the first value whatever is present. Okay, sir. Okay, so now oh sorry so okay one minute so somebody prior to you somebody said what about this two value or this two one two? Ha huh, so first L it will give us so there are three L's. 1L, 2nd L, and 3L. So you have to create a range. So let's say you have to create a care index like this only. So like which one OL? LO or LD or LL? So if I want to find out the LL. So LL is at the first L will be at the what position? The three character index. So it will give me the three character index. Okay, I will just say here one only. Comma one. Now I have to find out the, the third L. Right. So this one. So I will type here LD. Okay. So now it will give me the range. So 11th character position it is present. Now, now some of the time what happens if, so we want to skip some characters before searching the data. I want to skip the characters. So how many characters are there from H to O or comma? Up to this comma, there are six characters, right? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six characters. If I would say to the SQL server, I don't want to see the six character and give me the L value, whatever is present. Okay. This numeric comes into the picture then. Okay. So now this O is present at the fifth position. I would say SQL server to skip this, skip the first five character, which are from in the hello up to O character skip, then only find the O value. Okay. O value. So now the SQL server will find out the O value. Oh, six we have to skip. Six value. So now the SQL server will find out the value at the ninth position. So you understand what is the significance of this this number over here. So this position, the this number will suggest the SQL server where to start and where to find the values if you want to skip some data in the SQL server. Is it clear? Hello dot SQL dot world. Okay. This is the data which I have received from the client. Now, this is a single value which I have received. The client wants me to split this data into three different columns. If I run this, though this is a single column value. Right. Now what I have to do? I have to I have to do what? I have to split the data on the basis of this dot. Dot right. with the space. Mm, no, those, those, those good concept, good logic you used, but over here that will not work to replace or to split this data into the three different columns. So we'll use a simple parse name. The parse name is a function which will split a value based on the dot only only dot it will work with the dot value only okay so it will take an argument from the user argument means a value this value so now I okay guys so now let's start with the first question what is the difference between delete and truncate now coming to the delete it is a dml command that means data manipulation language right Moving to the second point, delete command is used to remove some or all the records from a table. Along with that, delete operations can be rolled back. Also, it is slower than truncate. Now, coming to truncate, it is a DDL command. So what do you mean by DDL here? DDL stands for data definition language. Moving to the second point, truncate is used to remove all the records from a table. So let's suppose if you are having a table and if you want to remove all the records from a table, then you will use truncate. Whereas if you want to delete any specific record, then you will go for the delete command. Also, you cannot roll back a truncate table statement and it is faster than delete command. So now coming to the second question, what are joins in SQL? So a join clause 
is used to combine rows from two or more tables based on a matching column between them. So let's see, we are having different types of joins. We are having inner join. So what is inner join? Inner join returns records that have matching values in both tables. It is also known as simple join. So here you can see that this is a table A and this is a table B and here it will return the records that have matching values. Moving next, we are having the full join. So what is full join? It returns all the rows from both join tables whether they have a matching row or not. So this is a full join which will return all the rows from both join tables irrespective of a matching row or not. Next, we are having left join. So now let's see what is left join. So left join returns all the records from the left table and the match records from the right table. So this is a table A which is on the left side, right? So it will returns all the records from the left table and the match records from the right table. Cool. So moving ahead, we are having the right join. So talking about right join, it returns all the records from the right table and the match records from the left table. So here you can see that it will return all the records from the right table and the match records from the left table. So this is the basic idea about joins. Moving next, what is a primary key? So let me give you idea about the primary key. The primary key constraint uniquely identifies each record in a table. Primary key contains unique values and cannot have null values. So there is only one primary key in a table. Now here you can see that this is a store details table in which first column we are having a store number and the second column we are having a store name. You can clearly see that that each store name has having a unique primary key. For example, Walmart is having a store number as 1 whereas the Home Depot is having a store number 4. So each store name is having a unique primary key in the form of a store number. Moving ahead, next question is what are constraints? SQL constraints are used to specify rules for the data in a table. Constraints are used to limit the type of data that can go into a table. This ensures the accuracy and reliability of the data in the table. If there is any violation between the constraint and the data action, the action is aborted. Constraints can be column level or table level. Column level constraints apply to a column and table level constraints apply to the whole table. So now let's see different types of constraints used in SQL. So the first one is not null. So what is the use of not null constraint? It ensures that a column cannot have null value. Next, we are having unique. It ensures that all values in a column are different. Next, we are having primary key. So a combination of a not null and unique uniquely identifies each row in a table. As I've already told you about the primary key that if you are having a table, then in a table there will be only one primary key. Right? Now let's see what is foreign key. So foreign key prevents actions that would destroy links between tables. So check constraints ensures that the values in a column satisfy a specific condition. Next we are having default. So default sets a default value for a column if no value is specified. So this is the basic idea about constraints. So the next question that we are having is what are subsets of SQL? The following are the four significant subsets of the SQL. The first one is data definition language or DDL. Second one is data manipulation language or DML. Moving ahead we are having DCL which is also known as data control language and the last one is TCL transaction control language. Now, let's see what is DDL. As I told you that DDL stands for data definition language. It defines the data structure that consists of command like create, alter, drop, etc. Moving to data manipulation language, it is used to manipulate existing data in the database. So the commands in this category are select, update, insert, etc. Next, we are having DCL. So it controls access to the data stored in the database. For example, the commands in this category include the grant and revoke. Moving ahead, we are having TCL. It is used to deal with the transaction operations in the database. The commands in this category are commit, rollback, set transaction, save point, etc. So this is the basic idea about four significant subsets of the SQL. Moving ahead, the next question that we are having is what is normalization in a database? Let me give you the idea about normalization. Normalization is a process to minimize data redundancy 
by organizing fields and tables of a database. Okay, so there are some database normalization rules also known as normal form and they are as follows. The first one is first normal form, then second normal form, then third normal form and after that you are going to apply the BCNF which is boy squad normal form. Using these steps the redundancy, anomalies and inconsistency of the data in the database can be removed. Now moving to the seventh question which function in SQL is used to display the current date? There is a built in function in SQL called get date which is used to return the current timestamp. So in my SQL server when you are writing the query select get date you will get the current date along with the timestamp as you can see in the output. Now moving to the next question we are having what are the set operators in SQL? The set operators are used to combine data from one or more tables of the same type. SQL set operators used to combine rows from different queries. So the first set operator that we are having is union. So why do we use union? So union is used to combine two or more results from multiple select queries into a single result set. Along with that it has a default feature to remove the duplicate rows from the tables. Now this was the idea about union. So what is union all? Coming to the union all, this operator is similar to the union operator but it doesn't remove the duplicate rows from the output of the select statement. So what is the difference between union and union all? Union removes the duplicate rows from the tables whereas union all doesn't remove the duplicate rows from the output. Moving ahead, we are also having intersect operator. So intersect operator returns the common records from the two or more select statements. It always retrieves unique records and arranges them in ascending order by default. Here the number of columns and data types should be the same. So the last set operator that we are having is minus. This operator returns the records from the first query which is not found in the second query. It doesn't return duplicate values. So this was the basic idea about set operators. Now coming to the next question, what is the difference between in and between operators? So in operator is a logical operator that determines whether or not a particular value exists in a set of values. This operator reduces the use of multiple or conditions with the query. Whereas between operator is used to select the range of data between two values. The values can be numbers, text and dates as well. So now let's see what is the difference between where and having. Coming to the where it is a clause which is used to filter records prior to grouping. Also it is implemented in row operations. So this clause can be used with the select, update and delete statements. So now coming to the having clause it is used to filter values within a group. Along with that it is implemented in column operations and it can work with aggregate functions such as count, minimum, maximum. Right? So this clause can be only used with the select statement. So this is the basic idea about where and having clause. So the next question that we are having is what are aggregate functions in SQL? So as I was talking about the aggregate functions in previous slide, let me give you the idea about it. The aggregate function is used to calculate multiple values in a table and returns the result as a single number. For example, the average of all values, the sum of all values and the maximum and minimum value among particular groupings of values. So now let's see the aggregate functions that are involved in SQL. The first one is the average. This function is used to return the average value from a specified columns. So now coming to the count function, this function is used to return the number of table rows including rows with null values. The next function that we are having is max. This function is used to return the largest value among the group. Similarly for the minimum function, it is used to return the smallest value among the group. Next we are having sum. The sum function is used to return the total sum value of the specified column. Along with that we are also having first and last aggregate functions in SQL. So the first function is used to return the first value of an expression whereas the last function is used to return the last value of an expression. Alright guys, so after understanding aggregate function let's move ahead. So the next question that we are having is what is the difference between rank and dense rank function? Let me give you the idea about rank function first. 
द रैंक फंक्शन रिटर्न द रैंक ऑफ ईच रो विद इन द पार्टीशन ऑफ ए रिजल्ट सेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट सपोज इफ वी हैव थ्री रिकॉर्ड एट रैंक फोर देन द नेक्स्ट रैंक लिस्टेड वुड बी द रैंक सेवन नाउ कमिंग टू द डेंस रैंक द डेंस रैंक फंक्शन असाइंस अ यूनिक रैंक टू ईच रो विद इन अ पार्टीशन बेस्ड ऑन द स्पेसिफाइड कॉलम वैल्यू विद नो गैप्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल If we have three records at rank four, then the next rank listed would be rank five. All right, let's go ahead. So the next question that we are having is, what is the purpose of the DCL language? Let me give you the idea about DCL. DCL stands for Data Control Language. It enables users to manage access and permissions of a database. It is a subset of a database that determines which parts of the database should be accessed by which user at what time. it comes with two commands the first one is the grant and the another one is the revoke let me give you the idea about the grant command grant is used to enable the system administrators to assign privileges and roles to the specific user accounts to perform a specific task on the database whereas revoke enables system administrators to revoke privileges and roles from the user accounts so that they cannot use the previously assigned permission on the database So now coming to the question number 14 explain different types of TCL commands TCL stands for transaction control language these commands are used to ensure database consistency and to manage transactions generated by DML commands a transaction is a set of SQL statements that are executed on the data stored in DBMS whenever a new transaction is made these transactions are temporarily happening in the database so to make the changes permanent we use TCL commands so there are different types of tcl commands let's understand one by one the first one is commit so in a simple way i will explain you that commit is used to save the data permanently for example whenever we are performing any of the dml command like insert delete or update this can be rolled back if the data is not stored permanently right so in order to be at the safer side commit command is used moving to roll back this command is used to get the data or restore the data to the last save point or last committed state if due to some reasons the data inserted deleted or updated is not correct you can roll back the data to a particular save point or if save point is not then then to the last committed state the last function that we are having here is save point save point is used to save the data at a particular point temporarily so that whenever needed can be rolled back to the particular point so this is the basic idea about tcl commands the next question we are having is what is dbms so dbms stands for database management system which is a system software that is used to create and manage databases it serves as an interface between databases and end users or application programs so that data is consistently organized and remains easily accessible it allows end users to create read update and delete data in a database so there are different types of databases the first one is the relational database so let's see what is relational database relational database also known as rdbms is a system where data is organized in two dimensional tables using rows and columns the next database that we are having is object oriented database it is a system where information or data is represented in the form of objects which is used in object oriented programming the next database we are having is hierarchical database it is a system where the data elements have a one to many relationship and the last database we are having is network database a network database management system is a system where the data elements maintain one to one relationship or many to many relationship so this is the basic idea about dbms now moving to the next question what is the difference between sql and mysql So let me give you an idea about the SQL first. Coming to the SQL, it stands for a structured query language which is used in a database. Whereas MySQL is a database management system. SQL is used for the query and operating database system. Whereas MySQL allows data handling, storing and modifying in an organized manner. Now, moving to the third point, structured query language is always the same whereas MySQL is keeps updating. and the last point that we are having sql supports only a single storage engine whereas mysql supports multiple storage engines so this is the basic 
idea about the SQL and MySQL. If you want to add one more point, then in SQL, the server is independent, whereas in MySQL, during backup sessions, the server blocks the database. So this is the basic idea about SQL and MySQL. So now, let's see some SQL query related questions. Now coming to the question, write a SQL query to count the number of rows where the sales is greater than 70 and order number is less than 500. So for this question, you can see that it is clearly asking write a SQL query to count the number of rows. So which function we will be using for this? We will be using the count function. So I will just write here, select count and we want all the records, right? So in count function, I will just write here asterisk and I will give the column name as row count. That's why I have written here select count function and inside that count function I have written asterisk and I have given the column name as row count and our table name is store details so I have just simply write here from store details. Now if you see the condition here where the sales is greater than 70 and order number is less than 500 so I have given here the condition using the where clause so I have written here where sales is greater than 70 and order number less than 500. After writing this query, when I'm writing here, select star from store details, you can see that we will having the output where sales is greater than 70 and order number is less than 500. You can see that in this column, sales column, all the sales is greater than 70, whereas in order number column, all the order number is less than 500, right? Now we have to count it, right? So the total number of rows is here 7. So this is the output for this particular question. Going to the next question, Write a query to find the store name that begin with T, right? So when somebody is asking that the store name that begin with T, so which operator shall we use? So here we will be using the like operator, right? So I'll just write here select star from the table name. So my table name is store details. So I'll just simply write here select star from store details where I will give the condition store name and the operator that we will be using is like. So I'll just write here like. I will just write here T and then I will just write here percentage symbol and I will put into the string. So when I am writing this, you can see that in output, I will get all the store name that is starting from the T. So the next question that we are having, write a query to retrieve the store location and city column as a single column. So when somebody is asking this type of question, that means you have to use the concatenate function, right? Because they are asking to merge the store location and city column as a single column, right? So what will be using here? Concatenate function, right? So how do we write this function? We will just simply write here concate, right? So I will just write here select store location city and then I will just write here concate and inside that concate function I will just simply write here store location city and I will give here the column name as address and what's our table name? That is store details. So this simple query, when I will be writing here, here you can see that I was having a store location, I was having a city, I have just created another column with address and I have concatenated them, right? So the final output that we were getting here, Bentonville and this city name also, right? So this way, we will be solving these types of SQL query questions. The next question, write a query to extract first six characters from a city column. When somebody is asking to extract the first six character, so the function that we will be using is substring, right? So what I will write here, I will just simply write here select substring and I will just write here the column name that is city and if I want the first six characters, so I will just write here the one and six characters I want, so I will just write here six and I will give here the column name as extract string, so that's why I have written here as extract string and from the table name. So here you can see that these are the first six characters of the city. So previously if I am going through this slide, you can see that this is a city column and if you count the first six characters, it will come up to Montegio, right? So here you are getting the first six characters. Okay guys, so now let's move to the next question. Next question is, create a stored procedure to estimate the 10% increase in sales. Now, how to create the stored procedures? So to create a stored procedure, I will just simply write here, create procedures. So this is the basic syntax to create stored procedure. So I'll just write here create procedures and I will give the name as pro sales, right? And after that, what I will do here, I have just select the store name here. And if I want to see the increment that to 10% increment, 
so i'll just give here the fundamental formula basic mathematical formula that is sales plus sales plus 10 by 100 right so so that i can show that 10 percent increase here and i've given the column as estimated increase right and these all things i will be taking from my tables so i'll just write here from store details so this is the way to create a stored procedure right now you have to execute a stored procedure so you have to write execute and the stored procedure name so what we are having the stored procedure name here pro sales so when you are executing execute pro sales then you will get the output like this so this is the way to create a stored procedures now the next question we are having is display the order number in decreasing order so when somebody is asking about the decreasing order that means you have to use order by right so i will just simply write here select store name order number from the table name that is store details and i will just write here order by clause and i want it to the decreasing order right so i will just write here order by order number decreasing right so when i'm executing this query you can see that i am getting here the store name and the order number which is in the decreasing order right so these are the store name in which we are having the order number in decreasing order so now coming to the question number 23 display the last record from the store details table now if you want to display the last record so what query you should write so in store details table we have seen the store number from 1 to 10 and i want the last record so if i'm writing the query select max function and inside that max function if i'm writing here store which is a column from store details then i will get the output only this 10 right so what i will do here I'll just simply write here select star from store details and I will be using here where clause and in that where clause I will just simply write here, store is equal to and then I will select here select max store from store details right so when I am executing this query you can see that I am getting the last record so now before coming to the question number 24 and solving it let me give you the idea about the data set that I am using here so I am using here the coffee chain data set in which we are having total three data set the first one is the fact table so this data set is the fact table the second one we are having the product table so this is the product table and the third one that we are having is the location table so let me give you the idea about each table the first one is a fact table which consists of 13 columns such as profit margin sales cogs which stands for cost of goods sold total expenses and so on the second table we are having is product table which consists of four columns such as product type, product, product ID, type and the last table that we are having the location table in which we are having area code, state, market and market size, right? So as you can see that we are having here multiple tables so we can use this table to perform SQL queries. Now let's see the question. So in the question it is written that combine the table with the following attributes date, product ID, product type, product, sales, profit, state and area code now if you see this fact table here the product id is matching with the product table right so one thing we got to know that we can apply here joins because in the fact table the product id and in the product table the product id columns are matching same columns similarly if you see the location table here the area code and the area code of the fact table are matching so we're going to be applying here joins so let's see the queries so what I will do here, I will just simply write here, the first one is the combine the table with the following attribute state, right? So I have created the table, so I will just write here, select F. What is F here? So F is the alias, right? Alias of the fact table. So I have just written here, select F dot product ID, right? The second was the product type, so I will just write here product type. Then we will write here the product, then sales, then profit state and area code so what i have done here you can see that we are having three tables here the first one is the fact so for fact table i have written here the alias as f for product table i have written the alias as p and for the location table i have taken the alias as l so i will write this select f dot product id p dot product type p dot product f dot sales f dot profit l dot state l dot area code and from which table from the fact table and I will once again give here the alias as F. So now what I have to do here, I have to apply here the joins. So, so the concept of joins tells that you should have the same column to apply it, right? So as I told you that I will be applying the joins on the multiple tables. So I will apply join here, that join will be inner join on the dbo.location, right? On which column? Area code. Let me show it. 
here i will apply joins on this column right area code of the location and the area code of the fact table so i have just applied here joins and once again since we have to merge three tables we have to combine three tables so that's why once again i will apply one more join that is inner join on which product id so here you can see that when you will apply the joins here the final output that we are getting here product id product type product sales profit state area code right so here in this question it is also written here date right you can also write here the date one so date will be also displayed in the output so this is the basic idea how to implement joins so the next question is that how much spending has been done on marketing for product id one so if you see this fact table in which we are having the marketing column and these are the dates the product has been sold right so these are the sales cogs total expenses on each date of each unique product ids so basically in this table we are having 13 product ids and in the question it is asking the sum of the how much spending has been done on marketing for product id 1 so that means you have to calculate the here the sum so we are having the sum function here so i'll just write here select sum and inside that i will just write here the column the column name is marketing and i'll give the alias as marketing so it will be our the new column in the output and obviously it is asking for the product id 1 so i will just write here the where clause and i will just simply write here where product id is equal to 1 so in the output you can see that this is the total spending that has been done on the marketing for product id 1 so the next question that we are having change the product type from tea to coffee where the product id is 13 so you can see that we are having a product table here right so in the product table we are having here t right for the product id 13 so it is asking that instead of t just change it with the coffee so which command that we have to use here is easy right update so i'll just write here update and what's the table name table name is product so i'll just write here simply update table then i will set here the product type cause our product type is a column so i'll just simply write here set column name that is product type and i'll just write here is equal to coffee and i will give the condition where product id is 30 so earlier it was t now it will be updated to coffee so this is the basic idea about the update statement next question is display the rank without any gap to show the sales wise rank i have already explained you about the dense rank concept and the rank concept so here which function we will be using dense rank right cause in the question it is asking that without any gap right so what i will do here i'll just simply select our product id sales dense rank so this is the syntax for the dense rank i'll just write here dense rank and i will just write here over and inside that i will just apply the order by clause that too in the decreasing order right and i'll give here the new column name for the output is as sales dense rank so what i am doing here basically i am just selecting here product id i am selecting here sales and then i am just applying here the dense rank function that too decreasing order of sales right so now if you see the dense function here so here this is the sales done here 9 12 so the sales dense rank is 1 similarly 9 12 again the sales rank is 1 so you can clearly see that after 9 12 we are having 9 10 and the dense rank is 2 right but if you are using here rank function so the rank will be 3 so that's why we use dense rank so that we shouldn't get any gap okay guys now moving to the next question how many products are of regular type so what does it mean how many product that means we have to again use the count so i'll just write here the count function so to write the count function i will just perform a sql query i'll just write here select count and inside count function i will just writing the column name that is product and i'll give here the new column so that the new column should be displayed in my output as a count of regular type so i've just created it and from our table our table name is product so it's simple i just applied here where clause and it is asking for the regular type so here if you see the type i have to just write here type is equal to regular so there are total eight products which are of regular type So the next question find out the total profit generated by Colorado state so as i told you that we were having total three tables right the fact table the product table and the location table right so we know that the area code is in the fact table and as well as in the location table so here we have to perform once again the join right and it is asking the total profit generated by the Colorado state so what i will do first i will select the profit column from the fact table so i'll just write here select and since i want the total profit so i have to use here the sum function so i'll just write here select sum and the column name is profit and then i will give the new column name as total profit 
and that too this i will select from the fact table i will apply here inner join okay on which table location table so that's why i have written here location and on which column so we have to apply on the area code right so i'll just write here the area code of both the columns that is fact table dot area code is equal to location dot area code and here i have to give the condition where state is equal to colorado so this is the total profit right that has been generated by the colorado state so to display the average inventory i will just write here the product id i will just take the average function and inside that i will just write here the column name as inventory and i will just write once again using alias as average inventory yeah so i want here average inventory right for each product id so as i told you that we were having total 13 product id right so what i will do from the table that to from the fact table i will just select the product id column and if i want average inventory so i will just use the average function and inside that i will just write inventory yeah now if i want to print the average inventory right if i want to get the details of the average inventory so i'll just create here the column as average inventory so that's why i've written here as average inventory so what i've done here i've just written here average inventory so that whatever the records that i am getting at in the form of average it should be in the average inventory column so that's why i am using here as right and from which table from fact table and again i am using here group by now why i am using here group by so let me give you the idea about group by so group by statement groups rows that have the same values into the summary rows for example here you can see the product id we are having the unique product ids and this product ids i mean let's suppose the product is the t right so that t is having the specific product id as 1 and it has been sold to the lot of states right so for that we have to use here group by as product id and, and after that what i will do here i'll just apply here order by so what i am doing here i'll just applying here order by product id so when i'm applying here order by by product id that means my product id will be displaying in the ascending order so you can see that product id is displaying in the ascending order okay so this is the way to display the average inventory for each product id next question write a query by creating a condition in which if the total expenses is less than 60 then it is a profit or else loss so for this which function shall i use cause they are asking to create a condition in which the total expenses is less than 60 then it's a profit or else loss so for this question i am going to be use the if function what is if function if function is iif function so what does iif function returns well this function returns a value if a condition is true or another value if a condition is false right so what i have done here i just select the total expenses column and then i have applied the if function and in if function i have given the condition if the total expenses is less than 60 then it will be profit right or else it will be loss and that too i have given the column as a status right so if you see here while executing it so if you see the output here if the total expenses is less than 60 so what i will get here i'll get in the status column profit right and if it's greater than 60 then you can see that i will get here loss so this is the way to apply iif function now moving to the question number 32 what is the minimum sales of a product so by understanding this question we got to know that we have to apply the aggregate function so which aggregate function will be applying here min right so i'll just select here select min and inside that min function i'll just write here sales and then i will create a new column as minimum sales and that's it i have to just select it from the table so the query will be select minimum sales as minimum sales from the fact table now coming to the question number 33 if you want to display maximum cost of goods sold right so again i have to apply here aggregate function that is max so i'll just write here select max inside that max function i'll just write here cogs and i will give you a new column name max cogs so when i am selecting this thing from the fact table i will get here the maximum cogs so the next question that we are having here display the average budget margin of the store where average budget margin should be greater than 100 now what i will do here once again i have to use here group by right so why we are using here group by as i already told you that group by statement groups rows that have the same values into the summary rows So now what I will do here? Display the average budget margin. So first I will select here the product ID. So I'll just simply write here select product ID. Then I have to calculate the average. So I'll just simply write here average 
function and inside that I will write the column name as budget margin and then I will create a new column that is average budget margin so that whatever the average is coming that should be fitted into the average budget margin column so for that I have to use here group by so what I will do here I will just simply write here select product ID average of budget margin and I have assigned here the new column name from the fact table now I am using here group by on the product ID now why I am using here having as I told you that you can't use group by for the aggregate function since here the condition is given that the average budget margin should be greater than 100 so that's why having comes into the picture I've just written here having clause because by using having clause I can apply aggregate functions so I've just written here having and then once again I have used the average function and the condition was it should be greater than 100 so it's greater than 100 so this is the way you can see that I am getting the total four unique product IDs in which the average budget margin is greater than 100 right so now Coming to the question number 35, display the date, product ID and sales where total expenses are between 100 to 200. Now if you see here, first what I have to do, I have to just select here date, product ID, sales and total expenses. Now I have to apply here between operator, right, because it is asking between 100 to 200. So I have just given here the where clause, total expenses between 100 to 200. So if you see here in the output, I am getting the total expenses in between the 100 to 200. So the only thing that you have to know to apply here the between operator. Now coming to the next question, what is the difference between views and tables? So now coming to the views, a view is a virtual table that is extracted from a database. So what about the tables? A table is structured with a set number of columns and a boundless number of rows, but it's not in the case of views. Moving to the second point, a view doesn't hold data itself whereas a table contains data and stores it in the database. Along with that, a view is utilized to query certain information contained in a few distinct tables, whereas a table holds fundamental client information and cases of a characterized object. Also, in a view, we will get frequently queried information, whereas in a table, changing the information in the database changes the information that appears in the view. So this is the difference between views and tables. So now coming to the question number 37, what do you know about the sub function? The sub function deletes a part of the string and then inserts another part into the string starting at a specified position. Let me explain you by syntax. So the syntax will be, I will be writing here the sub function. Inside that I will be having four parameter. The first one is the string one. The second one will be the position. Third one will be the length. And the last one will be the string two. So here string one is the one that will be overwritten. Position indicates the starting location for overwriting the string, whereas the length is the length of the substitute string and string 2 is the string that will overwrite string 1. For example, if I am performing a SQL query in the MySQL server, I will just write simply select stuff. The first string that I will be passing here is the SQL tutorial, then I will just write here 1, 3 and then I will just write here Python. So what will happen here, if you see when I will executing this query, this will change SQL tutorial to the Python tutorial. Why? Because I have given here the position and length. The position is 1 and the length is 3. So SQL will be removed and it will be replaced by the Python. So this is the basic idea about the stub function. The next question is, what is the collage function? So the collage function takes a set of inputs and returns the first non-null value. So let's suppose we are having different values in a collage function. This is the syntax of the collage function in, in which we are having multiple values. Let's suppose if I am writing here 1, 2, 3, 4 and if there is a null, so after null, what is the first non-null value? It will be returned by the collage function. Here you can see that I am writing here select collage and it is written here null. Then after null, it is written here 1, 2 my SQL. If you read the definition, then it told that it takes a set of inputs and returns the first non-null value. So the first non-null value in this we are having is 1. So it will return here 1. So this is the basic idea about Coley's function. Now coming to the question number 39, delete the records from store details where sales is less than 100. Right? So here it is basically asking to use the delete command. Right? Delete operation. So how do we use the delete operation? I will just simply write here delete from table name. So our table name is here store details. So I'll just write here delete from store details where sales is less than 100. Now if you see the output, 
all the sales which are less than 100 has been removed right so this is the way to delete a particular record based on the condition in a table so now coming to the last question drop the existing data from the store details so basically it is telling you to delete all the data from your table so which command you should use so the command that we will be use here truncate so i'll just write here truncate table and table name so when i'm executing this query all the records from the table will be deleted that being said i wish you good luck on your sql journey i hope these steps will help you plan on your learning schedule just a quick info guys intelipath offers data analytics course in collaboration with iit and pavatak through this course you will master power bi data modeling data mining and much more from the iit madras faculty and industry expert with this course we have already helped thousands of professional in successful career transition you can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below without a doubt this course can set your careers to new height so visit the course page link given in the description and take the first step towards the career in the field of data analytics